stuck again. <laughs> What's happened there? <laughs> oh, I'm back. I'm back. Luckily, we're tearing this studio down. Right. Do this again. Sunday's games in the Premier League are looking forward to two two o'clock kickoffs. If looking forward to it is the phrase we really are going to use here. Liverpool Crystal Palace, Liverpool 1.2. The Droids 7, Palace are 12. There's West Ham playing at two o'clock as well. Uh, both former uh, both former sides of Neil Mellor. Um, Liverpool need a reaction here, Neil. Um, more than anything, they need three points. Yeah, obviously it was a disappointing result in the Europa League, getting beat at home to... Atalanta, it was a disappointing result last weekend against United 2-2 because um, United were there to have been beaten last week. And so Liverpool have to respond. They know that there's probably not too much room for error between now and the end of the season. Seven Premier League games to go. Liverpool have been brilliant at Anfield. We have to say that in the Premier League. What Thursday night was a big shock to lose to Atalanta. They were better than I thought. Liverpool were below par. Made six changes for that game, Liverpool. But again, it was similar to what happened at Old Trafford. Missed big chances at key moments in the game and ended up being punished. I don't think Palace will have many chances in this game. The big boost for Palace is Alise, their best player, will be fit and available probably to start, and he makes a massive difference for them to be a threat on the counter-attack. Liverpool keeping clean sheets has been a bit of an issue recently. For Palace maybe to score, but Liverpool to respond, and respond with it with a comfortable home win. Both teams to score at 1.87 seems rather large for a Liverpool side. You can't keep clean sheets, as Neil said. Yeah, I mean... After the Atlanta game, Atalanta game, sorry, we're talking differently, aren't we? All of a sudden, there's a little bit of listening to various radio shows this morning on the way in. Have Liverpool run out of steam? Are they running out of gas at the wrong time? What type of performance was it? You listen to the manager in his press conference after the game. He was quite frustrated at the decisions his players were making, shooting from outside the box when normally they would have that have played played football with a bit more intricacy, a bit more build up, and he was he was critical of his players, but made made a lot of changes. Um, I, I for one, I don't know what you guys think, but I was surprised at his team selection. I thought he, he made a lot of changes. When At- Atalanta, who have come to Anfield before and beaten them up before, granted it was in the Champions League when they'd already qualified, but Atalanta did a job on them. Um, the Crystal Palace game was a foregone conclusion. Before that, you just wonder what effect it's going to have because they've not lost at Anfield this season. It's it's a, a rarity. It's how they bounce back. It's how they come back. Do they come back with a roar in Anfield, a, hu- a humongous atmosphere, the flags are back on the cop after the protest. Is is there going to be a fantastic atmosphere and a fantastic response and, and a convincing win? Or is there just that little bit of doubt that's crept in? You don't know until until we see the game. Prior to the Atalanta game, we'd sit here and say, comfortable home win, usual Liverpool score 3-1. But is there just that little bit of doubt that's crept into players' minds? Maybe so. We'll see which players actually turn up for you know are available for this, and, and Jurgen Klopp decides he wants to put them in because if Allison is back, that's obviously huge for Liverpool. Neil, but is it is it shaking the head there? I don't know. Hey, well, Trent might be back. Trent was on the bench. Jota was on the bench. Jota got on the pitch. Jota's mm. the most likely to feature. Maybe Trent could come off the bench. I don't think Allison's ready to to be on the pitch just yet. Um, Keller has done great uh, in um, in the understudy, but yeah, I mean. Liverpool, Salah will come back in, Diaz will come back in. Whether Nunes starts or not, I'm not sure. I thought Gakpo did certainly a lot better than him in the game against Atalanta. Um, Soberstein may come back into it, or maybe Soberstein might score. He's, he's probably not got enough goals, or for somebody of his ability, maybe. But he may get a few more. So Soberstein maybe to get himself a goal for this one, and, uh, and Liverpool to get the three points. Yeah, I think both seem to score, and Liverpool to win. And that is 2.5. The other game at 2 o'clock is the other uh, English side that got beat on Thursday. Uh, probably more more likely to because they got beat by Bayer Leverkusen who just don't lose. Uh, West Ham against Fulham, uh, a, a London derby of course. Again, West Ham 2.3. The draw is 3.66. Fulham 2.83. What's this going to be? I don't know. I've got no idea. Well, Fulham are the ones that I think they're the hardest to predict at the moment because you, you just don't know what you're going to get. A fantastic win against Spurs, where they look like Barcelona, Real Madrid. They played Spurs off the pitch, passed them off the pitch. They looked incredible. Great 3-0 win. Then they go away and draw 3-3 at Sheffield United. Then they lose 3-1 at Forest. And then they lose at home to Newcastle 1-0. Prior to the Newcastle game, nine games in a row before the Newcastle game, over two and a half goals in every game that Fulham have been involved in. So they're they're in a, a, a mindset of, we're going to try and win football matches. But also when you look at that and you look at those stats, yeah, we're going to try and win football matches, we're going to go and try and score goals. 
but actually we're not good enough to do because we keep conceding goals at the back. I mean, three against Forest and three against Sheffield United, two teams, third and fourth bottom, I think, respectively, they're, they're conceding too many goals. Um, West Ham off the back of a, a hugely disappointing result, but not unexpected against Labour Cusin, because no. we know how good they are. Still seventh, still battling for European places. Good at home. Um, will he change the team up? Will he focus on, on, on the next leg of the European game in the week? This probably, for me, is the hardest game of the weekend to back because you don't know what you're going to get. You generally West Ham at home, normally, I think, yeah, absolutely. Great win away at Wolves. Draw at home against Spurs. The way they lost against Wol uh, Newcastle, a little bit of a capitulation for them. I still think they're doing a fantastic job they're under David Moyes. I just don't know with Kudos, Paqueta, does Bowen come back in? Because Bowen was injured midweek. He mm. missed the trip to Leverkusen. Does he come back in? Does he play? Does he save him for the Leverkusen game? This is one. Save your bets until you see the team sheets. Yeah, Neil. I mean, Fulham's last five away games have been both teams to score and over two and a half goals. And but that's incredibly short in this game. One point seven three. That's why um, they they do their homework, don't they? they yeah. do their, um, these, these bookies know they what we're really talking do. about. They don't they often really get it do. wrong. No. Um, but West Ham again. We look at what a successful season for West Ham is, Neil. And David Moyes will say, well, even if we went out to the Europa League against. Bayer Leverkusen or conquering Bayer Leverkusen and maybe still sneak into Europe in the Premier League that's a really good season still so got to, got to keep winning and particularly at home where they are quite strong I think a successful season for West Ham is to be playing European football next season and and that could be 8th place we don't know yet what, what that may be so top 8 would be deemed a, a decent season they're in that position at the moment it is competitive for sort of 6th, 7th, 8th position this is a good time to play West Ham because it's in between the Europa League quarter-final games. They're still in the tie. They are still very much in the tie. Obviously, Pakitar will be suspended for the second leg, so that's a massive blow. But he will be featuring and a big influence for this one. Don't trust Fulham away. They've been nowhere near it. Two away wins all season. West Ham have been tough to beat at home. What have they drawn the last three games? So I think a draw would probably be the safer bet than backing either of these. Tough one to call. I, ju I just couldn't back Fulham to beat West Ham away. And the last time they did, here's a little stat for you, the last time Fulham beat West Ham away, I played. <laughs> it was in 2004. It was an wow. FA Cup game. And uh, we lost 3-0. Uh, Barry Hale scored. McBride scored. And the other goal scorer for Fulham that day, a oh, winger. I knew, I knew that was coming. Damien Duff. Now, he, he was a very good winger. He may have played for a team in Arsenal in red. A team in London in red? Just said <laughs> in Arsenal. <laughs> Arsenal. <laughs> There's not many other teams. In. Uh, Arsenal, Arsenal Linger went to Fulham. Went to Fulham. Ooh, it's a tough. path well tread. Oh, that's a tough one. Arsenal Linger. Uh, um, oh. No, go on. I'm, I'm stumped. Are you stumped? Barry Hale. I'm trying to think of the era. I think, I think Portuguese International, I'm right thinking. I think I know. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm done. LBM? Lewis Bowen Morton. Oh, Lewis. There we go. There wow. we go. I wouldn't have him as a winger. I wouldn't have him as a Wouldn't you? He was one of those Arsenal players that were. Not really. You don't remember forward. really playing for Arsenal. Yeah, but yeah. also just noted down as a forward. Could play anywhere across the front line, but not particularly well. Sorry, Lewis. Oh, that's a bit harsh. Sorry. <laughs> and by the way, he's a lovely, lovely man. <laughs> what a well, genuinely well, nice man. Oh, you've ever it made. made me feel bad. I didn't make you feel yeah, horrible because he's a lovely man. Lovely man. <laughs> Where is Bowen Morte there? Sorry, sorry. Sorry, Lewis. Uh, West Ham Fulham is the other game at two o'clock on Sunday. Uh, follow both of those in the clubhouse with sportsbet.io. Yeah, sorry, Lewis.
covering every game of the English Premier League, Champions League and Europa League live as they happen. For the best live bets, this is Clubhouse TV with sportsbet.io. Please gamble responsibly. And hello, hello, hello to you and you and you and you. It's very good to have you here. It's Sunday. It's Premier League. We've got three big matches, three very good matches, actually, for us to get our uh, betting teeth into. Liverpool taking on Crystal Palace. That kicks off in uh, not very long, about 10 minutes' time. We got to 1.2 on Liverpool, 8 the tie, 11 if you fancy uh, Crystal Palace. Um, then we've got West Ham against Fulham. Kicks off the same time. 2.42 for the Hammers. 3.65 the tie. 2.78 for Fulham. And Arsenal against Aston Villa is our final match on this Sunday. It's a 4.30 kickoff. 1.26 for Arsenal. 6.2 the tie. 11.5 for Aston Villa. It's James. Hello, everybody. That's, I promise you yesterday I'll be back. And it's him. Hello, Hello Joe. How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you? I'm all right. I'm just annoyed at you. I, in fact, I'm not just, I'm not all right. Well, like everybody, everybody's annoyed at me. I'm annoyed at you. Yesterday, I became a Leeds United fan, something you wanted me to admit to for <laughs> years and years and years. Yesterday, I even tweeted saying, today I am Leeds. And what do you do? Let you down. Let me down. Yes. I'll never be doing that again. All what? I wanted you to do was win, send Blackburn Rovers down, and now they're going to stay up thanks to you. You I, and your football club. I, I wanted exactly the same. I mean, I, you asked the creatures. They saw my face yesterday for 90 minutes. If you could take out a little bit of a, um, a montage of my reactions yesterday, it would fill you about two minutes of me just going, oh, oh, oh. I genuinely, that, that yesterday, I, I was more annoyed at that result than my own team's. Um, and that's pretty bad, but that's where I'm at. You've got good goalkeeper. I mean, what more do you want? Goalkeeper that can't even kick Good's the ball. Good's not the word <laughs> I'd, I'd be using. I, I was saying to you before we came on air, if you were him, you just want to kind of just get straight in your car and drive home, forget it ever happened, Yep. rather than go back into the dressing go room. Go into and, a dark room yeah, and look, stay there. Imagine going back into the dressing room, looking around your teammates and just basically thinking, I've just cost you. I've just be, cost you everything. To be fair, the goal that we scored was a bit... If eh. like they made a mistake and their keeper just booted it at Josh Brownhill, so that was a fortunate goal, and for, then we gave a fortunate goal away as well. For about five minutes though, yesterday we were talking in here that Burnley had a chance if they yeah. if they just nicked a winner, and with um, the results elsewhere, you just had a little bit of a sniff. But uh, yeah, that goal that went in and uh, and everything else. I mean, I think, we, we've yeah. got Sheffield United next. Yeah. I actually think they might beat us, you know, because they've got a decent forward line at the minute, as I've referenced on here a couple of times. But yeah, there have been so many times this season where we've got ourselves in front. We were 2 0 up at West Ham. We were 1 0 up at home to Wolves. These are all just recently. 1 0 up at home to Brighton, and we've thrown it away every single time. We're just not good enough. We just don't have enough anyway, quality. Enough of Leeds and Burnley, because <laughs> I think we've all had enough of Leeds and Burnley <laughs> for one weekend. Um, and Liverpool against uh, Crystal Palace. I'll give you the two teams. Um, Alisson's in goal for Liverpool. You've got uh, Robertson, Canate, Van Dijk and Bradley as a back four. McAllister, Endo and Jones in the midfield. Diaz on the left, Salah on the right and Darwin Nunes is leading their line. For Crystal Palace, it's Henderson in goal. Munoz, um, Anderson and Lerma are back three with Klein and Mitchell on either side. Wharton and Hughes in midfield with Mark, Mc, <laughs> Mateta up front with Elise and Eze. So the two big kind of star players for them are back and uh, starting Elise and Deze for Crystal Palace. And that, Joe, should make a little bit of a difference to Palace. They've been missing a little bit of uh, kind of sparkly pixie dust, haven't they? They have, um, but they, they do have decent players and whisper it quietly, but I do actually quite like the addition of Adam Wharton as well because he, he gives the other players the freedom to get forward. Um, he's a good player uh, despite his past. Um, but yeah, I think I think Palace will score today and that's where I'm going for my best bet for this game. What about Palace to score the first goal? Because Liverpool tend to start slowly and Palace to score the first goal and then maybe Liverpool to respond. We saw it in Europe, we've seen it before this season. Most times, Liverpool can see the first goal and then come back and still win 4-1 or something. Yeah. But uh, um, that's always worth a look, I think, uh, Clubhouse Creatures. Anyway, ahead of this game, Liverpool are in third place. They've played 31 games. They've got seven games left. They're on 71 points. Arsenal have exactly the same. 31 played and 71 points. They're in second by virtue of a better goal difference. And Man City, who obviously won yesterday, are on 73, two points clear at the top as things stand. So um, basically, in this little three-horse race for the title, Liverpool do need to win today, don't they, to keep up the pressure on the other two, Arsenal to play later. 
Yeah, it's a very interesting title race. Obviously, City getting the win yesterday and a comfortable win at home to Luton, as you'd expect. Um, but yeah, any of these two drop points today, and that could essentially see them not out of it, obviously, but um, they'll be facing an uphill battle if they don't get a win today. you got a feeling it's going to be win, 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 kind of most of the time. It's uh, it's the defeats that stand out as being the problem. Um, hello to Shadow Shigami. He said he was going to join us. Hello, Shadow. Coke is with us, uh, talking about his free bet being added. I think you finally got it in the end, Koki, haven't you? Uh, I know it was on my list. And uh, Entei's here. He says he's already added into my account for the free bet. I'm glad you've all got your free bets. Anyway, there are more chances today. I'm going to do spot bets through these first two games um, and then um, so there's 10 um, up for grabs in the first two matches um, that go together and then in the final game as Arsenal play take on Aston Villa we'll go for another 10 USDT 10 times 10 available in those as well so plenty of chances to win some free bets get in touch with us on the telegram chat tell us you're alive tell us what you're up to tell us what you're doing tell us what you're betting on always good to hear from you here on Clubhouse TV with sportsbet.io fun fast and ferociously fair and we've got other obviously we'll get to the second match in a second but there are other matches elsewhere so if there's anything else you'd like us to talk about um, just shout out on the telegram chat and we'll do our best to steer you in the right betting direction so we fancy liverpool but we fancy palace to get a goal how many goals we're going to get we're going to get a lot um probably yeah, the, three four one something like that and I, i've gone liverpool to win and both teams to score in this one mm. that's my best bet it is in the telegram chat i've, I've figured out how to do it again i forgot for a little very bit. well done um but they are back in there uh and so yeah i'm expecting i don't know how many goals but for me liverpool to win both teams to score because liverpool do tend to concede and palace have got decent players going forward i was on with dave tindall yesterday he's a liverpool fan he's there today actually and uh he was saying that obviously Liverpool got beaten in the week in Europe 3-0. Yeah. Um, Jürgen fielded a slightly uh, weakened side to start that one. They'll be looking at fans and players and Jürgen will be looking for a response from Liverpool today in terms of their league hopes. Um, West Ham against Fulham, though, is the uh, other game that we've got. I'll give you the two teams for there. Um, Fabianski is in goal for West Ham. You've got Emerson, Aguerd, Mavropanos and Soufal is the back four. Alvarez and Ward-Prowse in midfield. Paquita. Ings and Kudus behind Antonio. So Danny Ings starting Ings. just behind Antonio in the attack there. Um, Leno uh, is in goal. They haven't got Jared Bowen, so he's probably playing the Jared Bowen role already, isn't he? Um, Leno is in goal for Fulham. Castagna, Adrabayo, Bassi and Robinson is the back four. Polina and Lukic in midfield. Iwobi, Pereira and uh, William behind Rodrigo Muniz has been in sparkling goal-scoring form of late in attack. And we were just listening to the, the preview with Paul and Neil um, ahead of uh, coming on air and Paul was saying, you never quite know what you're going to get with Fulham. They can be great. They can be awful. West Ham are fairly consistent. Um, how do you see it? Uh, again, goals. And I know I do tend to sit here and say that quite a lot. Um, but today I do have some stats to actually back it up. I actually did some work today. No, you didn't. Um, who have, you nicked, who, have, who have you nicked them off? Briefly did some work. <laughs> I, went, I went on a website. Um, that's all I did. But out of West Ham's last eight games in the Premier League, five of them have been over 2.5 goals. And out of Fulham's last eight games in the Premier League, seven of them have been over 2.5 goals. So I'm expecting goals. I'm not sure who's going to win because, as, as they said on the preview, Fulham can be difficult to predict. But I'm expecting goals and I've gone for over 2.5. The odds aren't great. I think it's like 1.7. Um, but it's better than a pork in the eye. Um, I mean, it probably is. And um, both teams score across both games, I think, is a good play as well as a double, isn't it? You know, yeah, I think yeah. we'll get... Um, probably, Which is essentially what we've gone for. Yeah, we, probably, all, probably all four teams scoring today isn't a bad way in. Um, we've seen plenty of goals in the Premier League this season. I don't think this is going to be any different. Arsenal against Aston Villa coming later. Arsenal heavy favourites there, 1.26 at home against Aston Villa. But another team there in Arsenal. Kind of, it, it changes dynamic a little bit now, doesn't it? Because we've been watching Arsenal, Man City and Liverpool kind of win, 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 enjoying the football, playing really nicely. It's kind of the pressure now is to carry on winning, isn't it? Because then yeah. they can see the finish line. It's not too far away. We're in that final straight. So uh, plenty to play for. We are not too far away from kickoff. Premier League, two big matches. Liverpool fans singing Danny Ings there in the sunshine. It's quite a nice day in England today. And uh, we are not too far away from the first ball being kicked. Liverpool against Palace, West Ham against Fulham. Tell us how you're betting. Get in touch on the Telegram chat. It's great to have you here on this Sunday. Counting down to kickoff, covering every game of the English Premier League, Champions League, and Europa League live. This is Clubhouse TV with Sportsbet.io. Please gamble responsibly. And a very good hello to Lubo. Uh, Lubo, hello to you. Um, we've got Ente joining us as well. Flocky is here. 
Um, good to see you all here this uh, Sunday afternoon. We're underway um, in the West Ham Fulham game. That's uh, if I'm. If you see me looking that way. That's where Fulham um, West Ham against Fulham is. If you see me looking that way. That is where the uh, Liverpool Crystal Palace um, game is in our studio. Um, tell us how you are betting, everybody. Gamble responsibly, of course. And we want you to have fun. The whole point of the clubhouse is that we're all in this together. As me, Joe, you, all having a good Sunday afternoon, trying to get some winning bets, but uh, gambling responsibly so that we can uh, pay the bills at the end of the month as well. Um, but West Ham against Fulham, as I say, is underway. And there's a little bit of a silence here. Is this some kind of... Um, I think it's something to do with Hillsborough, isn't it? Because there was a yeah. big flag with 97 on it Kenny Dalglish is being pictured I there I think so. it's 35 years ago this week or next week is it? yeah 1989 it was wasn't it I remember that day I was one in mm. fact I wasn't even one no I just turned one so I don't remember it but I, I was I, I actually did my dissertation on um, how the media responded to it and obviously the mm. immediate aftermath and all the negativity surrounding well, Liverpool fans and the, then how it's reported I'll, I'll say now T- 10 years ago yeah. when I was actually at uni. They, they still don't um, buy the sun in, in Liverpool, do they? Because the way the sun um, covered that tragedy in the uh, in the aftermath. And, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, it's horrible, wasn't it? I mean, it was an awful day. I remember watching it on the television and uh, all of a sudden, it was like a normal Saturday afternoon grandstand and all of a sudden all the pictures were of Liverpool, but obviously they didn't show um, right up close and, and stuff with people being um, dragged out of the stands and what have you. But yeah, awful day for Liverpool. And um, yeah, those at uh, 97... Should never be forgotten by their fans or indeed anybody else. Um, but uh, they are about to get underway. So they've had that couple of minutes. They're going to be starting probably around about two minutes later than West Ham against Fulham. But they are about to kick the first ball there. So we'll see how we get going. Um, this is um, the last time Dave Tindall was quite emotional yesterday. Not, I'm not crying, but he was. you could tell it meant something. Um, this is the last time he's going to be at Anfield with Jurgen Klopp in charge. <laughs> Who cares? Oh, yeah. Oh. You're a heart of stone, man. Heart of stone. I, I don't get me wrong. <laughs> he's done well for Liverpool, but it's it's going to be the same. They just won't yeah. be as good. Well, I said I said to Dave yesterday. I said half of me quite likes him. I half, can't stand half of the me board. absolutely loathes the bloke. I respect. I respect he's a good manager. Mm. I respect he's a good manager. I think, that, but as a human being, I can't stand. I him. think the Premier League will be worse for him not being in it. I agree, and it's the same for Mourinho. It doesn't mm. mean doesn't mean he's a nice person. But, um, but Mourinho, actually, on the on the flip side, I actually do quite like yours. I, I like the oh, we, we camaraderie that it brings. If you had a choice um, of going out for a beer or a drink or a meal or whatever your chosen um, social activity would be with either, you, you need to pick two of this list, Joe. Jurgen Klopp, Pep Guardiola, Mikel Arteta, Jose Mourinho, um, Graham Potter, Sean Dyche Oof. or um, Harry Redknapp. Oh, you put Dyche in there. You can't do that to me. Um, oh, chance for West Ham. He's blazed it over. Am I only allowed to choose one? Two, you can have two of them. You can have two. Yeah. Right, Dash is one, 100%. They're paying as well, so you can, you can take them whenever you, wherever you like. Right, so we're going to the nicest restaurant in London. <laughs> uh, they're driving me down. And in fact, no, we're getting the train first class. Sean Dash is one. Just look, look at this mace. Is, Ooh, that, is that Antonio? From about eight yards out. That's poor. With the keeper on the floor. He's absolutely whacked what it as hard as he Horrendous defending Just look, look, look at this miss, though. He's hoofed that over the crossbar he's from eight yards. He's while he's hitting it. Oh, that's dreadful. Salah. Is it not? It's not Salah. It's Nunes. Um, and actually Mourinho. I'm just going to shout random names yeah. out. Yeah. Actually Mourinho. <laughs> it wouldn't be Klopp, I think, which is why you asked. I would choose Jose ahead. But then after that, it would probably be Klopp. Because Arteta, Pep... I don't want to sit there in silence. I'd, I'd quite like to um, go out with both Jürgen and um, Pep. Not you, because I think it's going to be a great... But they wouldn't speak to you. Not because I think it's going to be a great social occasion. I want to see how they re- interact with each other and what they talk about. Mm. The, one of the best sporting things I ever went to um, in terms of um, being with kind of famous people, um, I was working with Brian Lara and Mikhail Jaya Wardner and quite a lot of um, really big, chat. really big, wacky Eunice and quite some serious legendary cricketers. And I was sharing their little minibus, their little minibus that took them from the hotel that we were staying into the ground. This was in um, Abu Dhabi, Dubai. And um, the little kind of 20 minute journey to the ground each day was far better than the day itself because the little chats they had between each other which they wouldn't have on camera, or yeah, you know, you've, you've not. I'm not sort of suggesting there's massive secrets or anything, but just how they talked about people like Viv Richards and the Legends of the Game. It's just really, yeah, for 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 me, 
Um, it was a kind of cricket badger just listening to them talking. It was just great. I didn't have to say a word. I just sat in the corner and just watched them talk. And that's why I do like podcasts, because you will sometimes get people talking to mm. other people. Say like the Under the Cost podcast, for example. Yeah. It's a good one, that one, because it's ex-pros talking to ex-pros. They'll talk to each other in that manner. Yeah. That's why I do like listening that, one to of the, decent ones. One of the, my biggest regrets, Joe, in podcasting, because, uh, I mean, you do a football podcast. I do a cricket podcast. And um, I, I was in Barbados, <coughs> excuse me, looking to be in Barbados. And the uh, uh, the last day, obviously, getting back to the ho- to the airport from the hotel, got a taxi. And um guy that had been organising the trip had um, said, I'll get my mate to drive you to the airport. He's a taxi driver. And um, he chatted like a mil- it's about a 20-minute journey from the hotel to the airport. And he was like, Barbados cricket, but West Indian cricket. But mim, 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 mim. I knew Michael Marshall. That's where he was. I went to school with him there and he was buried there. And I just wished I'd had a tape recorder yeah. going in the passenger seat because that would have been a podcast episode that it would have been brilliant because he was just rattling off all of these names and little stories and anecdotes and stuff. It yeah, was absolutely superb. You'd have, had to be, you'd have had to film him sort of like covertly yeah. and then obviously not post any of it till the end of the trip and just be like, right, listen. Well, just ask record. him, is it, is it all right? If but I, then I think yeah. if you tell him, it'd be different. And start that trip. But then record it all, then tell him afterwards you've done it, then say you're going to release it. I, um, like at the start of that trip, I changed my theme music because I was abroad and I wanted it to be slightly different, kind of specials from Barbados. Yeah. And um, so I got some kind of calypso kind of West Indian music and stuff and uh, and changed the start of it. And I thought, all right, I want to have a proper accent on this. And I don't want to do it myself because I'll get cancelled. Um, so um, <laughs> I, I literally went up to the porter at the front of the hotel and said, mate, do you mind doing me a favour? I've got this these words written down on this bit of paper. Could you, just in your normal voice, just read these out into this dictaphone? And he did it in his voice, and that was the start of my podcast then. It was like, um, this is the Cricket Badger podcast in the Caribbean, blah, blah, whatever. Yeah. And, um, it, but it was in kind of proper West Indian accent. Yeah, it was that's great. cool. Yeah, you can't do that yourself, can you? And he did, he'd, he'd be did, able to get an AR to do it these days, yeah. though. But he, he didn't ask for any money. He was just kind of, he was just a, like the porter at the front of the hotel. But yeah, was, I hope you tipped him handsomely, though. I should have done, it. shouldn't I? But I didn't. You didn't. <laughs> no, a proper didn't. Yorkshireman. Yeah. I'm not from Yorkshire. I, sh- I should have done, shouldn't I? Acting in, like you are. In hindsight, I should have. I'd have been like, here's 10, whatever the currency is. Yeah. Here's 20 pence. Thanks. <laughs> There's a corner for West Ham from this near side. Yet to get a goal, but we've had a bit of action. There's West Ham oh! again, side oh. netting that time. That angle fooled me, I'm not going to lie. It's Paqueta. He's a good player. Just like. sold my car to Lucas Paqueta. That's what they say. Have you? No, I haven't personally. I thought, oh, sorry, outside. I thought you had. Um, Alexi, hello to you. Um, it's good to have some people sensible with me today. Brahi's here. And we've got to Dark Derwalt and we've got Ramsey. Hello to all of you. Good to have you here on this Sunday. Um, for those just joining us, we uh, haven't actually chosen a spot bet. I was about to say the spot bet is. Yeah, no, we haven't actually chosen one. What should we do? A goal. First goal. First goal, and there's 20,000 winners. Well, how many How many is it? Five? 20,000. We'll go for 20,000. 20,000 winners. It's out of your own pocket. Um, Taff 9A, hello to you. <laughs> Joe's going to pay you personally today. That's really nice of you, Joe. I have not said that, and That's we do really, have footage to prove this. Really nice of you. You're, you're a fine young man. Um, all right, I'm going to put on a bet on myself. I've, I've, I've already done mine. I did mine before the show started because I am a professional. I am. Um, I couldn't do. Oh, chance, 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 chance. Fulham. And it's Fulham. We have got the first goal, and we have got the first spot bet landing within minutes of Joe saying it. We have got a free bet available for you, and Fulham have scored. It's Andreas Pereira who has put West Ham ahead. West Ham have missed a couple of golden opportunities down the other end. Fulham first opportunity back of the net. <laughs> So, clubhouse creatures around the world, we have an opportunity very early doors for you to get yourself a 10 USDT in terms of free bets. I'm no producer today, so I'm going to have to do all the admin myself. And uh, we go, Unlucky. we go, 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 go. And so, the first ones, get your sportsbet.io usernames into the chat right now, and we will um, get you. Um, or two of you, 10 USDT in your back pockets. You can trouser 10 USDT. And if you win the first time round, you could even win again. Um, so there's no restrictions there. But Fulham take the lead away at West Ham. And Fulham go to 1.92. They go favourites to win this match. 3.8 the tie. 3.8 for the Hammers, Joe. Interesting, interesting prices there. I would, would suspect with them scoring quite early, West Ham are capable of coming back into this. 
Um, so 3.8 for West Ham is quite high. Uh, maybe a small stake on that one. Um, but yeah, a good start by Fulham. And yeah, Pereira, who is in my draft team I think I got rid of someone from Fulham recently it might have been him I can't remember mm. uh, it might have been William but he, yeah, he, he takes it round the defender open net and he does actually nearly put it over the bar but uh, a decent finish in the end and it's 1-0 to the Cottagers forgot their name there for a second yeah Fulham yeah. no I, I'm going for the nickname team, team that's playing I like away from home Jay. I like nicknames Yeah. Well, what are you going to nickname me I can't say it on camera unfortunately oh, why I'll tell you off air I don't want to get cancelled. I just get fed up of you calling me sexy beast. I've never, ever, ever said that. <laughs> it might end in beast. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, it's uh, lovely to have you here, Joe, as always. Um, we have got, I'm going to put stop, stop, stop into the chat any second now. So if you haven't got your sports bet, use an name into the chat just yet. Get it in now. You've got to be in it to win it. And uh, I will give you about 20 more seconds and the stop, stop, stop will go into the chat. An early spot bet. That's, I think that's one of the quickest we've ever landed in terms of a spot bet on Clubhouse TV. So Joe's on fire today. Um, on your side, paying it all out of his own pocket and uh, very generous of you, Joe. So the stop, stop, stop is into the chat. I will count up the... Uh, one. <laughs> Right, I have got the number. I'm going to do the random number generator and I will pull out two winners, Clubhouse Creatures Around the World. And the first winner is... Dum, 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 dum. Um, it is... One, two, three... <laughs> it's uh, Lolo Jones. Lolo Jones, you're a winner with uh, Clubhouse TV and Sportsbet.io. So, Lolo, you are into the uh, winner's enclosure. I will get you... Uh, I'm saying winners in closure. It feels like um, I'm talking about the Grand National yesterday. Um, so, Lolo, you're on my list, onto the uh, the good list. And the second winner is... Uh, bum, 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 um, Brahi. Brahi, you're a winner. So, uh, there you are, the first two winners. Um, Clubhouse TV and Sportsbet.io today. Um, Joe, we need to go again. Are you going to pick the next one? Um, yellow card. Yellow card then. So we've had a goal. So Joe's now going for a yellow card. So, so should we get we a yellow card? Straight away again. Patnam G, refresh your browser, Patnam G, because you are uh, just a little bit behind time there. So if you um, thought that you entered on time, um, you didn't. Um, you weren't included in that draw. But if you refresh your browser, get a little bit more up to date, you will will make sure you're in the next draw, should you choose to enter it. Um, so first goal is in the back pocket. Um, do How many goals? Um, I said, I mean, obviously... You don't know exactly how many goals because you can't see into the future. But do you sense that we're going to get a few goals between West Ham and Fulham today? Yeah, well, we did say that, didn't we? I went for over 2.5. I mean, um, an early goal doesn't always guarantee it doesn't, a goal fest, does Fulham it? Fulham don't seem like the team that are just thinking now to themselves, well, let's sit back. Whereas yeah. some teams obviously would get an early goal and then just sit back. Fulham will continue to try and hurt West Ham. Bad James. Bad James forgot to put the info bar on. Oh. Info bar is now Have there. you had a message? No. No. No, I just looked down at the screen and thought, oh, bad James. Yeah, Naughty James. boy. Wouldn't have in your if, basket. Wouldn't have happened if uh, Simon was sat there. In your basket, James. It's, I've got lazy because when we've had producers, they they do that for me. 2-0, oh. nearly. Oh, tip with Pereira again. Oh, that was close. Yeah, see, it's weird today without a producer, isn't it? Mm. Not my, my shift hasn't changed in the slightest, to be fair. So it nobody's stare at them, have we? Can't nobody to wave back yeah, at us? Somebody, so, somebody every now and then, I'll catch their eye in yeah. there, and then there's a, a brief moment. Yeah. That's not happening today. I keep looking for a moment, and no one's going to provide me with that. I, mean, I could leave this chair and go and sit there if you want. Mm. Will that help you? Probably not, no. I can no. just sit here on my own. Yeah. That Would you miss me? No. <laughs> anyway, we are underway, properly underway now for the... Uh, two matches in the Premier League. As I said before, there are plenty of other matches elsewhere as well. And um, we've kicked off in uh, France in League One. Clement Foot against Montpellier is goalless in the, the 15th minute there. In action in Italy, it's a swallow against AC Milan. It's 2-0 to the home side. AC Milan getting battered in the early stages of that one. AC Milan, second place, but their chances of winning into a kind of nailed down Serie A this season. But AC Milan 2-0 down against the Sassuolo team who started today in the relegation zone. So uh, that could be a huge three points for the home side there. Only 14 minutes gone there. So if you fancy AC Milan to come back into that one, the price should be quite decent. Las Palmas mm. um, down to 10 and down a goal against Sevilla. 47th minute, Sevilla leading by a goal to nil there. I'll dig out the price on AC Milan because it may 
Um, just to tempt a few in that one. You'll kind of look at it and think, AG Milan, 2 0 down, really early, 5.3. That must be worth lumping on. But uh, Sassuolo have got a lot to play for. AC Milan haven't. So that might be. Uh, um, yeah, might just. Oh, got a first goal. It's gone to Crystal Palace. Crystal yes. Palace are going to take the lead away at Liverpool. And what did we say? Palace to score first, both teams to score. Liverpool this do This is concede. a good start. It's a great start. And if, obviously, if you've gone Liverpool both to score and win, which we have, then it's a fantastic start for that. But you did say Palace to score first. Yeah. Did, you, did you go as far as putting it on? There oh, it is. Easy as you like. Oh, is that is that an intended pun? Eberechi as you like. And uh, yeah, to Palace score the opening goal. And uh, wow, we've got two goals, both for the away sides. We fancied both teams to score. We're looking for the home sides to bounce back. Jürgen is looking not happy. He's coming, come on, boys. But uh, there's a few nerves, I think. Um, I mean, we're talking about the top end of the championship. All the teams are losing or drawing. Um, there's a lot of nerves and a lot of tension at the top of the... Ch uh, this is why I think Man City are in the best shape. Because yeah, they have been before. there and done it. 100%. And they know how to get across the line. The nerves are obvious for Liverpool, I think, at the moment. And uh, they need their Liv the Liverpool crowd to get behind them now and raise them back up again. Yep. So, Tyndall, if you're listening, get behind the boys. If you um, had gone, instead of going for a, what did you go, for a card, yes. go for another goal, we'd have already landed the next I know, spot. I we've had that, haven't we? Yeah. I do but, like to mix it up. But we've got another goal. Liverpool behind 1.58, 4.7 the tie, 5.2 for Palace, despite being a goal up. What a start we've had. So inside 15 minutes, we've got a goal in each game. And so we have got hopefully plenty more, uh, act, well, much more action still to come. I haven't actually got round to getting my bets on yet because um, every time I do, somebody scores and all the markets get greyed out. <laughs> yeah, well, I am a little bit annoyed. I put Liverpool both to score and win on, but I couldn't find over 2.5 on that one. And then there's been an early, been an early goal. Yeah. I was going to put it as a double. Instead, I've just gone Liverpool both to score and win so I'm happy I do think that will come in now well I'm going to go for um, in, on my own personal account I have just put on another goal in each game in the first half as a double just, o just over um, two as the price there Ooh. Yeah. so I can kind of just a little bit more than double my money should, should we get another goal in each game in the first half so come on come on don't just now I've put my bet on don't just kind of just be cagey. Tends to be the case. Don't be cagey. Just get on with it and score lots of goals for me. Um, so anyway, hopefully those two goals have uh, started your days well. AC Milan have already pulled the goal back. 16 minutes gone and it's now 2-1 to Sassuolo. Sassuolo aren't used to, to winning. AC Milan are. AC Milan don't need to win, but they're just a better team. So uh, they're now 2-1 down. So if you took that 5.3 on AC Milan to win that game, you've had a good start to that bet. Here come uh, Crystal Palace again. Nice little dribble into the area. Ooh. Gets... Uh, just gets checked off, but he probably was looking for that challenge, wasn't he? And uh, referee, the referee has nothing to do it. with that. Sunshine down in um, in London. Look, beautiful day. You get past Birmingham, it's sunny all the time. Up here, cloudy, windy, raining. It's not raining. Well, it's today. not too. It's not too bad today. It's not horrendous. Yeah. Probably a bit too many clouds for my liking. West Ham. West Ham have had the chances in the early stages of this match, haven't they? They missed that uh, chance uh, from about eight yards. Yeah. Made to pay for that because Fulham went straight down the other end almost and scored. But Ooh. good shot from range, but straight to the keeper. Um, oh my, OMG, Liverpool, says Slissy. Nice Palace goal, says Ente. Simple Palace goal, wasn't it? Just uh, passing to feet, slotted it home. It Pass, was, uh, move. Yeah, nice and easy. Peel away, easy finish. You don't need to score everything from 35 yards, do you? You can uh, uh, Sometimes people try and get a bit too intricate, but uh, if you can pass it and pass it quickly and uh, move into space then it makes football a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace one, West Ham nil, Fulham one as West Ham come forward to try and get back into the first half there. What have Liverpool got here then? Luis Diaz down the left. Ball's played in, but there's absolutely nobody there. Terrible clearance, though. Yeah, it weren't great, was it? But they do manage to get it away eventually. So, uh, where's your, who scores the next goal in each of these two matches? Palace. Palace. Palace are going to score it, and they've scored. Oh, good clearance! That was. Did that go across the line? No, no. no. Wow, Andy Robertson was and an amazing clearance. That was in. That was basically in. He, he's taken that off the line. I bet part of that ball was behind the line when he cleared that. Yeah, yeah. This is the problem, though. Obviously, Liverpool pushing now, and they will do because they're behind. But Palace have got the players to hurt them. Oh, I don't hurt. I don't want to see anybody hurt. As long as it's Liverpool, I don't mind. <laughs> 
Um, I also need today. Who was my um, my picks for scoring this weekend? I I need goals, Joe. I need goals from two oh, Liverpool so players. And uh, Virgil Van Dijk and Sobberschlei are on my list to score today. That's a point. I had a good day yesterday with Oello. Oh, it's on your screen in a minute. Is it going to show it? Yep, here. Oh, that's right on the line. It is. I'll tell you give what. Me, give me the technology picture. That is right. So yeah, Virgil Van Dijk and Sobberschlei. If either of them two score today, I'm happy. Uh, but so we will see how we go. I had Fabian Shaw. I have Fabian Shaw. So he, he scored yesterday and got a clean sheet. He got me 13 points yesterday. And overall, I got 20. Very well done. So that was pretty yeah. poor. I, really, I think I only had three players play for me. Oh, I, It was Pereira I got rid of, and I kept William. Oh. Um, I have got playing now. Have I got anybody playing now? Um, I have Konate. I've got Bradley on the bench. He's not going to come in, I it don't He's already think. conceded. Um, and I haven't got any Crystal... No, I haven't got anybody playing at the moment. West Ham players, no... And I've got no Fulham players. So, yeah, total dry game this for me. You can do whatever you like, guys. Just score lots of goals and get lots of defenders minus points. Um, so, uh, Patnam G's happy. AS um, says goal. AS, you, AS is um, Lolo Jones, isn't it? Confusing when you've got different names. Um, and uh, we've got Ente here, Mitch R's with us. We've got Slicy here, um, Brahi, Patnam G. Loads of people tuned in today. Goal decision system says no. And part of the ball is over. Half of the ball is in the goal, basically. Mm -hmm. Half of it is on the line, and a little bit slither of it's uh, um, just in, in in play. But uh, obviously, all the ball needs to go right across the line for it to be deemed a goal. So that's a very, very good piece of uh, defending there from Andy Robertson. Yeah, he did very well. He did very well. Palace were counter-attacking quickly, and that's a problem with Liverpool pouring forward at the minute. But like I said before, you brutally interrupted. Palace have got some good players, and they can hurt Liverpool. What did what? When did I interrupt you? When you, I said the Palace have got the players to hurt Liverpool. I was going to say a bit more, but you went, I don't want that. I don't want, I don't want anybody to get hurt. Well, no, I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm a peaceful creature. Peace you're, and love, you're everybody. You're not a creature. You are the lord of the creatures. <laughs> I'm the lord of the creatures. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, my creatures. I am the lord <laughs> of you. No, that's not true. There's, there's, uh, we're all in this together, Jay. We're all yeah. in this together. Let me know. Don't know words. After that. You were just making that up, were you? I, th I think that bit was right, wasn't it? Well, there, there wasn't any tune or, or, or rhythm or anything to that. I am a very good singer, I'll have you know. Are you? Yes. Here come West Ham. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a duet later. No, that's the last thing I want. L Bar advert coming on screen here now, showing the recent meetings between the two. Liverpool can't get... A um, couple of draws in there, to be fair. Liverpool not really getting any traction inside the Crystal Palace half at the moment. It's Crystal Palace are playing the better football. As I say that, um, Liverpool <laughs> coming forward, but it's uh, hoofed away by That'd the Palace defence. And but as I say that, it's 1-1. But most, <sighs> most of the play's been down the it other has, end, isn't it? It has, to be fair. I do not sound like that. You do. As I say that, I was... As I say that, it's a goal for Liverpool. Do not say that. And, uh, then, the, and then the... <sighs> was me being you pressing the button. Coming to a cinema near you. That's not what it sounds like. Oh, there's an injury. Whoever... No oh, he's probably just winded. He's, he's, he's not being soft. Get he's up. fallen badly rather than being... Uh, he's just uh, landing on tackled. his face, though, yeah. hasn't he? He's landing on his chest, isn't he? He'll be right. He can get up. Yeah. Well, he's right. He has got up. Stop being soft. Sick of it. <laughs> you sound like Carl Pilkins. Yeah. Does he come from near where you? you yeah, he's, come, he's Manny, isn't he? He's what? He's Manchester, isn't he? Manny. Yeah, Manny. What's Manny? Manny, short for Manchester. Nobody's ever said that. In their everybody life. from Manchester calls it Manny. No, they don't. Liverpool. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people. It's like you're going Manny. Nobody says that. Don't know why they did a Scouse accent. Nobody ever said. Nobody I has say ever said that time. in their life. I say it apart from time. you. Nobody's ever said that. Manny. Yeah, Cole Pilkington. Um, Idiot Abroad. With Ricky Gervais. You're very like him, actually. Apart I'm from nothing you got like him. Apart I from am you got nothing hair. like him. Go on, think of something. I can see your brain working. We'll do a little feature on here. Idiot in the studio. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not happy about this. Corner kick from take, take away Andy Robertson on this near side. Going to swing it in left-footed. Virgil's up there. Go on, Virg. Get it on the end of this one. Header. Oh, he nearly did. Oh, nearly he did, just over the top of his hat. And uh, Crystal Palace able to uh, 
get the ball back. So 1-0 to Palace. They're 4.6. Palace are 4.6 a goal up. 4.6? Could you be tempted? Yes. Small stake, 4.6. I'd take that because, as we've seen, they could have very easily been 2-0 up already. They've got good players going forward and can hurt Liverpool on the counter, so... a goal up. So they don't need to do anything. Stay the same, they win. Don't do anything. Ideally defend. Yeah. Um, But other than that. Yeah. Defend, maybe score a few more goals. That would help. Yeah. Um, But apart from that, yeah, you're doing exactly the right thing, boys. You're doing exactly the right thing. Um, So we've got uh, plenty of other matches, as I say. Got cricket and uh, around the world as well. We've also got um, the Masters. You've been watching that? I have, yeah. I have. And I have Scheffler to win. So I'm happy at the minute. I don't think he does. Well, on our podcast this morning, me and Dave Tindall to a goal. I think goal. Is he one in front or something? At he's, the I mean, he's the best player in the world and he's leading going into the final round. But he's on the um, US PGA Tour. He's only converted four of um, ten, his last ten 54 hole um, leads. So he's not a guaranteed front runner. Um, and we felt that Colin Morikawa was the, uh, or Dave, Dave Tindall felt Colin Morikawa was the, probably the, the value play. I've also got Cameron Young as well to finish in the top eight. I think he's tied ninth at the minute. Yeah, so. he's, he's in contention. He's playing yeah. quite nicely. Good, yeah, he's a good player, quite understated kind of individual, isn't he? Mm. Uh, but I, I love the Masters. The Masters is just um, the Masters in the Open. Uh, just the two showpiece. I'll be honest. I don't really like golf that much, but when the big ones are on, I will have mm. it on the telly and kind of just potter about the house while watching it. Kind yeah. Of thing. Uh, yeah, I, I get that. It's uh, but yeah, two two really good uh, events. Those. So, uh, um, I mean, you get. So a lot of a lot of events. I mean, the World Cup football. You've obviously. I mean, I'm not into American sports, but obviously the Super Bowl is yeah, a huge deal. I'm not into it. Um, IPL cricket is massive. Um, you get certain events that are just kind of almost bigger than sport. Wimbledon as, as a tennis spectacle is uh, is there, and uh, the U.S. Masters golf is um, right. You know, creme de la creme of kind of blue ribbon um, golfing event that's watched around the world. So, looking forward to watching the final round tonight. Finish off with you. Shut down the shop. We'll, sh- we'll, we'll lock the door and go back and watch the golf. Not together. Not together. Yeah, not together. Are you going to give me a lift home? How far away do you live? <laughs> you can take me anywhere. No. Take me to the airport, Jack. You don't live at the airport. <laughs> yeah. I've decided I might retire early and move to Spain. Eh? Hey? I think Matt. I think I might. I don't know. Can we do live links? I, I can set up a camera. You could be in our... Um, Madrid. I can be your Madrid correspondent, your La our, Liga our, correspondent. Our Spanish expert. There you go. Joining us and from... And by Spanish expert, I will just answer the call topless with a beer in hand. Yeah, but yeah jo- it's right. It's lovely. Joining us from the pub in Spain is... From the, the English the, the pub. The Red Lion, yeah. From, from the Irish pub in Spain is Joe. From the Red Lion in Bellamedinos. Here he is. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah, I'm sure that'll be... Um, much appreciated. Thanks for your offer. <laughs> I'll mention it to Gav. He's in charge. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can be on that one. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to deal with you. Um, I go with West Ham. Fulham draw in first half. Odds of 4.2, says Slissy. And here come West Ham. So, uh, he's looking for a tie Defenders by half that. time. Good luck yeah. with that. 4.2 price. 15 minute market. Yes. Why not? Go for it. I Since I put um, another goal in each game in the first half on, we haven't had a sniff, have we? You basically ruined all momentum in these games yeah. as Andy Robertson comes forward to Liverpool. Ball oh, in the box, corner. defended. Corner ball! Corner's starting to build up for Liverpool on this near side. Have we had a yellow? We've not no. had a yellow, have we? No. You, you started off really well by a very quick goal. All the clubhouse pictures were kind of painting pictures of you and put them on their duvets and walls and stuff and now they're taking them off because you're second if you're taking them off I will have them I'll put them up in my house your second pick is um, is, is bombing isn't it at least it will come in you don't know that could, we could have two matches without yellow cards Andy Robertson swings in the corner for Liverpool that's a oh, good one can be. somebody can somebody can somebody can Just somebody pork it. oh it's oh. off the crossbar off the crossbar Joe who were that? Robertson again? And that, is that a foul on the it end? Was, it was, it was going Mo down? in the end, wasn't it? They was got it the, Mo? It was Mo with the final shot off the crossbar. Who's that with that touch? Fantastic touch. Liverpool are still pressing. Virgil van Dijk got about as close to scoring there as I'll probably ever see him today. Yeah, fingers crossed anyway. Oh, Liverpool starting to just rank up the pressure. A Tell you bit. what, if Liverpool are hanging on, uh, pushing, and they need a win. What is guaranteed to happen with the Premier League? 
there'll be a penalty. 100% Liverpool penalty. Let's have a look at the markets. <laughs> Was that supposed to be an impression of me as well? No, I'd have gone, let's, let's have a look uh, at the markets. Let's have a look at the markets. Let's have a look at the markets. <laughs> let's have a look at the markets. Uh, what's the markets telling you, Joe? You've gone, you've gone more, like, I don't know, I can't fit, place what's, it. What's the markets telling you? It's like sesame seeds. You've gone sesame seeds here. One of the sesame puppets. Street. Sesame. <laughs> sesame. Sesame seeds. God. Yeah, sesame Street. You know that one that lives in the bin. <laughs> that's me. Yeah, you'll yeah, you that, have a look of him as well. Yeah, that's that'd be me. That'd you have a look my... of him. I'll say, so, what's the markets telling you, Jack? I can't because I've got to do a few things at once here. Have you ever heard my Donald Duck impression? Yes. Yeah, yeah it's very good. Isn't it? When I was younger. So much and younger than today. And obviously I am considerably younger than you. <laughs> when I was at school... Chance. Liverpool! Oh. Oh. When I was at school, everybody did that impression. Everybody did it. Yeah. Lewis Diaz there. On the cross from the, Andy Robertson, he's having a big part to play in this first he's half. He's having a barnstormer of a game. Cleared off, a the fir, off the um, line. at the post. And... Uh, that's a good chance, isn't it? He slaps it away. He's like, no. No, you're not having it. No. Dean Henderson in goal for Palace. So, uh, West Ham, ball across. Oh, he's gone for the acrobatic. Here's a shot. Blazed past Liverpool the post. corner, header, over. It's all happening, isn't it? It is. It's it a busy, really, busy day. It really is. You said we'd have good games. It's a busy, busy day. I don't think there's a penalty market. Tell us how you're betting, everybody. Tell us how you're betting. What do you need in the first half? This you need a draw in the West Ham game by half time. What do you need? Have you got any first half markets? I need goals. I need a goal in each game before half time. It's not coming, Joe. You have killed it. Right. Everyone was sat here ready for a good day of football. <sighs> you thought, tell you what, less of that. I'll ruin it for everyone. Yeah, I have. And I have ruined it for everybody. You have. It's Just all like you ruined my fault. The Blackburn Rovers relegation dream for everybody yesterday. All my fault. All my fault. I take responsibility. I don't, I'm not one to shirk it. I'll just apologise. I take full responsibility for ruining all your weekends. I'm very sorry, everybody. You ruined mine. As soon as I checked the rotor <laughs> and it said James B, I was like, oh. You were unfaithful to me the other day. I was, and I enjoyed it. And I'll do it again. You're playing away with Simon Barlow, weren't you? Have I, I've got, I think I've got a few more this month, actually. And I, am I with you again? I, I'm not getting it rolled up. I can't be bothered. Here come Crystal Palace. I think I've got a Jack C one. Can they make it a second? Can they make it a second? Oh, he's they offside. Oh. He was offside. He did look offside. He was there, offside. But it was saved by Alison. I need a goal. I need a goal in each game. I need Liverpool to turn it round. You know that famous song? I need a goal in each game. Yeah, it's a great song. Beatles song, wasn't it, I think? He's miles off there, isn't he? What's he doing? He's, and even then, yeah. he's doing some fancy crap to try and stick it in net. Just, some just fancy put crap. Your, he's just, a fancy dam. That's what he is. He's fancy dam. You're at full Alan Partridge, yeah. He has a fancy dam. That's got to be. Is it a pen? It is. Right, score Hold that. On. Hold Sco on. Score that, and then I need a goal in that game. Chance for... I don't, it's outside the box. Oh, it's not it? a pen. Oh. I thought it's on the line oh, for ru me. ruined it for me. Wait. Wait. Yeah, it's outside, no, it's outside the box. Outside. You, I mean, I blame you for that. In well, this, I am one to shirk in, it and in, say it's nothing to do with me. <laughs> in this blame culture that we've developed on Clubhouse TV, you're to blame for everything. And who's to blame for all this mess in here as well then, by the way? And we're having all sorts of things done. You notice the difference outside? I have noticed the difference. Did you There's just a walk... massive wall missing. Or did you just walk in but looking at your phone? you don't need to stick it all in here. Did you just walk in just looking at your phone thinking, oh, I'm not I'll just a 14-year-old. I do look up from my phone occasionally. And then, can you I was in before you again today. No, you were not. I, when I walked in, were you here? No. Answer the question, yes or no. No. Well, there you go. And that's the end of that. But how did the studio get magically turned on? I presume Jennifer had been in and then left. <laughs> I think I might have done that bit. Yes. Yeah, you, you tried to avoid me early on. I saw you in the car park. I came down to see you. And you'd gone up the stairs. You just ignored me. Well, I got a uh, McDonald's on the way in. Not here. Where was your message to say, James, what anything? Well, I didn't get it from round here. I was hungry because I've not had any breakfast, so I got it in Burnley. And then as I was on the motorway, I was trying to eat it. It was falling to bits. So I stopped off at a service because I was getting properly stressed because I couldn't eat it. So I stopped off at a service station, ate, ate it. And then when I got here, I thought, oh, I'll just get rid of the rubbish now, put it in the bin. 
First world problems, these, aren't they? Honestly, I yeah. was so annoyed. I actually was driving when I'm getting stressed because I was getting stressed trying to eat it. Liverpool, free kick. Defended. Alexa McCarthy trying to shoot. Other well, fast food establishments are available. Yeah, but you don't use them. I do occasionally. I like a Burger King at the airport. Yeah? Yeah. It's a tradition. Do only at the airport. Yeah, I, I yeah. only ever really have one at the airport. I, I mean, my personal preference is actually Burger King. It's just... Mm. It's, it's, there's more meat in a Burger King. It, feel, it tastes more meaty. I'll give, I'll give the Whopper is better than the Big Mac, but the Big Mac is more convenient. So if you're watching um, McDonald's and Burger King, have a nice day. There are other fast food establishments, but we available. don't use them. I like some of them. And great out between West Ham and Fulham. Why is this? Tell me. Is it because something is happening? I reckon it might be. Good, good call. <laughs> Thanks for that. A man down, big challenge. Is it a Fulham, pen, a Ful- red? Fulham player is All down. All the chatting. Fulham player is down. Someone's getting sent off here. Is there going to be a card, Joe? Off, off, is off, the, off, do you know what off, a card brings, off. don't you? I do. Card means prizes for and the punters. And to be fair, I just said yellow, but we meant all cards. No, you didn't. You, only, you just said yellow. I meant if it's a red, cards. it doesn't count. I meant all cards. <laughs> Let's, Let's have a look at this. Oh, oh that's, not, that's not a lot in there, is there? What, what on earth are they mourning about? Yes, he's, he's slightly late and his studs are on the top. Yes, he gets the ball, doesn't he? I don't think he does. It's just late, though. Oh. What, what was all that about? There was no, no hint of a yellow. Football is dying before our very eyes. If they're looking at stuff like that, football is dying. The game has gone. Where? There's a title for a new podcast. Where's it gone? Game's gone. Where? Where's it gone? Oh my god! I've just had a brainwave. Podcast idea: Games gone, referring to all the ridiculous things that happen in football this week. You realise that's not your dictaphone. That's a shame. Yeah, I'll write it down then. They are post-it notes to kind of give you reminders, but you do need to write it. And see what I was saying earlier it's about not... doing research. Let's have a look. You can't see it, can you? So let's pass it here. It's a bit of scrap paper with a about about. St- 16 tally marks on it. Won't be 16. That's your research for today's show. Yeah. I wanted to see how many times Fulham and West Ham games had over 2.5 in them. That's, that's Joe's research for today's show. That's good research, yeah. that. The bet's going to come in, probably. Yeah. Maybe. Potentially. Possibly. Definitely, I, maybe. Can I get a goal in the first half of these two games? No, it, you 100% over, over one and ruined and a half double. anything. You ruined uh, everything. I want the other one and a half double. Nope, it's not happening. Oh. You need what? So what? You need one more in each. Yeah, it's not a lot to ask, is it? Maybe, maybe, it's maybe, it. maybe, it's maybe, it. maybe it's Palace. It. Oh, it's it. Fulham, 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 Fulham. Basically, excitement followed by disappointment. On Clubhouse TV with Sportsbet.io, the world's most fantabulous Bitcoin sports book. Lovely to have you here, James and Joe, with you. The two Jays with you in the studio. And we have got, so these two matches are kind of approaching half time um, with the two away sides leading by one goal to nil. And um, you can still get Crystal Pass 5.1 away from home leading by a goal to nil at Why are they Anfield. Going up? I don't know. Um, 4.65 for Liverpool, 4.1 for the tie. And at West Ham, 5.1, 3.75 for the tie, 1.62 for Fulham leading away. Um, down there in London, a header from close range by Fulham, well saved by Fabianski in the West Ham goal. Uh, don't forget as well, we've got another game coming up for you later, 4.30 kickoff in the Premier League. Arsenal taking on Aston Villa, 1.26 for Arsenal, 6.2 the tie, 11.5 for the Villains. So plenty oh. of football to look forward to. And of course, a game tomorrow night as well, Monday night football returns with Chelsea against Everton kicking off at 8 o'clock. European football in the week. You get Friday off and then you join us on Saturday to do it all again. Hoo-ha, as Al Pacino would say. Who's playing Monday night, tomorrow night? Did you not just listen to me? I know, I turned off. Chelsea Everton. I'm in tomorrow night. Is it me and you again? No, no, I'm not in. Who have I got? Are you going to be unfaithful to me again? Yeah. Oh. At least I'm honest about it. Who have I got? I'm just, it, u- I'm just used, don't I? I think it's Jack. Like a piece Is of it me. Jack? I don't know, I don't know. I'm not getting the role. I, um, you should look at your road to more. I look at it for when I'm in. And then I write down when I'm in in my diary. Then I don't look at the rotor again. Although I did this week because I was checking when I needed to be in. 
I don't normally do that. Yeah. And then I noticed that it was actually a typo in the rotor. So I messaged Gav. So obviously, that's the person that you chat to when, when there's an issue. And I said, why do I need to be in at 12.45 when the games don't start till 2? He said, good spot. That's a typo. Being at 1.45. Well, I mean, if you've been here at 12.45, you wouldn't have seen me here. Chance, oh, good save from Fabianski. I've Full been here that early before and you're never here. No, I, I usually come about... Well, you should come before you, put it that way. Very rarely these days do you come before Absolute me. Absolute rubbish. You were hardly ever in. I mean, uh, to be fair to you, you've got better. Gone are the days when you walk in about two minutes before kickoff. Hold on. And then go, how do I turn this computer on? That's never happened ever. Yeah. And this is actually... West Ham a... into the hands of the keeper. This is actually a defamatory statement, and I will be contacting my lawyers. Um, I have got written... I've got proof. Prove it. CCDV footage in this studio. CC what? So you said whatever it was in the studio. <laughs> I've been in that Irish bar that you frequent. Uh, I went to an alehouse I used to frequent. And I saw Kenny. His money was spent. Burnley song. What was that song you sang last season? About 12 in a row or something? Uh, 10 in a row. Well, how did he go? And I like it, I like it, I like it, I like it, I la 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 like it, la 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 like, here we go, Burnley's won ten in a row. How many times have you sung that this season? Zero, obviously. <laughs> how, many, how many times have you won ten in a row this season? At home. Zero. At home. At home? Yeah. Let me talk to you about your results at home, shall I? Bottle jobs. How many have they lost? Too many. Didn't lose. Oh, yeah, this is, this is, this is. They lost yesterday. You've ruined it. We lost one game at home all season last season and we lost it on purpose so we could win the league at Blackburn the week after. You're just bottling it. You're just it. bringing back bad memories to me. It was yesterday. It's only a memory. I mean, I guess by definition it is a memory, but it was yesterday. Well, you said, when you said by definition, that is a memory now. Let's not get into this. That's a memory now. What you just said then? I'll, I, will, I will leave this studio... You leaving the studio is will, not a memory. Because will it be a memory happened. as soon as you've done it. I wish I had buttons on this side as well. Where are my goals, Joe? Dried up. You've dried them up. I don't like it, you've Clubhouse creatures. We need a yellow card. You ruined my weekend. You've ruined everybody's. We need day. a yellow card. We need goals for me. We need a little bit more. Any card, by the way. Need a bit more excitement. No, we, so you said yellow. We stay with you. What you what you said. I would like to go back in time and change it to any card. Because that was a memory when you said it, wasn't it? We buy any card. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. We count any card. We count any card dot com. We count any card dot com. Any, 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 any. You realise that's probably a very English advert. And everybody watching this doesn't live in England. Well, do your research. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, don't. <laughs> don't waste your time. It's not worth it. The The final results of your research will not be worth having. Um, shot from West Ham. Goes behind for a corner, I think. So West Ham finishing, uh, trying to push for that goal to get back on level terms. So land Slissy's bet before half-time. Was it 4.2 Slissy had? Oh, it's deflected right across, isn't it? 4.2 Slissy had for the uh, tie at half-time. Running out of time, Sliss, but they have got a corner for you. And uh, Crystal Palace still holding on to that one goal lead. Liverpool, are they bottling it? Are they turning into Leeds United? <sighs> Don't remind me. Are they turning into Leeds United? West right? Ham corner, bit of pinball in the box. It is it. cleared. That's good Put stuff. Back into the box. Chance, chance for West Ham. Cross header. In. Oh, should have done better. Should bad. have done better. So uh, West Ham. Yeah, they've missed a few chances this first half. They'll be regretting those when they go to... Do you remember that time when there. Danny Ings grew his hair and he looked like Lord Farquhar? No. Are you pointless doing that because I can't see your screen? No, but I might, yeah. I might show you somehow. But, uh, Ward Prowse has been a good signing for West Ham, hasn't he? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's a good player. He's a good player. So uh, we are into the uh, dying embers of this first half, everybody. Stay tuned. Loads more to come. On Clubhouse Liverpool. TV, including some spot bettage. Oh. Some spot... We call, we'll call it... Spot we'll, bettage. We'll call it spot bettage from now on. I remember when I was about 12, everyone used to add idge onto the end of mm. words. Looks like we've gone full circle. And it's happening again. Spot. Just like the mullet. Chance if for by, Fulham. Oh, he should have scored. If, by the way, you have a mullet. Oh. A Wobie has. 
then you need to look at your life choices. Yeah, Woby's got a mullet, look. It's kind of mullet short on top and long at the back. No, no that's, that's, that's just long hair. No, it's not. You look at his top of his head, it's shaved. It, oh, no, actually, you're right. Yeah. yeah. It's swept back, isn't it? Yeah. But, yeah, you should not have a mullet in 2024. Has anybody got a mullet? Yeah, it's come back. No secret Sunday for today, says Ente. No, we need a yellow card, Ente. Spot betting. Are we not, we, what I'll are we doing in the latter match? I'll tell you what we'll do, Ente. Do you want a secret Sunday do today? Do it in the latter match. Should we, do, should we keep the final match a secret? Aston Villa are taking on Arsenal. Can you do Vaux in here? Yeah. Not you can't, either. though. I don't think I don't think we've given you that... Uh, that... that um, Responsibility, yeah. Put it down as a vault. Put it down as a vault. We are... What's the word? It's not dictatorship. It feels like a dictatorship. Democracy is the word. That's the word. Yeah. God. We are a democracy in here. Shall the latter match be a secret Sunday? James is finally doing some work and putting a vault into the chat as we speak. All you can hear is tippy-tappy. Shall you type we... slowly, don't you? No, I'm, I'm trying to work out what I'm saying. Shall we do the Arsenal This is Aston Villa as a secret Sunday free bet thing? Um, Instead yes. of spot bet? No. <gasps> wide. Give it wide. Palace. Why would you start shouting? Because action is happening. But the difference between your sp whisper and your shout oh, is... Do we have so, to have this every... So wide. Breaking news. Man is louder when he shouts more as we get it. Shout again. No. I will, I will shout when there's action. You can't just turn me on. I'm not like a tap. <laughs> I'm not just a, I'm not a puppet. <laughs> I'm not a puppet. I am not a puppet. <laughs> um, I'm not a tap either. Oh, oh, a chance for Crystal Palace. Chance for Palace not going in. He's asking like, for a pen. He said he's pushed. West Ham trying to get this goal for your slice. They're trying to get it out on the, to the left-hand side. Ball played in. Chance for West Ham. They've missed another. Oh! West Ham must have missed four or five really good opportunities in this first half. What's this, Joe? Header from Ward Prowse, I think it is in the end. Ward Prowse starts the move as well. He has loads of time there. Yeah, he's got. You got to hit the target at the minimum. He just basically it ends up going wherever his head's pointed there, and his head's not pointed at goal. Um, yes, sixty-seven percent say yes. So far, so he's still hundred percent on mine. So far, so far. So get your far. votes in. Get your vote. If you're desperate for it not to be a secret Sunday, postal votes. This is your chance. Postal votes are also accepted. When are we going to do this? The next Sunday. Get them. Yeah, send them express delivery. Get them here this week, and then next Sunday. Exactly. We'll. Oh, my, my bet's lost. You, ru you ruined it. I've, I've ruined the first half, haven't I? Yep. Absolutely ruined the first half by wasting my own money. Gamble responsibly. Don't be like your uncle James. And uh, clubhouse creatures around the world. Half time between West Ham and Fulham. West Ham, West Ham should be at least level. Yeah, they have they have spurned a load of chances in that first half. And at the moment, West Ham are priced at six point two, three point six five. The tie one point six three. That's six point two. Why is it going up? That's six point two on West Ham. Oh, sorry. I is um, that's is that tempting? We've seen enough of West Ham to. They've created I think if they get one early, they get a second. So They've created a load of chances in that first half. They haven't put any away, but if they create the same amount second half and start to put some away, they can win this match still. Yeah, easily. Liverpool, Liverpool, Liverpool. Are you yeah. whispering now? Liverpool with a chance, and it's in. And it's a goal. It's not a goal, by the way. Two minutes of added time. We've had one of them. So we are nearly at half time. At half time, we'll uh, hear from Carnu, shall we? Um, to yes. celebrate the fact that Arsenal are playing later, we'll hear from the lovely Carney. I like his smiley face and his laugh. He's just a happy little fella. Um, so we'll hear from Carney at half time. And then we'll be back for the second half. Um, how are you betting, everybody? What are you up to today? Tell us what you're up to and tell us uh, how you are going. Um, gamble responsibly. Clubhouse TV with sportsbet.io. And we've just had one goal in each game in the first half. I think there's still plenty more to go. If you go over two and a half, by the way, as an acker, as a double, over two and a half goals um, in the game, in the uh, in the Liverpool game, it's 1.35. It's short, that, isn't it? Probably lands. <laughs> Just a bit. Um, West Ham, over 2.5 goals in that match, is 1.83. So you double those two together, you get 2.47. I mean, that, that market, the Liverpool market, is geared for Liverpool to score at least twice to win the match, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah. It's half time there as well. So Jurgen, he runs, he trots off. He's got some words to say to his Liverpool team. Eberechi, Easy's goal currently separates the two sides. At Anfield, Liverpool nil. Crystal Palace one. West Ham nil. Fulham one. We'll be back for the second half very soon indeed. You can go make a cup of tea, do whatever you like. Um, have, I might do just that. Have fun, um, but make sure you're back in around uh, sort of 12, 13, 14 minutes because we've got a second half to enjoy together. So it is a very special behind the bets with sportsbet.io uh, from the home of Arsenal Football Club, Emirates Stadium. Uh, my name's Gavin from Clubhouse TV and this is Carnu. And uh, we've got to behind the cause. This is where we're going to give a 500 euro donation uh, to uh, the charity of your choice, which of course is the Carnu Heart Foundation. Uh, which helps children in Nigeria with cardiac diseases uh, and obtain they can obtain and receive life-saving surgery within and outside Nigeria. Launched in 2000, uh, and the foundation has helped over 500 children, spending over a reported $4 million. So these children can receive open-heart surgery in hospitals around the world. Of all your achievements on the pitch, this they are pale into insignificance really with what you've done off the pitch with this tell me about that because this is just terrific yeah i always say to people that um, yeah, winning trophies of course you worked hard for that and you win trophies to show what you have done what you have worked hard for um, but all the same this is to do with life and um, it's uh, for me the most important uh, if a kid um, let's say seven years even two years or eight years or five years four years uh, having a heart problem. Um, I went through it. I know how difficult it is and how painful it is. Uh, but if you have those kids um, of such age um, going to go for an open heart operation, which means you have to open the heart to do the operation, def- definitely it's going to be difficult for them. Uh, but um, we pray for them. We wish uh, they're g- going to make it. Some of them, they don't make it, but... Most of the ones that we have done, yeah, were successful. Uh, not only that, um, it's also difficult um, even to get the funds uh, for checkups. And that is where I, uh, the foundation comes in because we all took care of them from the medical side, uh, for the, from the checkups um, to where they are traveling to and the operation and uh, bring them, bringing them back as well. Um, it's, it's very expensive. Uh, we started in uh, Great Ormond Hospital in uh, London. Uh, was in pants. Was very high. We did first three operations when we started. Uh, we have to move to Israel. Um, that was in dollars, and um, um, somebody have to tip us and uh, told us India was much uh, much better, and much cheaper, and they are good as well. So we went to India and we started in India, and uh, t- up to today we are still doing our operations in uh, India. But the most uh, important thing here is that um, when you do have that uh, problem with the heart, um, the kid is not going to be the same anymore. You look at the eyes; uh, so most of them are red. Um, uh, Sometimes they don't smile at all. It's not that they don't want to smile, but they have issues with the heart. They don't smile. Uh, they don't play with other kids. They don't play along. They keep on crying. Um, I remember the first three that we operated here. When I went to them and I saw them, two of them came, for the t- came to the foundation for help. One uh, came to me uh, when we were playing the African Nations Cup in 2000 with the mom. And uh, the mom came, they were on the lift. I was on the lift with them. They said, oh, they're looking for me. I said, oh, that's good. Why? They said, we know that you are starting the foundation. I want my daughter to be the first that you're going to help. I said, ah. So what's wrong? He says, the heart. And immediately he says, the heart, they get fainted. We have to rush to get to the hospital. Thank God I uh, didn't die. And I promised the mom that she's going to be one of the first kids you're going to help. And uh, we took her to London. Uh, after the operation of the tray, and I went to visit them, 
you can see the whole hospital knew they were there. They were running around, they were happy, the eyeballs changed back to blue. They were you can't control them, they are eating, they were okay again. So I was very, very happy. And I think only that can tell you uh, the kind of um, relief and happiness that we follow when you see somebody who are about to die and then you saved him. You literally uh, see them coming back. Yeah, to life. To again. life. And foundation have done, uh, from 2000 till now, we have done um, 680 wow. uh, open heart operations. So uh, we are still going because we have a lot on the waiting list. We have almost like 100 on the waiting list. Uh, because everyone now knew about, knew about the foundation. And if you have any little problem with the heart, the phone calls are keep, keep yeah. ringing. Everybody wants you to help. And uh, um, Nigeria is a very big country. You can help everyone. Absolute respect for you. Thank Honestly, you. It's, it's just an, an amazing achievement. So what we're going to do, I'm going to ask you, it's a little bit of fun. I know it's a serious subject, but we're going to have a little bit of fun as well. Um, because I'm going to ask you 10 questions. It's a bit of a car new quiz. <laughs> and for every question you get right, right, we're going to add 50 euros to the 500 that's already going. That's already sorted, uh, sorted, okay? So there's a chance to double your money, okay? <laughs> Some of these questions will just be about football. A lot of these questions are literally just about you. Are you ready to play? Okay. You ready? <laughs> yep. You ready? Yep. So you're looking, aren't you? <laughs> no, I'm not looking. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, <laughs> right, you ready? Uh, question number one: What was your shirt number at Arsenal? My shirt number at Arsenal, yeah, twenty-five. It's the right answer. That's that's an extra fifty euros. Okay. Uh, question number two: Who did you score your first Arsenal goal against? <laughs> I can give you some clues if you want. Uh, Got, no, I can't get Do you want that. some clues? Okay. Begins with the letter D, and it was in the FA Cup. Starts with D, and ends in Arby County. Just, just say Derby County. I know the club, but yeah, you mean the goalkeeper? That no, they're just a team. Oh, is Derby County? Yeah, no, you get what I'm No, no, no. But if I thought it's the goalkeeper, because but if we have to replay the game, yeah, well, we'll allow that one anyway. Well, now that is a 50. Just say Derby County for official records. Derby County. There's the right answer. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, question number three. Spell Carnu backwards. Spell your name backwards, Carnu. U-N-A-K. That's uh, 150 euros now. That's three questions correct. Some of them are tougher than that, by the way. Uh, okay, mm. this one might be a tough one. Who <laughs> was, question number four, who was the first ever Nigerian footballer to play in the Premier League? John Fashion. wasn't. It was a guy called Effen Ikoko. Oh! <laughs> For John, yeah, no, John Fashioner was uh, English. No, he's Nigerian. He's English, isn't he, John Fashioner? Oh, we he's, need an he's official li adjudicator. He's, he's, living, we need an he's, official adjudicator. he's living in Nigeria now. Yeah, but I believe John Fashioner played for him, represented England. So the answer was F and a Coco. Uh, yeah. In the so that's question number four. This is question number five. So at the moment mm. you've got 150 euros mm -hmm. on top of the 500. Okay, so in the season you joined Arsenal. Who was sent off the most in that season in the Premier League? Emmanuel Petit or Martin Keown? Emmanuel Petit. You sure? <laughs> <laughs> Martin Ma Keown. No! It is, don't change your answer. Okay, Emmanuel Petit. It's the right answer. <laughs> 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 he was Manu Petit. Petit. You guys don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he keep kicking people. Okay. Uh, right, here we go. Another question about Arsenal. So you're up to 200 euros now. So it's 700 euros that, that was... So this is question number six, okay? Uh, who was Arsenal's top goal scorer in the season you joined Arsenal Football Club? Who was the leading top scorer? Aneka. 
is the right answer with 19 goals in 45 appearances. So I make that as up your 250 at the moment. Okay. So you're doing very well. Uh, this is question number seven. You made your debut for Nigeria against which country? Sweden. Okay. Uh, no hesitation whatsoever. You're up to 300 euros. I think you've got every single one right, apart from <laughs> Efenikoku. <laughs> uh, okay. You played for West Bromwich Albion in the Premier League. Five other football teams, starting with the letter W, have played in the Premier League. Can you name four of them? Wolves. Is one. There's another one in the Premier League right now that starts with W. Where's the... In West Ham, yep. Two more. In fact, you scored against one of these. They kind of don't exist anymore. But you <laughs> did score against these in the Premier League. I think you scored at home at Highbury against them. Oh, no, uh, you did score at Watford. Yeah. But this team doesn't really exist anymore. Not in this current, the, in the guys that they were. You mm -hmm. scored against them at Highbury and you scored against them at their place as well. Do you want a clue? Starts with W. <laughs> Wembledon. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yes, Wimbledon is the right answer. The other one for the, re uh, for the record was Wigan Athletic. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so what was that? Question eight up to 350 euros. Uh, right, question number nine. Uh, name two Nigerian players in the Premier League right now. Iwobi. Yep. Alex Iwobi plays for Everton. And another one. Kalechi Hanacho. Uh, is the right answer for Leicester. It could have had Tayu Awaniwi, who plays for Forest. Forest Emmanuel yeah. Dennis, who also plays for Forest. Frank Onyeka for Brentford. And Didi. Joe Aribo for Southampton. And Didi. And in Wilford and Didi. Uh, but you've got nine uh, questions so far. Eight right, 450 okay. uh, euros. Uh, so it's 400 euros, sorry. Uh, question number 10. Who did you score your last goal uh, against for Arsenal? They're still in the Premier League. <laughs> last goal, last goal for Arsenal. Starts with E. Everton. Yeah, there isn't many more, is there? Uh, well done. You got nine out of ten right. You got okay. into the next 100 and 450 euros. That's 950 euros uh, that's going a, to the Car New Heart Foundation. So well done. That's that's a pass. Pass. Hey. That's that's a pass mark. Hey? Nine out of ten. Well done. <laughs> Nine out of ten. That's a pass mark. <laughs>
Mm. But Mate, then you'd be relying on, on teams. It to, makes to, it very hard for them, it doesn't does. it? It does. They need to turn this round. And yeah. I think they will. And I think they'll get a helping hand. And I think they'll, they'll score a penalty. I think the over two and a half, which is what we talked about at the start, is still very much in the equation. Um, Liverpool at 1.86, 3.7 the tie, 4.1 for Palace. West Ham against Fulham. I still fancy West Ham, you know, to get something from this. They're 6.2 to win this match. Double chance West Ham or the draw is uh, currently 2.2. They had enough chances in that first half to regret not taking them. Um, but they, if they play the same way, but actually start putting the ball in the back of the net in the second half, they could have a say. So Fulham are going to have to be on their game, aren't they, to keep, uh, you know, we could, I mean, if you played the double, just let me get rid of what's in the, um, in the, in our betting slip already. But if you play the double of uh, Liverpool to win and West Ham to win, um, it is, uh, bah, get rid of that and get rid of that. And get rid of... Oh, they, they keep coming back. Can't do it. But there is a double available. 1.86 on Liverpool. West Ham, 6.2. That'd be quite a nice, tasty double. The home sides to bounce back and still win. Yeah, you're right. Just quickly try to do it for you then for some reason. It is being hard work. But, um, yeah, it'd be a decent double. We'd have to see some goals. Obviously, we'd have to see plenty of action. Um, but both teams capable. Both teams got the players. West Ham have shown already in this game that they're capable of... Breaking Fulham down tactically, just not putting the ball in the back of the net. They just need to find the shooting boots. Yeah, Fulham come close though. They uh, just uh, have a uh, first shot of the second half that, and Fulham to carry on and win from here is one point six three. It's uh, man down for Liverpool as things done. That's uh, the young lad, isn't it, Bradley, uh, yeah. the right back, who's uh, just getting some treatment on his left knee or right knee, I think, at the moment. Um, he's been um, excellent since he's, since he's come in, but. Uh, Liverpool with a bit to do this afternoon. Dave Tyndall, I, I, it's funny. About a week ago, me and Dave Tyndall were on this uh, this uh, broadcast, and we were saying, uh, um, or I was taking the Mickey out of him, saying, "Oh, it must be really it's not like you. Must be really boring being a Liverpool fan. You just rock up at Anfield and you just see your team win week. I mean, where's the where's the fun in that? Where's the bad? You know, you need to have the bad to enjoy the good." Ever since I've said that, they've lost <laughs> lost against Atalanta in the week, and then they're losing now. Yeah, this probably should still turn it around, but that Atalanta defeat was pretty poor. Um, Trent's looking like he's coming on, though, obviously with the injury to Bradley that you've already mentioned. Yeah, he's just whipped his shirt off and uh, looks like Bradley's struggling there, doesn't it? He's um, he's down and they're looking, two physios working on him and everybody looking a little bit concerned. He's he's up and his eyes are wide and everything like that, but he just looks in a little bit of pain. So kind of Bradley is going to look as if he's going to be replaced by Trent Alexander-Arnold for the remainder of the second half. Um, so uh, plenty of other matches around the world as well. be lovely to hear from you this afternoon. Get in touch with us on the uh, Telegram chat. Tell us what you're doing. Tell us what you're betting on. Just have a conversation. We'll pick out a clubhouse Let's creature of the chat. day. Let's, Shall we? Uh, should we pick out a clubhouse creature of the day? Shall we pick out one each? Um, no, because we can only have one creature of the day. Otherwise, it'd be creatures of the day, wouldn't it? Creatures of the day it is. Um, I'm going to pick... Um, I'm going to pick Dark Devil... He's my. You could only bother looking up. He's my clubhouse creature of the day. And I'm going to go for mine with Vivek Dwana. So you ask him questions about his life and stuff. No, I'm not going that far. No, that's what they. That's what we do with the clubhouse creature of the day. What are you doing today, Viv? Let me know. We find out a bit more about them. I know everything about him already. No, you don't. I do. Where does he live? India. Whereabouts in India? I can't remember. <laughs> Ente says, do you think it will be easy for Arsenal this is Aston Villa or for both teams to score? I think both teams to score is a play in all of these games today. Um, I mean, obviously it might not happen in all of these games today, but I think uh, on the face of it, Aston Villa have got a goal in them. Um, Ollie Watkins, uh, missing Douglas Louise though today, aren't they? We, who is a, a central part of their midfield. Man down for West Ham now. We're getting a, little, a couple of injuries at the start of this uh, This, So I think Conor Bradley's been swept away and uh, Trent is now on for Liverpool, but... Uh, uh, those stripy socks of West Ham's are great, aren't they? Yeah, I do like a stripy sock. Yeah. Burnley had them in 2009-10 and they were the best socks we've ever had. I've got stripy socks on now. Have you actually? Yeah. Can you show the world? Um, no. Show me? No. Because you're lying. I don't show my underwear to anybody. A socks classed as underwear, I suppose. I suppose oh, yeah. by definition. Yeah. I, don't show, I don't show my lingerie to everybody. Maybe after a few glasses of red. Yeah, I've been any, I'm anybody's then. Yeah. yeah. Uh, West Ham nil, Fulham one. And can Liverpool, can Liverpool, can Liverpool, what do you reckon? Can Liverpool? Can we'll Liverpool do what? What's the question? Shall we do a poll? Should we do oh, another? Let's do you. A, you like a poll now. Can Liverpool you? win from here? 
Or what no, will Liverpool win from here? That's that is a better worded question, yes. Well done. Well done, Mr. Bootler. Yes or no? Or draw? Yes. Well, no, because if you put no. can Liverpool win from here, you won't put yes, no, or draw, would you? Well, no, I'll put a draw in as well, because that, that would mean that they nearly win. But then you should probably ask, what the, what will the result be from here, then? Well, it's obvious from the question, isn't it? There it is, the poll's there. Get voting. I'm going to vote. But no and draw is still is still the same answer from the for the question. Will Liverpool win from here? If you think it's going to be a draw, just put no. I mean, you're technically right. There's no technicality about yeah. it. You've just worded it horrendously. I mean, you, you, yeah, it's you're a te- good job you're a, a broadcaster. I used to be a researcher. <laughs> I, used, I used to be the principal um, housing strategy and research uh, um, manager at uh, Chesterfield Borough Council and various other local authorities. Did they go defunct? In a previous life. Did they go defunct just before no. you left? No, no, I did research projects and stuff. They go, They went defunct due to bad research. Uh, well, I, I got sacked because I put a thing about... Will Chesterfield win from here? Yeah. Yes, no other draw. I can understand yeah. that, yeah. And West Ham coming forward down the uh, left-hand side. Antonio coming out wide. Oh, that's a nice little turn with his stripy socks on. Stripy socks don't match his yellow boots, mind. Yeah, that's the problem. Bit coordination. Bit yeah. Co- yeah, where's the coordination? When people have normal black boots, you know, like in back in the day, everybody had just black, black boots. Corpers. They look weird now, don't they? Yeah. It looks like somebody's just forgotten to take the shoes off. Fulham coming forward. You were a bird? I can, yeah. There's a bird outside our window. It's, it's outside. Yeah, I've That's left... what stopped me in my tracks. Yeah, I've left the window open because it's quite hot today. But I'm, sometimes you can't, even though we can hear it in our headphones, it's not picked up on the can, actual can you hear a, Can you hear a bird on our on our stream? Let me know if you can hear a, a bird chirping. The beautiful countryside of England. Can we still hear it? I can hear, I can hear a baby crying somewhere. I can hear, I can hear a duck. <laughs> A talking duck, is it by any chance? Um, yes, says uh, yes. All the draw has been. Nobody says no. You see, that's what happens. You, you basically can group no and draw together, can't you? With negative answers. You've ruined the question. You've ruined my weekend. You've ruined my day. Mm. And then you ruin the question. Here come Crystal Palace. Second for Palace makes it very interesting. As uh, they come across, good ball oh. in. Nobody's on the back post though to turn that in, but they look. Now pick it up on the right-hand side. Oh, that's nice play by Palace into the penalty area again. Chance for Palace. Side-footed shot. Actually hits his own player, I think. And uh, in the end, there's a coming together and the referee blows his whistle. But uh, Crystal Palace looking the most likely at the start of this second half. Well, they are pushing, but as we said earlier, that leaves gaps at the back. So if Palace are going to continue to come forward, Liverpool might be able to exploit the gaps at the back. But it will be a bit of a shock, this, obviously. If Palace go on to win, they've won one game in their last eight. Liverpool don't make the most of their next attack. So at the moment, Liverpool chasing the game in this uh, Premier League encounter. The title race is uh, well only one point separating the top uh, three teams ahead of this round of fixtures. Man City have already done their bit. They've won. At the moment, Liverpool... Um, are losing at home. They never lose at home unless Leeds are playing. 71 points they would remain on. They'd be two behind Manchester City. And if Arsenal win later, they would be three points behind them. So uh, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but it would not be be Liverpool's plan A. No, I think if if they lose this, I'll be very, very, very surprised um, if they come back into it. Um, Yeah. Obviously, they'd need results from elsewhere to go their way. And due to Arsenal's vastly superior goal difference, they'd need Arsenal to drop points in two games at the minimum. That's if Liverpool win every game between now and the end of the season. Mm. Yeah, they'd, yeah, they'd need a, a defeat for Man City and Arsenal probably to follow yeah. at some stage. But the they, run, and then they, for them to carry on winning. They'd need an Arsenal defeat and an Arsenal draw and a City defeat. Liverpool are doing a Leeds, basically. They're finding their worst form just when they need to find the best form. So, uh, a ball in from uh, Soufal oh. and uh, West Ham try and get oh. on the end of that. Oh. And Nearly did a Mjoric. Nobody's that bad, are they? Trafford is. You're not blessed, are you, with keepers? Nope. And to say we've gone from having... At one point, we had Tom Heaton, Nick Pope and Joe Hart all on the books at the same time. Hmm. Now we've got three keepers who couldn't catch a cold. Well, didn't you have Nick Pope as well? I just said that. Who was Tommy, Tommy and Nick Pope and okay. Joe Hart? Nick, I really like Nick Pope. Yeah. I, I rate him. Pope, I think he's the best of the three. Yeah, I'd agree with that. The problem with Nick Pope is he's very. Oh! 
He's just very bad with his, the ball at his feet. The problem, the, <laughs> the problem with Nick Pope is that he's whoop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how I describe him as well. Yeah. Um, he's very oh yeah. Let me hear you say oh whoa boom boom boom. Let me hear you say way oh Nick Pope. I, I, I can't work under these circumstances. If you're watching Nick Pope, very nice to have you with us this Sunday afternoon. I like Nick. He is a good a good chap. Have you Liverpool 1-1. One, one. No, it's not. It's saved. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> I just had it ready. I had the commentary ready in my head and I thought, can you, can this is my moment to shine. Yeah, and you blew it, didn't you? That's that's what separates me between people who can actually commentate. They, yeah. they say the right things. Yeah, because they don't have it in their head already. Yeah. yeah. They react to what they, they see do. They do. rather than predict what they're going to have to do so this is why yeah. this, is, this is why Clive Tilsley and the rest of them are better than me there are others there are others it's the only yeah. one I remember off the top of my head Sam Matterface West Ham down the right hand side can they can they can they ball in going to be a corner on the far side for the Hammers so the Hammers starting to uh, crank up the pressure just a little bit on the full and back line West Ham now 7.2 to win this afternoon um, Liverpool now more than W money 2.06 um, Interesting. If you fancy Liverpool, that's they've what gone a lot a, of people wait for. They've gone across the seesaw, and the seesaw's gone down the other side. So the uh, price on Liverpool getting bigger all the time. They, I mean, Liverpool, they can go bang bang. They can. Hundred percent. If they go bang, they go in bang bang. And Estimate. then I think they might even go bang bang bang. And then if they go bang bang bang, there's a good chance to go bang 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 bang. You done? <laughs> yeah. That'd be four one. So Joe's predicting four one. No, I just said that if they go bang, they can go bang bang. But I know we heard, we heard, we heard, <laughs> we, we heard. Thank you. Um, you can't now speak. Um, Help me, please. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, Estelida, Estelida. Does that mean come on, come on? No, Estelida is bang in Spanish. Ah, is it? So when you're in that Irish bar, shout Estelida, and you want to say bang for some reason, you can say Estelida. I'll probably say bang. It's the leader, it's the leader. That's banging Irish. In German, it's null null. In in French, it's pam pam. Oh, that sound that does sound very French. Yeah. If you just said what what word do you think is bang in French, I'd have probably said that word. Um, so in French, if you want to say I would like a bang bang, you have to say je voudrais un bang un pam pam. But if you want to say my name is Joe and I would like a bang bang, you say je m'appelle Jean and then whatever you just said. Yeah, je voudrais. And if you ever want to say pam pam. What was it in German again? Um, null, null. So if you ever say, ever want to say, I have one brother and bang, bang in German, it's Ich habe einen Bruder, null, null. Is that the only thing you know <laughs> in German? <laughs> and Entschuldigung. But I can't even remember what it means. I think it means help or emergency. What's, what's, um, why did you need to say I've got one brother? It was just in a German test, so I remembered it, even though yeah. I said I don't have a brother. My, um, my friend is um, of Indian heritage. Um, best We're talking friend, about Viv. One of my best friends at school. And uh, he basically said, oh, well, I'll teach you some... I can't, I can't remember what... There's quite a few languages in India. I can't remember which one it is. And he basically told me... I, mean, I, I don't say it on the um, airways. It might be something horrendous. Well, it's only Viv will be offended. Yeah, but the... Um, I uh, He told me it meant apples grow on trees. <laughs> I doubt he's going to teach you that sentence. But, it, yeah, but I, I kind of... I, I, I wouldn't say it publicly because it might actually mean something else. Entirely. Entirely. As uh, Liverpool get the ball. Now, can, Liverpool, that, there will be a lot of people around the world watching this match with interest. With just over half an hour to go, Liverpool at the moment, they're not kind of waving the white flag in terms of the title race, but they are certainly not um, stamping their authority on it either. Currently a goal down at home to Crystal Palace. 2.12 they are to win it. Grade out between West Ham and Fulham. What is happening Ooh, at West Ham and Fulham? Card, Big challenge. I think. Big challenge. We is need, it a red? Need a yellow card for the spot bet. We need it's a, ye a yellow. A yellow card lands the spot bet. Everybody, get thinking about what we're going to do next. I, I can't do all three. Is it time for you to do some work? You think? I don't come here to work. What are, you, what are you talking There's about? A shock. I've never seen you lift a finger in your life. <laughs> what are you talking? I don't come here to work. I'm here to watch football and talk to the creatures. That's my job. Um, anyway, um, we have got um, a, a go 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 situation. So we will put go 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 into the chat. When you see go 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 in the chat, it might come in a form of a gift this time. Oh. Um, then um, you will have to put your sportsbet.io username into the chat, and two of you will win ten USDT. So the go, go, go is in there. I, I have gone, gone, gone. Liverpool. 
is that your commentary is quite one-dimensional, isn't it? Is it? You just basically shout Liverpool. Well, I shouted with a bit more emotion than that. Liverpool. I went. I went full scouser this time. Liverpool. You know, I actually have once commentated on a game, and I actually did very well. But I never yeah. went any further with it. Were you not commentating on Liverpool there? I wasn't. I was That's commentating right. on Harrogate Town versus Leeds United. Did you go Harrogate? Harrogate Town versus Leeds United under 23s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually nearly didn't do it because there's like a ladder behind the stand to get to the top Ooh. of it. And I didn't, I didn't want to climb that. I got halfway and bottled it and said, I'm not doing it. And the guy was like, you have to climb up there's here. A, there's, um, I think Somerset's changed now, but when you used to go into the um, the radio box at Somerset, you had to basically climb up through this little hole. Yeah, not for me. It was, there was kind of, you know, like you go into the roof space of a house. Mm. There was like a ladder into this roof space. Otherwise and, known as an attic. And then you had to shunt across and then you had to go up another ladder onto the roof, basically, of the place. And then there was a little shed on the roof, which was the radio box. It's essentially box. the same sort of thing, and, yeah. Um, I, oh. Once I was in the box, I was fine. It was just getting up to that ladder. I was like, can I not just do it down here? It's like, we've set everything up up here now. Like, why didn't you wait for me? I'm the talent. In the end, I went up and... Uh, oh, that was the mistake you made. What, saying I'm the talent? Yeah. 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 Have we got any answers, uh, any um, entries coming in? Because at the moment, my um, Telegram chat isn't refreshing. Mine isn't either. I think the problem with this is we're both on it. I don't know. I don't think it is. I think it's just um, playing hard to get, isn't it? Why Telegram? Is, yeah, it, is, it, is it better? There we go. So you, moved, you moved from something else, didn't you? Yeah, tell, it is better. Because I'm thinking of doing one for my own pod. I don't know whether to do it's a bit more in, services. It's a bit more interactive. There's the GIFs and everything. It's a bit more immediate. Well, well, is it, is it immediate if, it, it's immediate if they actually appear on your screen. All right, I'm going to put stop, stop, stop in, in 20 seconds time. So if you haven't got your sportsbet.io username in yet, three, get it four, in right now. You've got about six, seven, 13 eight, seconds. 18, 19, 20, 22, 19, 12, 73, 13, 86. 14, stop, 15, stop, stop, goes in the chat. 16, so uh, we have got 18, now, I'm going to count up 19, the entries. Stop 20. counting, you're putting me off. You shouldn't have done it so <laughs> early. You went in well, early. Uh, 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 Liverpool hit it over the bar. Oh, lots of entries oh, in this one. More people are watching now. Yeah, because you're on. That's why. The talent is here, basically. <laughs> uh, right, the first winner this afternoon. No, no, the third winner this afternoon is um, two, four, six. It's uh, Mison. Rubet is your username, Mison. And you go onto the uh, the good boys list. You are a winner with uh, Clubhouse TV and Sportsbet.io this afternoon. You'll have 10 USDT in your account at some stage today. The second winner today is... Osman. Osman, you're a winner with Clubhouse TV. So, uh, Osman, you can have 10 USDT in your account as well. Um, do you want me to choose next, then? Yes. Have I, I think you should do, do some work. Oh, I don't like that idea. The idea of me working is very alien to me. Yeah, I didn't get I into imagine. sports broadcasting to, to, to make it feel like I was working. When did you get into it then, when you are in your 50s? Because you've been doing it a while now. Um, right, the next thing we need <laughs> is... What on earth is that noise? There he is, look at him. My thinking noise. He's fuming. I think I was about to say Jurgen Klopp to make a substitute. But he's about to make one, so that'll be cheating. Um, I I'm gonna say somebody to head the ball towards goal, a headed chance, a headed chance in either of the two matches. Got to be headed towards goal though. What if they go to head it and it hits the back of the head and goes behind them? That's not towards goal. I know, but they've attempted. Nah, to it doesn't count. It's got to be a proper header towards goal. So essentially, you're waiting for a corner, a shot on goal. No, because the corner might be cleared. There's a clearance. You see, there's a header. It's cleared. So a header. Well, what if he'd headed it towards his goalkeeper? That as would... a ba- as, as I think, a I think you're overthinking this. I just think it's the most ridiculous one I've ever heard. I think you're overthinking it's it. It's ridiculous. I think you're overthinking it. Headed chance. A headed chance, basically. The, can I'm, you hear the I'm police? Not a fan. I'll choose the next the one. The police coming to get you. And they're coming yeah. to get you for your terrible choice. We might have to shut the window if the police come any closer. I'm not getting up. <laughs> I've got look at all the stuff I have to move as well. No, you don't. I I open the window without moving that. I don't know how you manage that. I just stretch my arm through the gap. It's quite it's quite stretch easy. Stretch my arm through the gap. 
Um, where do we get the next goal? We get it from West Ham United. That's full of compiling forward. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I realise that. Down to the right-hand side. Ball comes in. Now, is this going to be a heady chance? No, he can't get his head to it. Oh, oh. Fulham still, though. Willian on the left-hand side to Pereira. Ball into the box. Fabianski saves. Yes. How do you like them apples? They're beautiful. Um, Sheriff Shigami says, lucky me. You didn't got win. just in time. You, no, didn't, it, I think, you didn't win there, Shadow. Oh, he's got a nice little emote next to his name. I like it. What is that? I don't know. Is that a little face? I, I think it's that a cold person. I wasn't sure if it was a car. It's not a car. It's a West Ham. Oh, ball goes. What beyond. do I right. win if West Co- Ham score? I think this is a corner for West Ham, so this might be a headed opportunity. Joe, monitor that. Let's see if there's a header towards goal from this corner. <laughs> and to Liverpool still trail by a goal to nil. 25 minutes remain. Ball Monitoring. played over the top. Headed back by Mo Salah into the penalty area for we- for Liverpool. <laughs> Can they get the ball across? No, they can't. For wet for Liverpool. Well, you're not used to coming. I'm not used to commentating on two games at the same time. West Ham. West Ham, the- Ham right, corner. is this going to be a, a headed towards goal? We need a. Oh, blimey. Yes! yes, headed down. It's head cleared off the line. That's about as pla- Ooh, that's about as on. blatant ahead as you could get. I'm so good to you, clubhouse creatures. We get another chance. Uh, well, no. Next time, just choose a player to move. Why? A player to step forward one step. Is it that obvious? Could it? it could have taken ages. No. Nah, you see. Um, all right, go, go, go. He's in the chat. It's oh, in the chat. No, hanging about, about, about. Straight in with the go, go, gone, go. Gone, gone, gone. Yeah, I'm not like Jen. I don't just kind of tease people for three she minutes. She likes to tease people. Yeah, I, I just basically go for it. I'm straight in there. What's his face for? Uh, I was going to say, what's that face for? But it's just your face, isn't it? Yeah. My face is... Yeah, that had a nice drink there, did you? I did, I, I did thank you. <laughs> it was going cold. Yeah. I don't have buttons over here, so I don't get I don't get the chance to just take myself off screen when I want a drink. There we go. Look at him. I'll film it for you, everybody. Oh, not not, not fast enough. I'm gonna get you doing it. <laughs> I'm just drinking. There you go, creatures. <laughs> that's that's what he does. <laughs> Takes himself off so he can have a drink. I don't have that privilege. <laughs> Oh, that's not... We're supposed to be a team. <laughs> you never set me off. <laughs> so... We're supposed to be a team here. Not, this is not a team. There's no I in team. Uh, but there's a me. That's what you're going to say next, aren't you? There's a... There's an me. There's a... Uh, I can't think of anything. I think there's a plane landing outside. Yeah, we need to shut that window in a, in a few minutes' time. We'll, actually, do it, we'll do it in between that, games. It's actually cooled the studio down quite nicely, though, hasn't it? It has, for now. Yeah. But, mind you, there's no one else in today. You could probably have that door open. It's not yeah. like you'll have people popping about. Oh, the acoustics be all... The walls have disappeared. It was very scientifically built. Was it? Yeah, for acoustics. Yeah. So now with the wall down, it'll just it'll be all to pot. Uh, change for Crystal Palace. It looks like... Uh, I am now starting to get worried about my ball team scoring Liverpool to coming on. Win Elise there. is off. I am not a happy chap here. Right, do we have we had any entries? I can't tell because my thing hasn't updated. Same. So we'll find out in a second. <laughs> Let's hang on to what we've got. Have we got any entries, Joe? Nothing on my screenage. Screenage. <laughs> yeah, I like. The use of each is good, isn't it? What? Need to have some screenage. Screenage. Um, some spot bettage. Spot bettage. Liverpool come oh, forward. Oh, good bit of defending. Good bit of defending it was, but no one making that gamble. No one making that run. Mm. That was the problem. They just don't have that urgency. Like nobody, they're all just stood there. Winds me up. Is it? I don't, don't be wound up. Um, Kasra Rastami. Hello to you. I, I've not spoken to you before. Hello, how are you? It's mad that you remember ja- everyone you've ever spoken to. I'm James to. East Joe, and uh, this is Clubhouse oh. TV. And um, you were a little bit late, um, Casa Rostami. Where have you been? In, get, no, in, in getting your entry in. So um, maybe... Are you got them on screen? Maybe just refresh your... Uh, 
refresh your streaming device and uh, you'll be a bit closer to uh, getting your entries in next time. Because we want to include you. We do. We? we want to include everybody. Yeah. We're an inclusive service. We are a very inclusive service. Right, I'm going to put stop, stop, stop in in around about 11 seconds. I'm not counting this down because you'll just dismiss it. Do what you want then have a go at me. 11 seconds. I still can't see any entries on it's my about own. six left now. Bad counter, though. T- Fulham! Oh, Fulham have gone 2-0. Fulham have gone 2-0. I'm going to put stop, stop, stop in, and then I'm going to press this. <laughs> Fulham are 2-0 up away at West Ham, and uh, that basically takes away any hope of a West Ham win today. I was looking at West Ham. West Ham are going to... I mean, David Moyes is sitting there. And he's thinking, we've missed about 12 really good chances today. Fulham have scored twice. And it's Andreas Pereira again uh, has scored for Fulham. So he's got a, a couple today. Awobi sets him up for that one. 72nd minute good goal. Good tackle in the middle there. That's the points to bed now, isn't it? Yeah, you'd think so. It's only like, what, 18 minutes left? Uh, but a, a good tackle in the middle that started that. Then Fulham countered. Good play. Good pass. Too easy, though. Too easy. Do you know what I forgot to do again? Wash. <laughs> you forgot to wash again. Info bar? Yeah. It's on now. It's a very bad person. If I, if you don't see the info bar, Clubhouse Creature, shout at me. Tell me I've not put the info bar on. Is this the yellow bit at the bottom? Is that what it is? What? What? Where? What? Where? What, what am I looking at? The ticker, yeah. At the bottom, the yeah. yellow bit. Yeah, um, the first winner of that round of free bettage, Tarzanua Shelby. You're a winner with Clubhouse TV and Sportsbet.io. Ten USDT will be winging its way to you at some stage today. So well played, uh, Shelby. So you go on my list of people, and uh, we will also go for another one because we have two winners each time, and the second winner will be drawn in a second when I've got that in properly. Where's that gone? There we go. Um, right, and now the... Uh, here we go. Shelby's the first one. Uh, and Hakan. Hakan, you're Yay. a winner. So Hakan... One of the OGs. You get yourself uh, 10 USDT as well. So Hakan goes onto the list, the magical list of 10 bet, um, 10 USDT free bet winners this afternoon. When you think of... Are you gonna... Oh, Liverpool! Oh, how have they missed? Should we go a goal for the yeah. next one? Okay. Because I but there's Cause you've, you're basically giving the last one away. I mean, Liverpool are, are absolutely trying their hearts out to score for you. Um, you've got uh, West Ham trying to get back into that match. There's no short of, e- of effort for goals at the moment. So if we go for a goal, that will land the next spot bet. I think that's fair enough. I completely agree. When you think of... Has to be a headed goal. Clubhouse... T- no. <laughs> when you think of Clubhouse TV OGs, yeah. who do you think of? Um, me. I mean, creature-wise. Um, I think of... Viv's got to be on there. Hakan's got to be on there. Genetics, Slissy. WG Grace. Who's that? Um, Don Bradman. Um, Roger Bannister. They ran the first four minute mile. Oh, yeah. Oh. Slissy. Yeah. Um, Ted's, but Ted's doesn't come on anymore. Ted's. I didn't. Meet Ted's, I don't think. No. Ted's, when, whenever we used to do, um, back in the day, we used to say to people, what do you reckon the correct score was going to be? And if you get, that was one way to win a free bat, it used to be, that you had to kind of predict the correct score. And those people that got it right won 10 USDT. Obviously, it's a bit harder to do that, so there's kind of maybe less winners, but you got kind of a whole range of people. Ted's always used to say nil-nil. <laughs> always said nil-nil. Ted's, if you're out there... Please come and say hello. It could have it could have been the most flamboyant of Barcelona teams playing the most flamboyant of Liverpool teams. And he would have said nil nil. Oh, it's two. Oh, it's not. What a save from Allison! <laughs> You've called another goal in that game about four times now. But to be fair, you were doing it a year like just radio wise, weren't you? Before yeah. before I got involved. Yeah. Then any of the uh, so the OGs, I guess I don't really know. My OGs are the four that I've mentioned. What it's, good to see, it's good to see one of the OGs winning. What uh, what does OG stand for? Original gangster. That's what I thought. Yeah, he says he's down with kids. He's not. I mean, the, I mean, I don't. We don't encourage gangsters on Clubhouse. But TV. we do encourage gangster rap. Do we? I do. I'm encouraging gangster rap. 
Coolio, if you're listening, keep it up. Here come Liverpool. It's a break through the middle. Chance for Liverpool. Chance for Liverpool. He's put it right. Oh, my word. How has he missed that? Oh, my word. It's, it's going to end 1-0 to Crystal Palace. Oh, Curtis Jones had lost his compass completely. He was through one-on-one with the keeper. He went to put his right foot through it and he just doesn't get it on target. How wide is it? Not that wide, to be fair, but it's wide enough to wide miss. Wide is wide. Wide enough to miss. Wow. I can't believe he's just missed that. Um, his Royal Majesty Marquis Maharaja Kaiser Caesars our Supreme Ayatollah Grand, Grand Vizier Lucky Emperor James VII Rex Wonky Toad Joe the Cotton Eyed Butcher Genetics welcome um, Navidad says Liverpool come on Fretless says Liverpool victory and Fulham draw I need for the jackpot see I, well, Liverpool victory is looking a bit dodgy Fretless at the moment especially with Curtis Jones shooting like that Shelby saying thank you it's an absolute pleasure Shelby um, 10 USDT will be yours today and Viv says Ted's um, is in Twitter only now while Viperius became a monk Viperius is another Audrey, actually, he yeah. became a monk. Did he actually, or is that just Bants? Became a monk. Did he actually, or is that just Bants? Well, I've only ever been told he's become a monk. Must be Bants. Why? People do become monks. I wish you'd become a monk. I, I might do. Could happen. Could happen this week. It could do. Yeah. There's only like a few hours left. Or well, it week. might never happen. I just say it's always an option. I think the, the latter is more likely. It's always an option, though, isn't it? Always an option. Everybody's got that option. Every, everybody's got all of the options. Yeah. All of the options, all of the time. I might become a football manager instead. You've got the option, just maybe not Premier League. Bradford City, I'll, I'll take them over. I could, t- I could turn them round. You won't want to work underneath their um, hierarchy. Oh, I'd, I'd, I'd pl- we'd play such a scintillating style of football. The ground would be full every single week. Geisley are looking for a new manager. I could, I could take them to glory. I'll take Geisley to glory. Yeah. We could oh play, my we, god we could do pre- pre-season friendlies against each other we could I think yeah. Bradford and Geisler do mm. what about Farnborough Celtic that's round here isn't it as well or is that Manny Weir I've got no idea what you're talking Farnborough about Celtic. you've suddenly gone all as if you're speaking a foreign language to me Farnborough Celtic yeah is that Manny Weir um, we have got changes um, Riedeveld Ward and Schlupp oh, are coming on for Crystal Pass that's Hampshire isn't it Farnborough well, where's Farnsborough then? Elise is already off. Eze's coming off, I think. And uh, so, and they're not exactly rushing these changes, Crystal Palace. They're quite happy with the um, scoreline as things stand. Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace one. And Liverpool running out of time if they're going to take... Well, even if they're going to take one point from this now, they're actually probably getting to the stage where they're looking for the tie rather than the, the win because uh, time is ticking by. West Ham have a free kick against Fulham. And uh, a chance to get the ball into the penalty area here from the left-hand side of their attack. And uh, many men forward here for West Ham as they try and get a goal back here. They always say 2-0 is one of the worst score lines you can have in your favour because one goal here for West Ham certainly makes Fulham go all a bit uh, squeaky bum time, isn't it? It does. It's the most dangerous score line to have is, the, is what they say because the worst score line to have would probably be about 15-0 down. Um, but yeah, obviously 2-0, it's a dangerous score line. I mean, 2 nil is better than one nil. But yeah. it, it leads you to get all cagey if a goal is scored. I think the only reason why I say that, because if, if you're winning 1 0 and you throw it away, you throw everyone's like, oh, fair enough. But if you're losing 2 0 and you throw yeah. that away, everyone's like, wow, can't believe you threw that away. Yeah, no, totally. So, uh, um, but uh, yeah, Fulham had that 2 0 lead. West Ham, a goal now, and they've got around about 15 minutes to try and get a second goal to sort it out. Um, Liverpool are running out of time. They've got 11 minutes plus stoppage time, Liverpool to try and get something out of this game against Crystal Palace. Otherwise, Liverpool will not progress in this title race and they will stay in third place. And uh, they will be uh, behind Arsenal and Manchester City. Arsenal have a game in hand. City are two points clear. So uh, it is not uh, not ideal, this, for Jurgen Klopp at all. A point would be uh, of some use. Not, it wouldn't be great, but get a point and they would at least go ahead of Arsenal. I was thinking of Farsley Celtic. Oh, I got you. Yes, which yes, is yes. in between Bradford and Leeds. Yes. Pudsy way, isn't it? Aye. Yeah. Pudsy bear. So here comes uh, here come Fulham. Fulham have played well today. They've been a lot more um, clinical when they've had chances. They've actually put them in the back of the net, whereas uh, West Yellow Ham certainly haven't. Match. We need another goal for the next spot bet to land. And when we get to the game coming up later, Arsenal against Aston Villa, which is a 4.30 kickoff, um, we will have um, a secret. So it will be a secret Sunday when it comes, because we had a I vote. I don't know it. 
We had a vote, and uh, you voted to, for it to be a secret. The majority of you did, anyway. Um, David Ray, it will be in goal for Arsenal. I'll give you the two teams, actually, because we've got those now um, available to us. Arsenal against Aston Villa coming up at 4.30. Um, David Ray are in goal. Um, Zinchenko, Gabriel, Saliba and White is the back four. Havertz, Rice and Odegaard in midfield. Trossard, Gabriel, Jesus and Saka is uh, the, le the leading the line. And for Aston Villa, Martinez in goal. Conza, Diego Carlos, Torres and Luca Dean. Uh, McGinn, Tielemans, Rogers and Zaniola in midfield. Diaby and Ollie Watkins up front. So no massive surprises there from either side, I don't think. it's. Uh, and the only thing is that they're starting with, um, on the left-hand side of their attack, Trossard and Havertz together. So Martinelli um, is on the bench. Good. Trossard's um, in my FAL team. Smith-Rowe, who played really well um, recently for Arsenal, he's on the bench as well. Vieira, Tomiyasu, etc. So uh, there are options there for uh, Arteta, as there are for Unai Emery. He's got Leon Bailey, Matty Cash, Collins, Matty Cash, Duran and uh, um, Lengley, Marino, etc. on the bench there. So that game coming up in about 50 minutes time. Myself and Joe will be with you all the way through until the uh, final whistle of that one. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to give you some free bets as we get there. Uh, but as I say, free, we secret um, Sunday when it comes to Arsenal against Aston Villa. Liverpool just had a, a small chance. Trent, Alec, well, no, it weren't a, cha a chance to attack. Trent Alexander-Arnold coming forward. He just smacks it. He tries to go for the fancy diagonal pass rather than just running with it for a bit. Completely messes it up. Jürgen's not happy, is he? He's not happy. Charles says Liverpool fans are in shock. Um, you can't miss all those chances, even if you wanted to. Elliot's coming on. I guarantee you now he will dive to get a penalty. And it will be given because the referees are incompetent. Even with VAR. They will look at it from 15 different angles and still not come to the correct decision. Because very much like James Butler, they are incompetent. Clubhouse TV with James this afternoon on uh, with you with sportspet.io. You can't get out of the studio either because you have to walk in front of the camera. Well, if I've been sacked, I'll just do it anyway. <laughs> You, you're just going to throw your, your toys out the pram. Yeah. Oh, that's a good ball in. Oh. West Ham pushing. Liverpool pushing. Everybody pushing. But nobody falling over just yet. More pushing than in a maternity ward. Good little ward. analogy, that, weren't it? More pushing than in a maternity ward. That's too far. Sobber Schleich. Too far, Tony. Too far. Who's Tony? I don't know. Um, Harvey Elliott about to come on. He comes on to replace Curtis Jones, who missed that Harvey really Diver good Elliot. chance. Um, cross, oh, that's a terrible corner. Can't beat the first man. Shouldn't be on a professional football pitch. Pot noodle head is on for Liverpool. Let's see if Soberschlein can beat the first man with this corner. Other noodles are available. Come on, Virgil. Virgil van Dijk is there. Can he get the ball onto Virgil's head? He sends it in towards the back post. Oh, Headed up. Virgil. Headed keeper's up. coming. He's not got Chance. there. Oh, Virgil has a shot. Oh, and he's given a foul. Of course he's given a foul because the keeper got crowded out. Ridiculous. That crowded house. Always take the weather with you everywhere you go. Always Virgil take loses the his weather. man pretty well. Everywhere you go. You're always In what take world the is that a foul? You. I don't, keepers are too overprotected. They are, they? unless they call James Trafford <clears throat> and then Luton practically wrestle him to the ground and it still gets given as a goal. Because Oh, big injury. In this You're not thing. bitter though, are you? I am not. Ridiculous decision. As something's happened in this Fulham game, yeah, a little, big injury. The little uh, stretcher, tractor stretcher coming, is coming on. So uh, I didn't see who got injured because I was watching the Liverpool game. I did not. I will do some uh, research, log on to the old X, see what everybody's saying. Oh, I have to actually log in, though. It's not well, I'll probably have to find it quicker than you. Well, you do it then because you'll be logged in. Uh, no, I can't actually. No, not yet updated on the comment on the text commentary on here. Um, Marco Silva talking to a couple of his players. I think he's going to make a change. Got Traore there and uh, a another about to come on. Liverpool though are into the final ten minutes. They've got uh, six and a half minutes plus stoppage time to try and get level on terms with Crystal Palace. Can they go bang bang to keep themselves in pole position in this title race, or is this going to be the first sign of uh, one of the top three? Showing some kind of frailties because at the moment you're thinking everybody's going to have to carry on. Win, 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 win. Liverpool on the verge of losing. They're going to do a lead. Alvarez and uh, Suchek having a chat. 
as they survey the scenes there. Can't, still can't see who's down. No, they're not showing it, are they? Usually when they're not showing it, it's bad. When it's uh, And the players are all kind of like crowded around watching as well, aren't they? Which would suggest there's something happening. Um, so, yeah, not good signs at the moment between West Ham and Fulham. The stretcher is there. And they've almost shot shielded him from the cameras, actually. They've got something big up to... Um, it's kind of like they don't want people to see. This looks bad. And it where does. is Salah, says Alexi. Um, good question. Good question. Was he taken off? He's, well, he's been a bit invisible in this. Are you, what, are you texting? You I'm, not, man? I'm trying to find out what's going on here. <laughs> I'm trying to find out what's going on. I'm on um, the old Twitter. Sa Salah's still on, but he's um, not exactly pr prominent in his display, is he? Um, Going to be uh, the, some changes about to be made, but I don't know who's um, down at the moment. This uh, injury looks uh, slightly troubling, to be honest, because uh, um, here we go. Um, the game is interrupted. George Earthy of West Ham suffers a horrific injury, says the um, text commentary here. And uh, yeah, I think that that is putting it mildly because judging by the body language and the amount of people that are crowded around him at the moment, this does not look good for uh, George I didn't even know he was because he come on as a substitute. He must yeah, have done. Yeah, he's, he's calling to this guy here. He's, he's he's come on for his Premier League debut. Well, that's not a very good debut, is it? No, not in terms of performance, but in terms of his luck, he's been. Um, he looks like he's suffered a pretty horrible injury there. So uh, um, there's going to be some time to be added on here because he's been down for a good four or five minutes already, hasn't he? And they're still on the pitch and still. I mean, we were uh, watching the Liverpool game at the time moving. he went down, so he could have been down for a while as Liverpool. Elliot. But yeah, it looks bad. I'm not sure. Did he go down under challenge then? I don't know. We'd, neither of us saw it because we were watching Liverpool. Uh, but David Moyes looks concerned. and Head uh, injury, apparently. So does everybody else. So he's, you can see his leg, but he's not He's not moving. So yeah, this looks looks pretty horrible, um, to be honest. So uh, hopefully he's going to be yeah. okay. Head injury. Went up for a header with Edson Alvarez. And somewhere in there, there's obviously been a clash of heads. Yeah. You can see that you can always tell, can't you? I mean, you don't even need to see the player in this in this kind of ensemble. You can just tell with the broadcast and the body language. Yeah, right, you yeah. can tell by the broadcast. You can tell by the fact they've shielded him, the fact that they've surrounded his his body on the pitch, and the fact that the players are all kind of like looking nervous and staring at it to mm. see, make sure he's okay. It's just, yeah, all the signs are that this isn't very, very good for him at all. So, um, hopefully, he uh, he recovers very quickly from that, and he's going to be fine. Um, Liverpool then, in the other match, pushing. They've got seven minutes plus stoppage time to get something from this. Can they score? Will Liverpool score, Joe? No. Do you want an, uh, more for that? Well, kind of. They've been pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing, and it's just not their day. They've missed plenty of chances. That They've got an XG of 4.9, I saw earlier. That might have gone up since then, and they've just not got the shooting boots on. They might well, get a helping XG hand. XG today is two point two seven. Well, I saw four point nine earlier. Hmm. You're on a dodgy website, you. I'm often on dodgy websites. <laughs> um, the uh, all right stretch has been lifted up and taken away, and the West Ham fans clapping. That's not going to exactly make him feel any better, is it? Because uh, he's made his debut. Bless him. He's come on. And he's uh, made you know, making his Premier League debut. Massive moment for him. And just a few moments later, he's been stretched off. For clarification, the stat is between today's match against Crystal Palace and their midweek 3-0 defeat to Atalanta in the UEFA Europa League, Liverpool have had chances worth 4.9 XG, yet haven't scored a single goal. 2.27 today. OK. We all right with that? Nope. And their XG on Thursday against Atalanta was 1.63. So, uh, yeah, not looking good for the injury in the West Ham camp. It's not looking good for Liverpool at the moment. Corner kick, though, for Liverpool. Headed away strongly by Crystal Palace. It's going to be picked up by Soberschlei. Can Liverpool? How much added time? Are we going to get kind of like Jurgen Klopp time, Fergie time at Anfield? Or is this going to be a short... I don't mean that many stoppages in this uh, second half. So I can't imagine it's going to be a massive number. But Jurgen Klopp, he's looking pensive. He's pacing around. Crystal Palace are starting to maybe stay down a little bit longer when they're when they're tackled. And uh, Liverpool are going to have to try and pull something out of the bag here. As uh, 
the uh, Crystal Palace manager. He's trying to just raise their game, concentrate, let's play to the final whistle, all that kind of stuff. All the cliches are coming out um, and they're going to make a change as Mateta comes off. Hudson Eduard comes on to replace him. Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace one. If you fancy goals, if you like, fancy late drama in that Liverpool game, if you've seen that film before, the big team suddenly find a way. 3.6 for the tight, 25 if you fancy Liverpool to go null null and win the thing. Can't quite see it myself. There just no, doesn't seem to be no. doesn't seem to be that kind of vibe. You can usually sense, can't you? Sort of the te- you can sense tension and sort of momentum being built by the team that's behind. Liverpool aren't really building that. No, just eleven minutes added on in the West Ham Fulham one, but you suspect it to be a little bit more than that as well. To be fair, because they've only just restarted. Um, but yeah, Liverpool are pushing, and they've I'd had the chances, but they're not really creating anything clear cut in the last five ten. Probably that Curtis Jones one was yeah. the last big effort, really. He should have at least hit the target with that. Seven minutes added on in that game, though. I think that 11 probably includes that injury because it was he was down before the 90. Yeah, but they've only just restarted it, haven't they? Mm. And it's like 92 I already. I think it'll have been factored in, though, because I think he was taken off. I, I, I don't know, it remains to be seen. But, yeah, the 11 minutes added on there, seven at Liverpool. So they're probably both actually finished roughly at the same time. Um, but uh, ball played in by Liverpool. They've got seven minutes to do something about this deficit. Can they go bang, bang? If it's your season, if you... Are gonna... Oh, they've got to! They That's have! It. Oh, they've oh, got to! Oh, wow. What a piece of defending that is. There Mo, is. Mo Salah from about two feet oh. has the ball taken off his feet. There must be some sort of voodoo on that, that Liverpool goal. That is superb defending. There's, there's voodoo on it. That's superb 100%. defending. 100%. There's some sort of invisible shield been placed by a witch doctor on that goal today. Who's, who's incidentally a Man City fan? That is... Oh. Mo, Mo Salah puts them away for bed and breakfast, doesn't he? And mm-hmm. uh, that was superb defending. Um, anyway, they come again, Liverpool. They're just not finding a way through at the moment. They didn't against Atalanta. They're not doing today against Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace are often the team that um, spoils big teams' runs. And at the moment, uh, they are the team that has gone to Anfield and are going to go away with all three points. First team since Leeds United to do exactly that. Nobody else since then has gone away with all three points from Anfield. But uh, just when Liverpool need a run to the end of the season, they are going to drop points at home. Can they find a way? Come Crystal Palace, chance to break. They're not going to commit anybody forward here. So uh, just it's all about holding the ball up, isn't it? At the moment, trying to keep the ball. Liverpool get it back. Ball played over the top. Mo Salah into the penalty area. Can he? Can he? Can he? Forced wide. Oh. That's an excellent. Again, it's the same defender. That's brilliant defending. Yeah, they've defended very well at Palace. Very well. He stayed. Oh, he's, that, he's not give that as he. He's not give that as he. Serves you right. I hate stuff like that. Just threw himself to the ground. It's cheating. Yeah, it is. Liverpool. I hope Liverpool score now, and I don't like Liverpool. That's how bad that that's, was. That's Jurgen Klopp driving past the window. He's already on his way home. Um, he's not happy, Jurgen. So are the West Ham fans. Liverpool are really pushing here. Crystal Palace are going to have to be concentrating for the next four minutes, probably plus another one. There's usually one more added on to these, uh, these extra minutes. As Liverpool bring the ball back in again, oh. pinged away off the head of a Crystal Palace defender. Hoof's clear by Will Hughes. No uh, finesse with that, was there? No, I'm sure if that were Burnley, they'd have brought it down, tried to play it around the back, invited a press and then give a goal away. Here's Alisson, comes to collect it, and Liverpool come again. Wow. 14 shots in the uh, in the second half. Attempts, seven in the first. Crystal Palace have only had six in the entire match, but they've scored one of them. And at the moment, the difference between the two sides at Anfield still playing on between West Ham and Fulham. Fulham edging closer to all three points down there in London. And uh, London Derby, West Ham nil, Fulham two. And a brace from Pereira. Andreas Pereira scored two today to, uh, looks like, take all three points back to Craven Cottage. West Ham are rubbish. They've just missed chances. They've been like Liverpool today. They've had they created them but not put them in the net. Burnley yesterday. I don't know if you've seen the, the actual the highlights other than the goals, but we had a few chances in the first half. I saw the entire match, wasn't it? Oh, fair enough, yeah. Mm. But, uh, yeah, it's all to concentrate at three o'clock on Saturday, win it on, on a particular game because yeah, but we could say, we could see the stats, we could see Burnley were were worthy of their um, their position in the match, and then just a bit of freak goalkeeping and all that hard work goes uh, goes for nothing or well, one point to the three. 
But uh, that's how it goes. Liverpool at the moment in the live table, third in the Premier League. And uh, not going well for them. Not going well at all. Can they find something here? Just one, you know, in this title race, one point might make all the difference. If they can turn this zero points into one, ultimately it could be the difference between the three sides. But they are struggling to get past this Crystal Palace defence. Harvey Elliott Text tries along. to get the ball in. And uh, Crystal Palace going to get the ball away. Liverpool now 95 to win it. 7.2 the tie. Crystal Palace 1.11. West Ham. Um, to get back to a draw, it's not going to happen. They're 32 to do that. Do you fancy more goals? One more goal in this game, or the next goal for go for the next, yeah, next goal for Liverpool, 6.4. If you think they can just nick one right at the end of this match, got tense. It has got very tense at Anfield. I was saying to you, weren't I, about Leeds yesterday? Their fans just went quiet. Stop reminding me of you bottling it yesterday. But your fans go quiet. Your fans get nervous. Your fans get tetchy. It transmits itself to the players. You stop being kind of like, kind of relaxed and silky. You get tense and nervous, and that affects how you play. 100%. And uh, yeah, Leeds suffer from that. I'm sure probably Liverpool are suffering from exactly that at the moment. Their fans would have expected all three points today against Crystal Palace. They may not get any. 10 now for the tie between Liverpool and Crystal Palace. Second goal, Liverpool now 9.2 as that clock ticks on. Mitchell says poor Liverpool. And uh, we are uh, not quite there just yet. Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace won, Crystal Palace down though the Liverpool end. So they're trying to uh, see the time out down the Liverpool end, which is obviously not what Jurgen Klopp wants to happen. No, just holding it up in the corner. They've actually got the ball now. They're coming, f even I was going to say, coming forward. They're, not, they're going more sideways, uh, but it's ended up going out for a goal kick. Anyway. It's, I tell you what, I said this yesterday to Dave Tyndall, and probably you understand this more than, than Dave Tyndall will. He'll understand it today. Um, but watching your own teams, hell, isn't it, sometimes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's horrible. It's actually nicer to watch West Ham against Fulham where you can just enjoy the football. Mm. But watching your own team is just h horrible. It is, especially when there's so much riding on mm. it, like you going for a promotion now. I mean, I'm kind of over it now. Yesterday weren't all, all bad, but earlier in the season, yeah, it was yeah. horrible. Yeah, you're watching the game, you're thinking this is... You know, you can play 46 games in the season, potentially 49 if you're in the playoffs. And one game can wreck the whole thing, can't it? The well, referee's yeah, just can. hearing something in his ears at the minute at the town field. Um, yeah, Jürgen, Jürgen Klopp's gesticulating from the sidelines. Yellow card for shot. somebody. As uh, Jürgen gets a little bit tetchy. I think that's a yellow card for... Uh, Jefferson Lerma as he retreats back to his uh, his position. He'll uh, take one for the team, though, in this situation, if they can get all three points. But, uh, Liverpool at Anfield do not get beaten. They are 1-0 down to Crystal Palace. Alisson's coming forward from the back. Oh, Everybody's we've committed. We've been here before with Alisson, haven't we? We've been here before. Everybody's forward. Ball played in towards Alisson. In fact, it's beyond him. Down. It's headed down. Back oh. post. It's going to be still with Liverpool. It's gone out goal for a goal kick. kick. That's your title done. Oh, wow. This is uh, this title race. It's gone. It's, finished. it's done. Final whistle. Jurgen Klopp has not got any points today at Anfield. Liverpool nil. Crystal Palace won. And the Liverpool players are on their knees. It's like it's a cup final. It's like they've lost it. And uh, Liverpool have taken no points. So the title race, Man City won yesterday. Liverpool have lost. We move on in about 33 minutes' time to see what Arsenal can do. Arsenal against Aston Villa. Some people like me are just kind of waiting for Man City to just take this title neck race like that. the scruff of the neck because they've been there, done it. Maybe this is the weekend they do it. I think Arsenal will win it. Well, you know, it's a difficult one, Villa, though, isn't it? Because Villa, are more Villa aren't than a capable. bad side. They're more than capable. Yeah. But I think Arsenal... I, it's going to be Arsenal City at yeah. the end of it, I think. Now, I think that, that on the last day of the season, Liverpool will, will, will confirm that they can't win it, uh, and it'll be against Arsenal City, and I think City win it. So, Jurgen Klopp goes around congratulating or commiserating, more likely, with uh, all of his own players there. And so we've got a few minutes left at West Ham. That match has taken a little bit longer to reach its conclusion because of a pretty nasty injury. Um, Stretcher called on around about minute number eighty-nine. And the uh, player was down for quite some time. Head injury there. Wish him well. But uh, that match, uh, the points are definitely going to go to Fulham because they are 2-0 up down there um, at the uh, London Stadium. And uh, West Ham, well, despite creating a few chances, just haven't been good enough to put them away today. They're missing Jared Bowen, which is a big miss. He's been the one that scored the majority of their chances this season. West Ham, without him, haven't looked quite the same. 
So uh, Jared Bowen is a, a, leaves a big hole in that attack that they have as they try and come forward down the right-hand side. It's going to probably be a consolation goal now if West Ham were to score. But uh, we are getting towards the final whistle there as well. And uh, it is um, all ticking on. This title race the season, we're in that final straight. And it's uh, time to uh, kind of hit your top form, isn't it, now? Hit your top form, see it through, job done, pick up your trophy. Easier said than done as Fulham bring the ball down the right-hand side. We're into the 12th minute of the 11 added on. As you said, there may be a couple more because of that injury kind of overlap the 90. Yep. But uh, we'll see what the referee thinks. It's not going to make any difference to the result. They could play another five minutes and it would uh, still be Fulham's point. Yeah, it's been a weird one today. Both games, both started off well. Both expected more goals, but didn't really deliver. Obviously, Fulham had, had, have scored a second. But we went for over 2.5 on that one. Nada. Went for Liverpool to win a both team score on that one. Nada. So not yeah. a great day for the old Bettige either. Yeah. Liverpool second goal. So Slissy no, it didn't come. Sliss did it. Poor Liverpool, says Mitch R. Slissy, damn you, loser pool. And uh, liver fool, says Viv. It's finished. Down there in West Ham. West Ham fool. Fulham take all the points down there. West Ham just uh, finishing the season. They obviously lost in the in the week against Bayer Leverkusen. No shame in that because Bayer Leverkusen have been beating everybody this season. But uh, Fulham have gone to West Ham and taken all three points as well. Arsenal against Aston Villa is coming up in half an hour's time. I'll give you the lineups again. David Rea in goal for Arsenal. Zinchenko, Gabriel, Saliba and White is the back four. Havertz, Rice and Odegaard in midfield. Trossard, Gabriel. Gabriel Jesus and Saka up front for West, uh, sorry, West Ham, Aston Villa. Martinez is in Same goal. Colours. It's a bit unfair to ask him to play twice back to back, it isn't it? It would be. Um, it's, it's Aston Villa. Uh, Martinez in goal. Concert, Diego Carlos, Torres and Dean as the back four. McGinn, Tillemans, Rogers and Zaniola in midfield. Diaby and Oli Watkins are up front. And if you want the prices, the prices are obviously available on the sportsbet.io site. Arsenal 1.26, 6.2 the tie, 11.5 for Aston Villa. Um, Joe, um, 1.26 on Arsenal. I mean, we said this when we were talking about Liverpool earlier. It's skinny. Where do we get more value? Temptation is to kind of push the boat out on Arsenal on the handicaps or both teams to score and stuff. It doesn't always happen. Gamma responsibly. Liverpool have let you down. It doesn't always happen, um, but... I would have gone for both teams to score in this one. I do still think it'll be the best of the three games, hence why it's on at 4.30 and it's in the main slot. There's some very good forward players playing in this game for both sides. Um, so I think we'll see the best of that because I was going to say both sides are better going forward than at the back, but Arsenal's defence is pretty solid, to be fair. Uh, but I'm expecting goals and that's where I'll be playing it as well. I agree. I agree. So Arsenal against Aston Villa coming up very soon indeed on Clubhouse TV with sportsbet.io. Tell us on the Telegram chat how you are betting this afternoon. Do you fancy the Gunners? I know there's quite a few Arsenal fans amongst you out there, so you'll probably be a bit, be a bit nervous for this one. Um, tell us how you're feeling. Tell us if you're confident um, Arsenal can beat Aston Villa and to keep themselves, well, keep themselves certainly above Liverpool, who have just lost in their bid against Crystal Palace in the title race. Um, let's hear from... Uh, Jonathan Woodgate then we'll get the preview of Arsenal Aston Villa with Paul and Neil and then it'll be myself and Joe taking you through the match itself we'll see you shortly uh, right another question for Jonathan Woodgate uh, here we go uh, question from Hakan2217 as a former footballer and coach what do you think would have happened to Stones Trent Alexander-Arnold or Walker if they were playing 20 to 25 years ago I would imagine that this is possibly reference to the fact that their wing backs who, who charge, certainly TAA and, and Walker yeah. and, and, and John Stones, who likes to bring the ball out. And by the way, what a goal from John Stones last night as well, although the keeper could have yeah. done much better, in my opinion. Uh, but where do you think these players would have fitted in 20, 25 years ago in football? All been fine. All been absolutely fine because they're all top quality players. Um, Stones can play. Maybe 20, 25 years ago, it, it wasn't always out from the back. But John Stones can play. Alexander Ryan, okay, very attacking. Maybe in my my day that he'd have been tucked in a lot more. But Carl Walker, not a problem at all. Not a problem. He is. I really rate Walker. I think he's even improved even more since he's gone um, to Man City from Spurs. He's a he's a first class player. But they'd all fit in 20, 25 years ago without without question in my view. Uh, the interesting thing about Carl Walker, by the way, is he is an absolute athlete, isn't he? And he's thirty two now. Uh, 20, 25 years ago, 32 is pretty much at the time when people are starting to question whether you hang your boots up and that's you done and dusted. Yeah. 
Whereas now, Kai Walker and the likes of look like they could play football till they're 35, 36, 37 at the top level. Yeah, well, I think with players these days, they look after themselves a lot more. Yeah. And they've got that, um, the way of preparing for games, recovering after games, um, heart rate monitors on, testing how far they're running, what, what they're doing distance-wise. A lot of them can tell how many jumps you've made, how many Excel, Excels, D-cells. I mean, with, the, with them now... With the sports science side of the game, that'll help the players really go on to the next level because of the training. Like for, for example, if we'd have played on a Saturday at Leeds, we'd have a Sunday off. We'd come in on the Monday. It'd be a hard session. Really hard. We'd run again on the Tuesday afternoon. We'd have Wednesday off. Run again Thursday, play Friday. I mean, play, yeah. train Friday, yeah. play yeah. Saturday. Saturday yeah. it, that would be unheard of now. Unheard of. Do because you... of... On, well, but no, with, with the sports science, then if it was as because uh, th- obviously the sports science departments at football clubs, certainly Premier League clubs, has exploded into life over the course of the last 10 15 years with uh, you know, um, technology, science, and, and and people studying this as well. If that was around when you broke into Leeds and, and you'd had that from the get go, uh, just wondering how that would have affected you in your injuries and whether you, you, you would have had less of it, with no question, it'd have helped. They'd have helped because, just say for example, in in a game you'd cover say ten thousand ten thousand kilometers in a game, and then you'd rest on a Sunday. But normally it's forty hours forty eight hours after the game, yeah, where your body's just recovering again. So you need that extra day. Bearing in mind, on a Monday we'd be at it again, at it high intensity Tuesday again. But then to not have all the information, then that'd make a huge difference yeah. if we had it then. Uh, thank you. Another question for uh, Jonathan Woodgate. Uh, another question from Off Branded. Who, in your opinion, is the best centre back in the world right now? And I will add a further question to that, which is why. Who is the best now, Virgil Van Dijk? Ah, what do you think to the start he's had this season? Uh, because he seems not quite the Virgil Van Dijk of last season at the moment. I think it's not always Virgil Van Dijk. I think it's the players around him as well. I don't think he's had that part. Well, he hasn't had that partner all season. It's been changed. So they've had Matt up in a couple of a couple of games. Um, Phillips. Um, it's quite, uh, they've had Matt and Gomez. Matip, Gomez, yeah. sorry, Gomez played in centre half a few times, and he hasn't that that real structure around him. The midfield's been missing with Henderson and, and, and Thiago time. So for me, he's the best. He sees danger so easily. He's never on his backside. Very, very rarely you see him on on his backside. Reads the game so well, can pass it, can head, is quick, can score in the other box, defends his own box. I don't, I don't see a real weakness in his game. I, I, I just don't see it. Uh, who was the uh, centre half uh, that you, if you did, uh, when you were coming through the youth system at Leeds, and still when you were you broke into the Leeds first team, that you said, "There's someone I'm going to watch and study, and I'm going to learn a lot of." Was there a centre half that you you did that with? The, the viewers might. I used to watch Gary Pallister. Yeah. And Tony Mowbray as a young kid at Middlesbrough. Yeah. I used to love watching Gary Pallister, just because he used to bring the ball out of defence, and he could run past players, but he could defend also. I've got his shirt at home, actually, which I, yeah, I was looking at it today. Um, yeah, a, a top move to Man United, got in the PFA Team of the Year, one Player of the Year, a fantastic player, and you look up to them type of players. How close were you signing for Man United, by the way? Because I know in a rather, you actually, was it a, a, a trial spell as a youngster at Man United? I certainly know, bizarrely, you ended up playing snooker with Sir Alex Ferguson once. Yeah, uh, that, I mean, yeah, so, that, yeah that, that's so. right. I was a cheeky young kid. I was a cheeky young kid, and I was on trial at Man United, I'd say for, I'd say for about eighteen months. You go on different different camps with them and stuff. And every Thursday, Alex Ferguson used to used to come in and have a meal with all the players. And Brian, can we used to have a sing song? And he walked in the snook room, and I was like, oh wow. He went, who wants a game of snooker? I'm not Welsh, by the way. <laughs> and um, I said, yeah, I'll play. I said, no, playing with him. Cheeky young kid. I said, oh, yeah, it was brilliant. though. just to see that a manager coming in at the room, I was like. And when your paths crossed later on, did you ever talk about that? Did he recognise you from those days, or what? I, I don't. I, I don't think he recognised you from them. Did I? I never signed in the end. Oh, I, I didn't sign for them in the end. They released. Well, not released me, but they said we we no longer want to bring you in. 
Um, so that, that was fair enough. Okay. Another question for Jonathan Woodgate. Uh, we're getting close to how well do you know Jonathan, by the way, and your chance to win a 10 USDT uh, free bet. Another question from Lord Jones. Who was the striker who challenged you the most? Who was the most difficult you faced? Well, I've got three. Um, I'd say Alan Shearer, first and foremost. He was so difficult to play against backing in. But like in the box, he was just so sharp in the box to, to get his shots away. And air really was difficult to play against. A real handful of a striker. Thierry Henry, oh, his speed, his, his pace, his, his general all-round player. You faced him on uh, one of your debuts, didn't you? Middlesbrough, you debut. Middlesbrough yeah. Yeah. That was the tough I think I got cramped after about 37 minutes. I, I, I stayed on for the all night. I don't know how I stayed on, but I stayed on. And I'd say Lu, Luis Suarez. When I was at Stoke, I played against Suarez. And one thing that I, I pride myself on as a centre-back is I never really got rolled. I turned when when the ball was coming in because I normally met it just before it was going to their feet. Suarez was just rolling me. I was like, oh, what? he was so strong. And he gets his body into some strange positions and his arms, his legs, and I, I couldn't get near him in the game. Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, let's go through uh, some more of these before we uh, we move on uh, with the behind the bet. It's uh, by Dolly with Jonathan Woodgate. Uh, another question from Lola Jones. What does the game against Athletic Bilbao on September the 22nd, 2005 mean to you? <laughs> Now I am thinking, is this the? Uh, this is the uh, famous debut, isn't it? This is the debut. So uh, you make your debut. So you've been at Real Madrid uh, for a year because uh, you've been injured. We've, we've, we've talked about that, and then you finally make your debut against Atletico Bilbao. Obviously, the night before, you're thinking, "Yeah, okay." When, when did you find out you were playing? First of all, the day before. The day before. The day before. So you go to bed that night thinking. I'm going to infer, I'm, I'm, I'm already thinking what the game could be like or how I could play. Yeah. You're visualizing the game. Yeah. I didn't visualize that. No. Uh, talk to me <laughs> you about wouldn't, the would game. You wouldn't, would you? No. Well, again, you're one of five English players to play for Real Madrid. Yeah. This is, I'm not visualizing getting sent off and scoring an own goal. Right. So the own goal. Let's talk about the own goal, first of all. Right. You are stood, what, 20 yards out, 25 yards, and there's a shot. Yeah. Now, you're job as a defender is to stop conceding goals. Yes, to stop the ball going yeah. in the back of that. So the shot near you, so you do the perfectly natural thing, which is try and block the shot. That's all you do, isn't it? Yeah, I think as a defender, you do that. Of course you do. In my defence, so I'd been out for, say, what, a year? I didn't have no practice games. Right. So I was None at all? They none. just threw you straight in? I was straight in. I'd trained and, and done about six weeks' work. I didn't have a practice game. I was straight in. See... That's harsh. So what I'm looking at in my defence is I was a bit like disoriented. I didn't really know if you if you know what I mean. I should have been a bit over to the left, really. I was a bit out of position. So I'm thinking to myself, that's in my defence. Yeah. But it's it's one of them things, isn't it? it, it it's one of them things. Yeah. To be fair, with the first yellow card as well, I should have been sent off because it was a terrible tackle, mistimed, and I'm not really wouldn't come across as a dirty player on the pitch. I was more like well timed, but I could have been sent off for the yellow. But that, I didn't think the red. I don't think I should have got a red. Yeah, I've heard you say this. So I shouldn't have got a red. You you think you should have got a red when you got the yellow, yeah. but you don't think it was a booking when you then picked up the second yellow to get a red. Exactly right. And I think all the players agreed with me. <laughs> could have been, I could have been not, it could have been worse. And I right. got a straight red. So Real Madrid fans, especially fans of Barcelona, Real Madrid, the top sides in Spain, they are quite happy to show their displeasure. Uh, the white hankies, the booing, they are on your back straight away. But what happened when you got sent off on your debut? I got a standing ovation. Standing ovation. <laughs> I couldn't believe it myself, to be honest. I was thinking, I'm going to get barracked here. <laughs> I think my mother and father were in the crowd behind, behind the goal, I think they were. Um, they must have started the cheese off. <laughs> but yeah, I got, I, I, could, I got a standing ovation. I think because they realised the work that I'd put in to try and get fit. Yeah. It was well documented in the local press how hard I was working. I was, I was learning the language. And I was making mistakes learning the language, but trying and trying to fit into this 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 culture and this humongous club. What did the uh, what did the players, if you can remember, what did the players say to you? Uh, and what do you do when you're sent off? Do you go and have a shower, get changed, and wait for the team to come back in? I mean, what, what, or do you sit there in your kit and just feel like you know th this is the worst thing ever? And and what were the players like with you when they came back in? Can you imagine what I was thinking when I got sent off? Oh, I, I, I well. I mean, I would imagine 
I can only think of about six swear words right yeah. now that uh, cross my Cause mind. Because when you get sent off, you walk down some steps. Yeah. And in the burn level, you walk up some real steep steps. Yeah. And then you go to the locker room on your right hand side. I remember just sitting there with my head in my hands thinking, oh my God, what has happened here? I remember we were getting beat as well, I think. We ended up winning, winning the game. I think we ended up winning the game 4-2, four, four is that right? And I remember just in, being in the locker room and Ronaldo coming over to me, he said, he said, listen, don't worry about that. Your leg's fine. And I just realised, I thought to myself, I've been out for a year now. I've just signed for this team. I'm back. And like he re- rephrased it, he said, listen, it happens to everyone. Just just move on from it. But then I remember picking up my phone and Kieran Dye going to me, that was the worst day of ever seen in my life. <laughs> I had to agree with him. I had to agree with him. It's still the worst one now. Yeah, but it's hard. I mean, you haven't played football for a year and then you throw something into first team action. That's yeah. incredibly harsh. Yeah, I think there was that, that clamour for me to play and to get out there. So I don't think there was time to make all these these friendlies up. So and then, yeah, straight in. as we said, you scored in the Champions League again, at the Bernabeu against Rosenberg. Where literally, what was it, a week or two later? Yeah, something I think it was like two that? weeks later. Two weeks later? But that was probably one of that was That was an incredible yeah. feeling. 48th minute equaliser, losing one in half time, and then went on to win 4 1. You were the bedrock of that victory. So <laughs> let's counterbalance the. The assist was the, good. The, the, <laughs> Sunday, Super Sunday. It's Arsenal, Aston Villa, Arsenal 1.28, the draw is 5.75, Villa are 9, uh, whatever goes on with your coefficients in Europe, Aston Villa are still in the box seat uh, for what might happen in terms of uh, getting into the Champions League. Well, are, where are they, Paul? I mean, they're, 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 they're there or no, thereabouts, they're fifth. but they're fifth. And they're I keep looking at the table and, and they're, going, they're, they're fifth. fifth. And they've played a game more. So they need to so win. They need to win. And they, I, need to... and they need to, Neil, they need to win, don't they? Paul, they need to win, yeah. <laughs> They do. They need to win. And by the way, Villa at nines in a two-horse race, that's big odds for Villa. Saw them at Man City and they got blown away at Man City. I fancied them at Man City because of the pace and power that they've got up front. Arsenal coming off the back of the, the result against Bayern Munich. Difficult to back against Arsenal at home with the likes of Saliba, Gabriel, best defence in the Premier League. Will Watkins be back or not? We'll, we'll see for Villa. I think they're big odds in a two-horse race. Not saying that Villa are going to win, but for those of you out there that like value, that might be a little outside... Arsenal very short at home. I looked at this actually. If you back all three of the title chasers this weekend in a treble, they're still odds on. So that's how, that's that's what the, that's what the bookies think of their fixtures this weekend. You back City, Liverpool, and Arsenal this weekend, you're still only going to get as good as odds on. There you go. Can you make a case? I mean, Aston Villa a decent home win against Lille. Let that late in no, late, late goal in uh, to Diakite it means that their tie is still up and running in midweek. They haven't sorted that just yet, but they, they go to Lille with a 2-1 win. Obviously, Arsenal have to, have to go to Bayern Munich and get a, uh, more than a result to get through to the next round. So, how do both managers look at this, Neil? It's, it's, they both need to win in the league still, clearly. Yeah, I, I think Arsenal's is maybe more important because I look at Villa and I think probably not going to expect anything from this game. It's a good time to play them because they are very much in a, in a tough tie. Uh, second leg away at Lille, only one goal advantage. And I think the manager will really want to win that competition. I think that's what something that he'll, he'll pride himself on winning as, a, as an achievement in terms of a trophy. I know the Villa fans want to be in the Champions League next year and maybe it'll be a case of relying on fifth because they've got a job on their hands to, to, to sort of overhaul Spurs. Spurs have got a game in hand. You're looking at this and thinking, that's a tough game. I don't think Villa will get anything from it. I think he'll rotate the players a little bit like he did against City. And everyone's like, well, where's your best players? Why aren't they playing? Douglas Luiz is suspended as well, which is a blow because uh, I think he's a, a decent midfielder for Villa. And I, I also look at Arsenal. I think they can't keep playing their strongest team in the Premier League. Saliba and Gabriel need a breather. They surely they need a breather. They've played every game as Saliba this season. So I don't know when his breather's going to come. I think both teams make changes. Arsenal have the stronger squad and they'll have too much. Fair points about that back line, though. Now I'm, now I'm picking my nose. I'm stuck there. I'm going to say Paul. <laughs> stuck in camera. Um, that, that's I'm always doing picture. that. Um, so, Paul, <laughs> take it away. Arsenal's back line, as Neil says there, is it, they do play every game. They're back two. They They're rely on them two. so much. And the goalkeeper. Yep. David Rea, Saliba and Gabriel. Ben White at right back. Genuinely, it's the left back that they've struggled. Kiwio's played there. I thought he struggled in midweek, Kiwio, against uh, Bayern Munich. I thought he was exposed a couple of times. So whether he does make changes or not, 
we'll see. Um, that, but the point that Neil makes there was a good one because I, I did the Manchester City Aston Villa game, and when the team sheets came in, we were very surprised at the amount of changes that Unai Emery had made. And then we looked at the players, thought Pau Torres, uh, what would you Watkins was injured, but there was others you looked at and you thought just left them out injured. And then you look at the bench and they're all sat on the bench. So he's obviously prioritising games. He, kn- he knows that Manchester City away is not going to be season-defining. He knows that Arsenal away is not going to be season-defining. But I just think he'd probably see a little bit of a chance in between the Bayern Munich games here to, to feel the stronger side. And he's getting to the business end of the season now where they're going to need to start winning games to, to stay in that Champions League place. Granted, they're a long way ahead of Manchester United in fifth, but their form of late... I've got written down here, I've written tired and poor form. And the European performance towards the end of the game was a little bit like that. Just worry for Villa that they might just be running out of steam at the wrong time. But with John McGinn back, I think he'll have a big influence. But I don't think they get anything at the Emirates. I think Arsenal will, will go on and win. And I think that treble for the for the top three to win this weekend comes in. Well, we'll see. Uh, Neil, is it hope more than anything from a Liverpool yeah. perspective? <laughs> Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And Villa don't have a good record there at Arsenal. They've not beaten them there since 2013 with fans. Uh, obviously, with, with fans is completely different to the COVID season. So the last time Villa beat them, 2013, they won 3-1, which Villa centre-forward scored two goals for them that day. 3-1, last time Villa beat Arsenal away in the Premier League. 2013. 2013. 2013, which Villa centre-forward scored two goals. 2013. Was he at the game the other week? Oh, Juan Pablo Angel. He scored, no, he scored oh. for at least three Premier League teams, this centre forward. Oh, here we go. In 2013. One of, them being, one of them being Liverpool. What is it? Is it? Oh, no. Crouchy didn't play for Villa, did he? No. Crouchy did, yes. Yeah. Crouchy played for Villa. Crouchy? Yeah, Crouchy. Uh, is it, is, is it, it? No, it's not him. Okay. <laughs> he was playing. Thanks. So the three teams I can think of are Liverpool, Palace, and Villa that he scored goals. Oh, that's... Christian Benteke. There we go. Easy, easy. Great forgotten overhead kick. <laughs> easy. <laughs> Crouch, it's Crouch. Yeah, you name the side he didn't play for. Crouches have more clubs than Tiger Woods. Exactly. Um, okay, so that's Arsenal, Aston Villa. One point two eight Arsenal. We th- we think that we think the treble probably will come in, but we'll see. If you're watching this now, the other two may not have won. In which case, Arsenal will definitely be in the box seat. Uh, they lead the Premier League on goal difference. Arsenal against Aston Villa again. That might have changed since I last said this, but there we go. Um, the, the, the perils of recording stuff. Uh, Arsenal Aston Villa is your four thirty kickoff. Covering every game of the English Premier League, Champions League and Europa League live as they happen. This is Clubhouse TV. And a very warm welcome back, Clubhouse creatures around the world. Very good to see you this afternoon. It's James and it's Joe with you uh, on this Sunday. We've had two games. We've had uh, one match which... I mean, we weren't quite sure what Fulham were going to do, but they won away at West Ham. Got another match that's been a bit of a surprise. Liverpool have lost at the top of the table and they have lost at home to Crystal Palace. The first time they've lost at home for 18 months. Who was the last time to beat them at Anfield in the league? Some team who bottled it yesterday. When you Leeds United. So, so yeah, Palace, Leeds United join an exclusive club. It gives Arsenal a chance now to uh, be well to take that opportunity to uh, steal a march on Liverpool at least and if they beat Aston Villa this uh, afternoon um, in around about seven minutes time Arsenal against Aston Villa gets underway we're giving you the teams twice I'll give them again just before kickoff but in terms of the, the prices here 1.26 on Arsenal Joe 6.2 the tight 11.5 for Aston Villa where are we looking for the best bets on this one looking for goals looking for goal scorers um, I'd, I I wouldn't be too um, against. I, I don't I, no, I don't normally like putting goal scorers up because I think it's too specific. Um, but um, choosing somebody, you know, like Watkins. I'm just trying to find a price now uh, for him. You have got Odegaard at two point zero five. I think that'll be a decent player. Who else have we got now? Watkins in there. You'd think you'd get a little bit of price for Watkins with him being on Arsenal's, uh, yeah, Aston Villa. 3.6 for Ollie Watkins to score. You That's think all right. That is all right. Yeah. And you think, if you think if they're going to score, it's probably going to be through Watkins. Arsenal's defence has been the best in the league though, this has. season. They've, so they've if, got a good defence. If he scores today, he's going to earn it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he's more than capable. Yeah, so both teams to score 1.83. 
Better than a pork in the eye, but I think that was quite high for a game of this. Ah! Yeah, see, it'd have been better than that. It'd have been better than that. That hurt. Yeah. If you need another one, I'll do we do have that. a HR department? Another one at half time for your poke in the eye. Um, anyway, so how are you betting out there, everybody? Um, so we fancy Arsenal. We do fancy Arsenal. Um, what what kind of area are we looking for for a correct score here? Three one, somewhere in that region. I yeah. kind of agree, somewhere in that region. Um, there is a free bet available in this one. Shh. I don't know what it is. I'm convinced he doesn't know what it is he makes it, but makes it, it up is. on the spot. I'll tell you what it is. I've just had a bet myself. If this bet lands, you win. Basically, <laughs> simple James as that. If bet lands, you, um, you win. It's a three-pronged bet builder. If they, and it's, I've, what I've done is I've gone for a kind of safe picks, which I think will land. I'm not going to tell you what they are, but I think they land. I think this bet builder lands for me. And if it lands for me, it lands for you as well, Clubhouse Creatures. So stay tuned every chance. We so could if get, you're uh, quids in, the creatures are quids in. If I, I'm going to share the joy. I'll be share happy. the love. I'll be happy, you'll be happy, Clubhouse Creatures. There's 10 times 10 USDT up for grabs. Depending on when it lands in this 90 minutes, it will either be a random draw or it'll be the first 10. If it's in the 96 minute, then it's probably going to be the first 10 because me and Joe will want to get home. <laughs> to be, it, I've got to be honest with you. Um, if, if it lands in the sort of 63rd minute... We'll, we'll draw them out fairly, and that's how it'll go. Anyway, we've got plenty of you watching this afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us over this weekend. It's always been good to have you here. Um, yes, Arsenal will win, says Pat Namji. Hakan's going, Arsenal going to find a way to ruin it again. Nice and positive there, Hakan. I like your style. That's how I view Le- Leeds at the moment. And that'd be right. Yeah. And uh, um, how, if, I mean, I would imagine a few of you got uh, Arsenal players in your fantasy teams as well. I've got three in mine. got David Rea. Got to Gabriel in defence and got Odegaard in midfield. So I'm sure some of you have got uh, Saka and a few others as well. Um, Ollie Watkins is uh, playing for me as well today. So I've got four players uh, marching out of the tunnel right now. Um, so good luck, my brave soldiers, and um, bring me some fantasy points this afternoon. Um, if Arsenal, if Arsenal bottle this as well, um, then Man City have had a great weekend, haven't they? Yeah, if Arsenal bottle this, and you might as well just all pack up everything and go home because Man City have won the league again. But the way it's shaping up, Liverpool have uh, just got off the boil this last week. Um, so they've uh, handed the baton, really, given the, uh, um, a little bit more of a, a kind of a fighting chance to Manchester City and Arsenal if they win this one today. I know there's a few of you out there who are Arsenal fans. Um, Pat Namji's fancying Arsenal, Alexis fancying Arsenal. And a good result for Arsenal if they win, says Charif Chinina. So, uh, um, yeah, good luck, Arsenal fans. Good luck, Villa fans, if there are any of you out there. And uh, we have a very good game, I think, kicking off in about three and a half minutes' time. Um, don't forget as well, and we will be back with you tomorrow night. Um, I think you're back tomorrow night. I am. Um, because we have the small matter of uh, Everton against Chelsea in the Premier League. So uh, we have a Monday night fixture this week. Then we have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in European action. And then we have um, the Friday off. You can have Friday off. Do whatever you like on the Friday, as long as you promise to join us again at the weekend for much more Premier League. It hots up as we get through. Next week, I remember looking at this yesterday, Joe. Saturday in the Premier League next weekend. Is it Saturday? Um, it's weird. We've got two matches kicking off at three o'clock. Um, Luton against Brentford, Sheffield United against Burnley. Nobody wants to watch any of them. And then there's a gap until 7.30 when Wolves play Arsenal. So so, it, three matches on Saturday. Presume, is that it? There's no early game? No. So there's no early game. There's two matches at three. A bit rubbish. Then there's a match at 7.30. Yeah, that is a bit rubbish. So, I, 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 I mean, I am not on next Saturday, and I'm quite happy that was... So I think it's the only time this, this season that I've not been able to work on a Saturday. And I... I'm glad looking at that fixtures because I'd have to hang around for um, two hours in between the fixtures uh, being played. So who's um, filling in for you? I'm not sure who's on uh, Saturday. Um, then on Sunday, one thirty, Everton against Forest. We've got uh, Aston Villa against Bournemouth and Crystal Palace against West Ham. 4.30, Fulham against uh, Liverpool. And uh, then there is more to come after that. So there's kind of wall-to-wall football, Champions League, Europa League, Premier League. We'll be with it all as we go through the uh, end of this season on Clubhouse TV with Sportsbet.io. It doesn't feel, it feels like only about five minutes since we were saying 
new season starting. Hooray. We've been looking forward to this. And now it's uh, coming towards its end. But uh, there are a few twists in the tail, I'm sure, as we go through this title race. Arsenal in a huddle at the moment, ahead of kickoff. Odegaard, the captain, giving them all a little bit of a, a pep talk. Not a Pep Guardiola talk, but a, an Odegaard talk. Ollie Watkins on the screen there as Aston Villa. Um, one of the most difficult fixtures, I would suggest, in the Premier League. Going, going away to Liverpool, probably the most dangerous. Um, Crystal Palace have done that today. Aston Villa are trying to get something from Arsenal. Kick-off just around the corner as Arteta and Unai Emery embrace on the touchline. We have got a cracking match this one. Arsenal against Aston Villa, everybody. Counting down to kick-off. Covering every game of the English Premier League, Champions League and Europa League. Live. This is Clubhouse TV with sportsbet.io. Please gamble responsibly. Always, always, always gamble responsibly, Clubhouse creatures around the world. Look after your money. And uh, Clubhouse TV with sportsbet.io, the world's most fantabulous Bitcoin sports, but the players take the knee ahead of kickoff down there in North London. And we are getting underway. Arsenal 1.26, 6.2 the tie. Aston Villa are 10.5 to win. So uh, you fancy Arsenal. You fancy a few goals in this one. Fancy both teams to score. Yep. Ollie Watkins on the score sheet. If you're looking for an Arsenal scorer. Uh, Odegaard. I like Odegaard. Trossard, he tends to come and up with a goal or two. But he tends to do do it better from the bench when he does it. Yeah, he's getting a start today, isn't he? Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. Because he, he's had a few chances recently to start. And then not really done much with that start. He does tend to be one of them players that's better at coming off the bench. So... Yeah, a few of them. Who's up front for Arsenal today? Um, you have got, uh, well, Havertz is in the lineup. Um, Havertz has scored is a few Jesus? goals. Um, Gabriel Jesus is playing, yeah. yeah. He's a good player, with Jesus, but he sometimes could be a bit more clinical. So the goal might come from midfield. Um, I already mentioned Hakan said that uh, he thinks Arsenal are going to um, find a way to ruin it again this season. Pat Nam G's kind of calming the nerves for um, Hakan. Um, no bro, this time they will win, he says. A shot comes in, gets uh, deflected over the top of the crossbar, lands on the roof of the netting. Trossard, who you've just mentioned there, has just got a blow on the back of the head, I think. Yeah, he blocked him again shot. It didn't look like there was much power in it, I'm being honest. Yeah, he's just side-footed it. Well, I mean, he sees it. He sees it. You can tie him a side foot. It, it, it's come at him with a bit of um, clout, hasn't it? It has, but I think he's being a bit dramatic there. Get up. You're such a hard man, aren't you? I am, you know. You'd have just brushed that off, wouldn't you? Hundred percent. I'd, 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 I wouldn't have even brushed it off. I wouldn't have turned my back on it like he did. I'd have stood my ground and I'd have gone, taking it, on it the, away, t- nosed it away, taking it on the nose. I tell you what, I'd have done. I'd have jumped up, chested it down, volleyed it all the way into the net. One 0 Arsenal. That's what I'd have done. I slipped through it net me. If it weren't for my knee injury, I'd have made it. Hundred percent. I used to have trials at such and such. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I was on the books at United. Manchester United. I was on the books, you know. Yeah. What well, on the book stall? No, the books. Yeah. I was on their books. No, you weren't. What's the worst ending to a film ever? Worst ending to a film? Well, how did that come out? <laughs> because what's it called? Is it Jimmy Grimble? When he's on when he's getting trials at Man City. And then, and then this scout from Man United comes in and he goes, I want you to sign for Manchester United. And he goes, no, thanks. I've got a better offer. And he goes, what could be better than Manchester United? And he goes, Manchester City. And like, that was awful from Arsenal, by the way. Um, on the right talking side, about films. Ben White just had a chance to cross it and he just stabbed it behind for a goal kick. Son Ben White. Rubbish. He's not, I mean, he's most, most inappropriately named player on the pitch, isn't he? Ben White, because he basically just paints himself brown. He does. But, uh, Loves a sunbed. He does. Hates football, weirdly. He doesn't hate football. He hates it. He doesn't hate football. He hates he's just not football. He's not somebody that goes home and puts it on the telly. And then he hates Arsenal. And he hates you. He might hate me. I think most people do. I mean, he played for Leeds for a bit. Oh, I remember that, yeah. Hey, on loan from Brighton at He the was, time. yeah. And there was, yeah, a chan- there was a chance at one stage that Leeds were going to sign him, but then the price got too big. Classic. Uh, Arsenal played £60 million for him. And to be fair, they're getting value for money, aren't they? Because he's playing enough games. You know, if, you, if you end up getting the um, transfer fee that might have sounded quite big at the time and divide it by how many times he actually plays for them, they're probably getting uh, far more value out of him than somebody they've paid more for. Yep. But, um, yeah, Ben White's a good defender. In- England, um, I mean, he's kind of fallen out with the England hierarchy, hasn't he? But uh, England uh, haven't Someone's ever... Something's gone on that they're not telling him well, about. Well, he's fallen out with the personnel behind the... 
behind the scenes, isn't he? That's why he's not playing for England. But Southgate and his and his team do that a lot. Like James Tarkovsky didn't want to play for England once because he had a, a, a niggle. So he just said, "I don't want to. I don't want to risk it. I'm not going." Don't call me up, and they've, they've never called him back since. Yeah, and Nick Pope's going to be in a similar position, probably. You're far better off if you've got a niggle going to the training ground and then limping off and saying, "Oh, Gaffer, I've I've got a niggle." Hundred percent. Rather than actually just turning it down full pelt, because uh, I think I think a lot of these here we go with our oh, oh, good piece of keeper. That's a really good keeper. That's actually. why he's there. People will criticise him. Really good and keeper. Say Ramsdale should be in goal. But Ramsdale would not have been there doing that then. Well, Ramsdale would have hoofed that into the stands. He, well, he wouldn't have got there. He'd have been yeah. on his line. But uh, David Ray comes out there and uh, does a little bit of jiggery pokery and just clears the ball away. A little uh, bit of what, sorry? Jiggery pokery. Jiggery pokery. Yeah, just kind of just jiggery and poking. If really. you're not watching the match and you're just listening to us, he basically was a sweeper keeper. Yeah, that, that's another way of explaining it. Mm. Um Who's, what's going to land in the first half? Pat Namji says, uh, he says, uh, I just need both teams to score in in this match. There's Ente and Pat Namji suggesting that that's, that lands in the first half of this. So uh, if you fancy both teams to score, first half, according to Pat Namji. Fingers crossed, because on my personal account, that is my bet after losing in the Liverpool one, because I had both teams to score in Liverpool. Both win. teams to score in the first half? No, just both teams to score. Yeah. Here come well, Arsenal. The first that's half. good play to the byline. Ball come oh. across and... Uh, well blocked away by Aston Villa at the near post. Villa are able to bring the ball away. Oh, it's, Villa are good enough to pass the ball out from the back. Uh, but it always, as a fan, if I was a Villa fan there, I'd have had the, my heart in my mouth because you've got uh, the red shirts of Arsenal buzzing around all your defenders trying to pass the ball out. That's what every team tries to play like now. So, and, not, and with all due respect to the likes of Burnley, some teams aren't equipped to do it, are they? No. We'll do it again next year in the Championship and we'll probably absolutely dominate the Championship doing yeah. it. But then hopefully we'd have had you know another year of experience to be able to do it in the Prem. The we'll thing, see. I mean, if you're, um, I mean, Arsenal maybe not in the top tier of spenders, but if you're Manchester City, for example, and you can afford to buy pretty much any defender in the world, uh, so you basically get your scouts and you, you do all of your, your research, you want to find a defender that's A, good defensively, but can control the ball and he's good technically to actually pass the ball around. Mm. Um you can do it, can't you? Because you're buying all the best plays for that purpose. Yeah. But if you're scrabbling around trying to get value for money further down the pecking order, you're probably not going to be buying somebody that can do exactly what uh, um, a lot of managers want them to be able to do. You certainly can't make yourself into Rio Ferdinand if you're Harry Maguire, can you? No. And that, that's got to be a free kick. Yeah, he's give it. Arsenal doing well, inviting the press and then beating it, as we've previously mentioned. But another example of it there. Um, when do we get the first goal? Now. <laughs> just what's happened? Sorry. <laughs> oh, no. uh, the um, just uh, if you just tuned in and you've not, uh, you don't know, it's a secret. What? So the free bet in this is ten times ten USDT up for grabs in this match, but it's a secret. Only I know. As Arsenal gets the ball off Aston Villa, they're coming forward down the right. Saka forced a little bit too far wide for his liking, but he's got the ball into the penalty area, gets the byline, oh. too much on the cross, and it goes away for throwing on the far side. He just needed a, that needed to be a more, bit more floaty, not as driven. Yeah, he's, he's smacked it, and he's, like you said, he's drilled it. But Odegaard in the middle again, breaking play down, then turning into the provider. That pass, Odegaard to Saka, is obviously a popular pass at Arsenal. Mm. We've seen it twice already in the first seven minutes. But yeah, Saka, just too much on the cross there. Just Like you say, just float it. Just float it. It's I mean, too hard. To be fair... Havertz can't get there. That odegaard Saka partnership on that right-hand side of the attack does tend to get them results, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Two very good players. Two excellent players, yeah. So we will... Uh, I see. do find it mad that Norway aren't that good when they have Odegaard and Haaland. Right, the rest of them might be a bit poor. Eh? Well, they can't be that bad because they've got Sanderberg and he's decent. So they've got an all right team. Yeah. I don't understand how they just... Here come Arsenal again inside the ball, played inside the full back and good play. There by uh, uh, Aston Villa at the back as they get the ball away. Chance for Aston Villa to break. Ball played over the top, and uh, as we saw earlier, if you if you're um, you know Crystal Palace, you get one goal, defend it, you can win matches. If they could just get one good chance to an Ollie Watkins or a John McGinn, yeah, you never know, do you? You never know. No, obviously McGinn's already had the shot blocked by the back of Trossard's head. And there's a temptation today to talk about Aston Villa as if they are. Also runs in this um, in this battle, but they they're playing in Europe. They've got Unai Emery, one of the best managers in Europe, in charge of them. They might not quite have the um, uh, you know, consistency of an Arsenal in the in the entire season, but they're in fourth place. 
It's not exactly uh, as well. Yeah, not exactly kind of Joe Bloggs turning up at uh, in North London, is it? Yeah, this is what an Arsenal versus Chelsea would have been yeah. three, four years ago. Um, but at the minute, yeah, Villa doing very well, having a decent season. Fully expect them to finish fourth. The gap to fifth is growing. Um, so I expect them to finish fourth. But yeah, it it's, should be a good game, this one. And top five could get Champions League this season, if depending on the coefficient and England's um, English teams rather performance in the uh, the latter stages of the European competitions. So um, even if Aston Villa did slip up and uh, completely and let Spurs get past them, they probably still going to be in the Champions League uh, next season. So and that that gives you a chance if you and I, Emery and Postecoglou, a chance to when you phone somebody up and say Lionel Messi, come and play for us. They say, well, what can you offer us? Well, I'd love we can to off- see Messi at Villa. We, we can offer you Champions League. I'd love to see Messi at Villa, but you are right. And just to clarify, when I said the gap was getting bigger, the gap from fifth to sixth is a yeah. one I, I, I got it wrong. I apologise. The gap to four, to Tottenham is just one point. If you if you um, phone a player up, though, and you are Aston Villa next season and you can give them Champions League and you're Manchester United next season and you can't... Mm. I know there's a big kind of lure because of the name Manchester United, but a lot, most players want to play Champions League football, don't they? Yeah. So uh, Aston Villa will probably be able to lure a few more talented players in if they if so if they should want to because I mean, they've they built a good squad there. Yeah, well, it's a historic club and they've done quite well in bringing in talent without the lure of yeah. Champions League football. So imagine what they can do with it. I mean, I guess the temptation would be to go out and get a couple of star names. But maybe that's not the right way to play it. You know, you just carry on the same process, but maybe just... Uh, Chance. Oh, oh, that's a good bit of keeping. Martinez, uh, he's a good keeper. He is. Makes himself big at the near he post. He's a good keeper, yeah. I mean, he, I think he was always a good keeper, but I think winning the World Cup with uh, with Argentina, it just gives him that little bit of extra. It kind of, kind of grows him by a couple of inches, doesn't it? Yeah. You it believe does. in yourself a little bit more. I'm a World Cup winner. You can't get past me. And then he won the... The Golden Glove as well, didn't he, in that World Cup? Did he say, like, yeah. you are the best keeper in the World Cup? So yeah. there was a lot of chat of him being the best goalkeeper in the world at that point, which yeah. I think is a stretch, but yeah. he is a good goalkeeper. Oh, he's a very good, he's a certainly Premier League quality. And he's, um, I don't, you know, some some people would let that go to their heads, wouldn't they? I think he's just made it, uh, he's used that to kind of make himself better. Um, but so, yeah, he's, a, he's, he's, I'll take him at Leeds, put it that way. Yeah. There's no bigger compliment I could give anybody than say I'll take you at Leeds United, but I like him. Uh, he's got a bit of character about him as well, the way he was um, saving those penalties and, and giving a little bit to the penalty takers. Um, a little bit of chat on the line, weren't there, when the people were coming up to take penalties against him. Yeah. Here come Arsenal again, but uh, Aston Villa at the moment. I mean, they are solid defensively, Aston Villa. They, uh, you know, Unai Emery doesn't put out a team that is just uh, cannon fodder. And uh, they've got a, a plus 17 goal difference. Conceded 49 goals this season. But outside the top three, then that is as about as good as you get in terms of uh, defence. Everton have only conceded 42, but then they've only scored 32. So that's their problem. Um, and uh, the, you've got uh, Man United have conceded 49. But uh, Aston Villa scored um, basically 20 goals more than Manchester United. So Aston Villa's record this season is very good indeed. Yeah, I've actually seen Villa play live twice this season like in the stadium. I went to Villa Park this year. They were somewhat fortunate at Villa Park, um, but at Turf Moor, they were absolutely rampant and they were really, really good. They're good at home, aren't they? That, this is the um, danger with Aston Villa. You look at their home and away records, it's, uh, it is slightly different. Um, but um, they had that run at the start of the season, didn't they, where they were just unbeatable in home matches at Villa Park. Arsenal to the byline. Again, the cross comes in, but it's just not quite there. And, uh, yeah, just uh, trying to uh, um, make the first breakthrough. We've only had uh, into the 13th minute. If you're just joining us, um, the spot bet, or the, it's not a spot bet, it's a secret. And it's basically in my head. Um, there are 10 times 10 USDT in free bets up for grabs in this match. Um, I've had a bet myself on this match. If that bet lands, and it's, it's, it's definitely achievable, if that bet lands, your chance to win 10 times 10 USDT lands as well. But it's a secret. Only I know. Only me. Not even he knows. I never know. Anything. Yeah. And even if I tell him, he forgets straight away. <laughs> or, I'm, or I'm just not listening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which is usually and the case. That's probably it, to be fair. That's probably it. Um, form table. And Arsenal are top of the form table in the last five matches. Arsenal have taken uh, 13 points from the last fi- five games. Um, Man City have taken 11 points from the last five. Newcastle actually in third in the form table. Bournemouth in fourth. 
Um, Aston Villa, in terms of their current form, are right down there in 17th place. Just five points in their last five. Yeah, they've had some tough teams, to be fair. Uh, to be fair. Mm. I was just looking at some of their fixtures earlier. The draw to Brentford last time out was poor, but then the only two defeats in their last eight are against City and Tottenham. Yeah. So it's it's not it's, it makes it sound like the form is horrendous. It, it's not. Yeah. Um, it's funny, isn't it? I'll just look at the top scorers in the Premier League. And uh, Erling Haaland's top. No surprise. Is he still top? No surprise, really. But he's, he's not had a great season by his no, he's, I mean, he, he was really ordinary yesterday, I have to say. Um, you give him a chance on the plate and he'll bury it. Yeah. But um, he's all around players. Roy Keane has said, um, yeah, maybe he leads a bit to be desired. Uh, but he scored 20 goals this season. Um, who do you think second? Well, uh, it can't be Watkins then, because I'd expect it to be Watkins. It's not Watkins, is it? It is Watkins. Ah, fair enough. Um, but if you told Dolly, after Haaland's exploits last season, yeah. if you told Watkins that um, in mid-April he would only be two goals behind Erling Haaland, he'd probably be expected to have scored even more than the 18 he has, wouldn't he? Yeah. But uh, Haaland's not been quite as prolific this season as he was last. He started the season well, though, Haaland, didn't he, to be fair? And he's been injured a little bit as well. He's not. Yeah. Caught, he's probably not played the games that Ollie Watkins has. But, um, I mean, I know um, he got points, he got goals yesterday against Luton. But um, How many did he score yesterday? He scored one from the spot and he scored one from open play, I think. But he right, missed, so, so they'd have been level yesterday? He, he missed, a handful, missed a hatful of chances as well. So I presume they'd have been level going into yesterday's, this weekend, yeah. Watkins and Haaland. Um, just for... Uh, um, admin, if you like. Harlan, 20. Ollie Watkins, 18. Mo Salah, Dominic Solanke and Alexander Ishak, 17 apiece. And Cole Palmer, 16 from midfield, really. And uh, Son is uh, on 15 and so is Jared Bowen. So there's uh, Bikaya Saka, who's playing in this game, 14 goals. Phil Foden's got 14. So that's the top 10 scorers in the uh, in the Premier League. Good, uh, good performances there. Good ball over the top. Was he onside? Looks like it. Is he onside? Right, he's going to get the ball down. Can he get the shot away? He tries to. Martinez is out. And then, yeah, the flag's gone up now. Yeah. They, it's weird, that rule, isn't it? How the line, the linos don't give... Uh, it's since the introduction of VAR, isn't it? But Yeah. It's, I mean, the Ashley was probably on. I think his feet are on, but I'm not sure about the rest of his body because he was yeah. leaning forward. But, yeah, yeah you're going to get a big injury one day. I'm surprised that's the danger you, mm. you play on for another 20 seconds somebody breaks the leg and then you pull it back to where it should have been so well that didn't even happen you can't unbreak somebody's leg can you you can say well the stuff that happened after that doesn't uh, count but uh, you can't uh, mend somebody's leg that uh, you can but it won't be instantaneous no it'll take them six months maybe yeah. if it's a bad fracture anyway we're not doctors I'm not a doctor I am Jay. actually I'm not a doctor I am yeah. I am a doctor. I decided to go into sports. Is that why you keep anyway. telling me to take my clothes off and go behind that screen? That's exactly why. Yeah, I'm not doing it. You not. need to. <laughs> Arsenal coming forward again down the left-hand side. I'm certainly not a doctor. Never trust me. There's Odegaard on the outside of the penalty area. Passes it out to Saka on the right-hand side. Gets onto his left foot. Ball Gotta into the be. back post. Chances oh. into the side netting. Ooh. Shades of Anfield already. Chances being missed. Into the side netting. So... Uh, Gabriel Hizos there. Had a lot of time to see that ball coming over. Plenty of time to work out what he was going to do with it. Too much time, if anything. Probably, yeah. yeah. He's had too long to think about Sometimes it. Sometimes in cricket, you know, when you get a high swirling catch and you have loads of time to think about dropping it, you drop it. Yeah. When the ball's smack straight at you, it's just a reflex. You catch it. And, uh, yeah, he did have a long time. He had to make a bit of power on that because it was a bit loopy, the cross. But he mm. should have done better. Should have at least got it on target. Yeah, he's not great with his head. Is uh, old Gabriel. He should... Uh, he likes um, people called Gabriel, doesn't he? He got the defender as well. Yeah. Only sign Gabriels from now on. We all dream of a team of Gabriels. Mm. Do we? Well, I, that's Leeds. I've, song. I've never had that dream. Not Leeds, Liverpool. Never had that dream myself. Have you not had that dream? No. At the moment, live Obviously, table. Famous singer Gabriel as well. Yeah. That's his favourite artist. Is it? I would imagine so. Probably always on his Walkman. Walkman. <laughs> Said that on purpose. I knew you'd say that. Um, there are, the live table at the moment sees Man City top. Um, obviously, Arsenal and Aston Villa still in the early stages, but one point apiece would put Arsenal in second, and uh, Liverpool would be in third. Two points between the top three, instead of the mm. one that we started the weekend with, in a slightly different order. Yeah, I think... If Arsenal don't win today, I think it's City's. I just can't see City dropping... 
Who have City got left to play? I don't think they have any C- dif- City difficult City have got fixtures. the best. City have got on paper the easiest running. Yeah, well, my, my FA Cup, ignore that. Brighton away, should win that with the injuries that Brighton have got. Then you've got Forest away, Wolves at home, Fulham away. Tottenham away is the only real difficult one in there, yeah. really. So, yeah, I can't see him dropping points again from there. Spurs play Arsenal and Man City. Wolves play all three. So there's a, there's a couple of teams. I think Brighton play a couple of them. So there's a couple of a few, three teams I think that actually could have a real influence on the running. Um, Saki gets through into the penalty area and blasts his shot into the uh, side netting. So Arsenal just creating chances, getting through behind the defenders, but not able to get their shots or headers on target at the moment, and uh, drove it really hard to put just into the side netting instead of the goal itself. So um, yeah, a bit of a struggle at the moment for Arsenal. Is it going to be one of those weekends? Potentially, we've just seen it for Liverpool. Yeah, Man City, who are watching from home today, feet up three points in the bag after yesterday. Watching Liverpool first struggle and lose against Crystal Palace. Now watching Arsenal um, not quite getting into top gear just yet in the first 20 minutes against Aston Villa. Um, Kazret Rostami says no free bets. Yes, there is available on this one. It's a secret though, Castra. A secret. Oh, chance, Villa. Can he get a shot away? Ollie Watkins. well. Oh, he let it just dribble away from his feet in the end. Gets the ball back, though. That's good determination. Repairs the damage a little bit. Aston Villa shoot from range. Again, the ball's recycled to Villa. Um, Only I know what needs to happen, Castro. Yes, I don't. There is a potentially 10 times 10 USDT in free bets available in this match. And I'll be fair with you. It's something... I mean, I've put a bet on it myself. I think my bet lands... So I wouldn't have done that unless I... Uh, I've put my money where my mouth is, basically. So I'm hoping it works for you as well. Arsenal nil, Aston Villa nil, coming up towards the halfway mark in the first half. And probably you'd say so far, Joe, that Arsenal have had slightly the brighter moments, but Aston Villa more than in this first half. Yeah, Arsenal, I've had the chance... Uh, oh, nearly went all the way through that. Arsenal, I've had the better chances. Obviously, the Jesus header springs to mind. Uh, but Villa, I've got in... Good positions and just not really capitalised. Chance for Arsenal to break there, but the ball in the end was cut out by the Aston Villa defence. And at the moment, it's at goalless um, in this uh, first half, um, which is all right for my defence, but not great for my Odegaard pick and my Ollie Watkins pick. I actually don't want Ollie Watkins to score in this because it'll take uh, two clean sheets away from my back line. That's uh, one of them, isn't it? Yeah, but if, if somebody scores, at least it's Ollie, mm. if it is him. Yeah, true. Uh, if someone scores it's not Ollie, then yeah, that's really bad. Yeah, that's a double bummy, isn't it? Here come Arsenal. Good play from them as they come out of their own defence across that's the halfway really line. Odegaard, very one-footed, but he's blimming good with that one foot. The left foot pass out to the left-hand side. Invites Trossard forward as uh, he has an opportunity. He just dallies on the ball a little bit. Had the chance to cross that earlier. Uh, and in the end, Aston Villa managed to get the ball off him. Other matches elsewhere around the world, clubhouse creatures. And um, we've got uh, Bayer Leverkusen taking on Werder Bremen in the Bundesliga. 23rd minute of that match. And of course, with the way the Bundesliga is currently situated, and uh, there are uh, no more chances for Bayern Munich. 34 matches they play. After this, there will be just five more matches. And if Leverkusen win today... They will win the Bundesliga, but currently nil-nil. A draw won't be enough. A draw, basically, I mean, they have won it, haven't they? They yeah, have won, won it. So it. It's a matter of time. But today they could cement it with a win um, in their game. She's currently nil-nil in the, the 23rd minute. the on everybody's lips is, yes, Nathan Teller did start for Bayer Leverkusen. Um, did he? Marvellous. Yeah. Um, Granada, two. Alaves, nil. 76 minute in La Liga and plenty of other matches besides. If there's anything else you'd like us to really get our teeth into, uh, instead of, uh, or as well as, the Arsenal-Aston Villa game, let us know. We'll try and steer you in the right betting direction. And you're watching Clubhouse TV with sportsbet.io. Fun, fast, ferociously fair. Plenty of sport around this weekend. We've got cricket. We've got uh, the Masters golf. We had the um, Grand National yesterday. And, of course, the Premier League reaching its uh, final furlong, really, as Arsenal nil, Aston Villa nil, and uh, only a smattering of matches still to play. So every ma- every point... I said to Dave Tyndall yesterday... Um, every point matters. Yeah, you, but you start the season and you don't kind of have that attitude, do you? Hmm. Like, after, after 10 matches, you're not thinking, well, this draw could be crucial. You should be, 
But um, now every point seriously matters. I think the elite managers in that are. I think that's what separates them. That's why I'm an I'm an elite kind of um, analyst. Is that is that what yeah. it is? is that what Leverkusen, you by the way, have a penalty. By Leverkusen could go ahead from the spot. And if they do that, they'll probably have about four fingers around the Bundesliga title. For the first time in their history, Leverkusen could be the top dogs in Germany. They have a penalty against Werder Brennan. It's going to be Victor Boniface from the spot. He's been absolutely glorious. He could be playing for Arsenal next season, if you believe the rumours, and he converts it. Victor Boniface scores from the penalty spot by Leverkusen. If everything stays as is will be champions of the Bundesliga. A league that's given us a little bit this season. Certainly certainly the first half of the season. It was a very nice little bet on a Saturday afternoon on the over 0.5 first half goals and the over 2.5. What are you beeping at? Why is it making noise? I don't oh. understand why it's doing I that. I don't know. Because you're pressing the wrong buttons, I'd imagine. No, it's because I'm trying to search for something and it's not there, so it's giving well, me that stop noise. Stop doing it then. I'm trying to get something on there for you. If it's not there the first time... Different word, mate. It's probably not going to be there the second time. It should it? be on there. Yeah. Um, are you looking for the Bundesliga? Yes. It'll be there. Scroll down a bit. Use your eyes, man. Odegaard's getting, trying to get the crowd. He's going like this to the crowd. He's saying, come on, get behind us. We need your support. This is the danger of playing matches at home at this side of the season. Fine if you're 3-0 up. The crowd are absolutely dancing in the aisles, aren't they? It's great atmosphere. If you're 1-0 down or it's 0-0 and it gets a bit tense then the um, support doesn't necessarily ring in the uh, the home fans' ears. First corner of the match has come to Saka, who's about to take it uh, on this near side for Arsenal. So I'm going to swing this one in left foot. It's have had to wait until the 26th minute for a corner to come. But the left foot of uh, Bakaya Saka is going to swing this one in. And uh, not a bad one. Try to flick it on, but Aston Villa are able to get the ball away. So uh, Ajax to win the match. Odds of 6.6, says Slissy. Who's scoring that one at the moment? Is that... Uh, take it there behind, are they? Ajax uh, currently are playing... Yes, they are. Playing uh, against FC Twente in the Netherlands. 52nd minute. And it is 1-0 uh, to uh, Twente. And uh, you can see on the um, stats of this one, um, Ajax are, on, are better on most of the stats. Um Twente have had just more shots, just more shots, um, but uh, and they've had slightly more corners. But XG favours uh, Ajax, possession favours Ajax, and uh, Slissy fancies Ajax to come back and uh, get themselves ahead in that game. I mean, certainly in terms of uh, the standings in that league table, Ajax are currently uh, in sixth place in the Netherlands. They had a horrible start, didn't they, to the season this season? Uh, but FC Twente. Um, are in third. So, better, better side overall this season, but you'd have to probably say that Ajax are the better side now. So, I can see where you're coming from there. 6.6, .6. maybe the double chance, Lissy, be around about double your money on uh, Ajax not to lose today. That might be worth a look. Werder Bremen to win the first half. Odds of 10, says Sliss. Well, they currently are. No, they're not actually, are they? They're behind. They're down, yeah. yeah, they're behind. Um, so, uh, here we go. Aston Villa. Edge of the day, good footwork. Oh, he couldn't quite just nick the ball out to the left-hand side. But uh, Aston Villa have a goal in them to date. They're 11 to win this one. Stranger things have happened. Could it be one of those weekends where Man City take the three points and Liverpool and Arsenal show some nerves? Are you going to say anything? No. There's an incident <laughs> at home that I'm trying to deal with why I'm here. Oh, yeah? It's annoying me that people want to leave me alone. But that's a different discussion. Yeah. So do you want me to leave you alone? No, not you. <laughs> I'm 40 miles away. What do you want me to do? Just tell him to off. I, I've tried that and it didn't work last yeah. time. I'd spend six months on my own. <laughs> Here we go then. Aston Villa trying to build from the back. Turn. Is a bit slow in pressing them there, Arsenal, aren't they? Yeah. It's, a, it's slightly nervy, this. I mean, the only guy's reaction is to try and get the crowd behind him in the 26th minute. It's quite early to be doing that, isn't it? Yeah, maybe, just maybe... We've seen someone else bottle it now. Well, they haven't bottled it yet, have they? But if, I mean, let's be fair, it's done nil nil. Yeah, and hence why I said maybe. And Arsenal good. have been probably slightly the better of the two teams so far. But uh, yeah, I, I think having your captain trying to urge the crowd on in the 26 minute is maybe just showing that they're actually thinking about that rather than yeah, um, you know, anything anything else. But yeah, interesting. As Unai Emery stalks the touchline, looking like Dracula. Got a very much a Dracula hairstyle, hasn't he? Yeah, it's it's the the hair going up. Yeah. The 
basically your hair. Yeah. I'm not Dracula though. No, it's because yours is like a, a colourless hair rather than black like Emma is. Colourless? Yeah. What do you mean colourless? No, it's not blonde, is it? It's like just got nothing about it. It's like just grey. But it's not grey. What colour's yours? Brown? Kind Light of. brown. Yeah. You've had have you had the highlights? No, never. Well, yeah, but when I were about 14. There's little bits of highlights in your hair, though. Is that just grey? That's just the light bouncing off my head. bit of grey in it coming. No grey in my head. There's a bit of grey in my beard. You can't see it on camera. Mm. Mm. I've got... A, if I was to grow my a bit longer, it's kind of, kind of grey there. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, enough of my hair. <laughs> and my hair. <laughs> and we got another corner, and it's going to be uh, by... An Arsenal corner again. Can they get something in this first half? Things if it's normal at half time, you come back out second half. The longer it ticks on, the longer it. It's like Leeds yesterday, nil nil for so long. The nerves get bigger. You think you're desperately wanting your team to win it. Crowd will be exactly the same in that stadium. Yeah. And uh, Arsenal players will be feeling it too. So uh, an early goal would kind of just rest the nerves a bit, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't feel like. Oh, no, it's gone all the way through. I don't feel like Arsenal fans would get on their back so much in this game because they're playing a decent side, whereas if they were playing like a Burnley or a Luton or a Sheffield United, then they'd be angry. Whereas because they're playing a decent side today, I think they'd be a little bit more empathetic. Pat Nam G's working for us nicely. Well done, Pat Nam G. He's like our agents. He's saying, telling uh, Kazra Rastami to uh, watch the whole stream, get loads of free bets. Nice work. Nice work, Pat Nam G. Uh, but uh, other matches available, we've got uh, that important goal, potentially a league-winning goal in the Bundesliga with Leverkusen leading by one goal to nil. 32nd minute there now. Just kicked off in Italy as well. Udinese against AS Roma underway in the first minute of that match. Um, so far in that German game, by the way, you've got, uh, um, oh, blimey, Leverkusen 2.1 XG as opposed to Bremen's 0.17. 53% possession, seven goal attempts to three. They've scored the goal. They've had four corners to none. It is all Bayer Leverkusen. If you're a Bayer Leverkusen fan in the stands or watching Clubhouse TV, I think you could be quite confident you're going to be champions of the Bundesliga today. All because you signed Nathan Teller. Probably the manager might have something to do with it. I mean, that's it's, it's the common cry, isn't it? That you know any team around Europe that wants to try and better itself, let's sign some Burnley players. Exactly that. And, yeah, I mean, you hear it all the exactly time, that. don't you? Look at Dortmund with Martson. They're miles better now they've got Martson. Here we go, down the left. Here come Arsenal. Can they get a goal before the break? Few people, I'm sure, have got Arsenal to be ahead by half time in this one, and uh, at the moment they are not. Here we go. It's out. Oh, a chance in here. Onto the though. left foot. He's just been forced. Oh, wide. is that a pen? Oh, I thought. Take you know what? I thought the referee had pointed to the he spot. Was he, was the, to it. he was the player next oh, right. to him. Put his arm out. <laughs> he looked that way, so I thought he was like looking for the spot. He, he had the player stood in front of him. He put his arm out, and it looked like the referee had done it. But uh, no, it wasn't a penalty. Unless They've not shown an incident of it again Well, since. VAR will look at it, because they always do, don't they? They look at everything these days. But uh, as far as things stand at the moment, it wasn't a penalty, and it's still goalless. Arsenal nil, Aston Villa. I've not done this today. You hate me doing this, but I want your best bet right now. <sighs> Stop playing with the computer, Joe. You're going to have to give me your best bet. Honestly, you can't get the staff. And what's your best bet right now? My best bet right now. Oh, um, well, obviously before the match, I put both teams to score. That's now gone to two point five two. So if you're still thinking that will come in, you're getting better odds for it now. No, still, I mean, obviously you've got less time. There's no reason why not. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, that's obviously why it's um, gone less. I, I'm still. I, Second half, both teams to score 3.35. I'm thinking first team to score. I still think he can go either way this one. So go with, wait for this, wait for this. Because Arsenal's only 1.31. Yeah. And Villa are 4.7. You're not going to get rich in Arsenal today unless they no. go 6-0 or something. Yeah. yeah. So small stake. But Villa to get the goal because they've had their chances. Villa are good on the break, and that's yeah. that's what they're going to have to do today. They're going to have to soak up a lot of Arsenal possession, and then try and hit them fast on the break and see if they can use the pace of Watkins and Co. 
um, Diaby and etc up front. But so far, um, neither team has been able to make the breakthrough. Um, I'll give you the, um, the stats on this game so far. Um, XG-wise, um, it is at 0.43 to Arsenal, 0.1 for Aston Villa, 53% possession for Arsenal. So it's not a... It's not like they've, they're having the ball. The only thing is when Aston Villa have the ball, they have it in their own half a lot. Mm. They're not necessarily having the ball in the Arsenal um, half. Um, eight goal attempts to three, though, in favour of Arsenal. Two on target to none in favour of Arsenal. And Arsenal have had the two corner kicks taken so far. Ball played downfield. Oh, it's a good little touch, that. was, wasn't it? A nice little flick. Yeah, that's got to be Oh, a... he's pulled him back. Yeah. He's played the advantage. Good refereeing, but come back and book him. Chance oh, it's from distance. Ball. The trouble is with that, the um, play went on too far for him to take it back to the free kick, didn't it? Yeah. It did, but he's got he's got to book him. He's got to pull that back and book him. Or else then it's not good refereeing anymore. Well, it depends how... If he's a goldfish, you'll have already forgotten about oh. it. Emery. Gesticulating for a yellow. I do that when I'm in the crowd, but I'm not a manager. Well, I'm, what's the difference? I'm in the crowd. I don't have an influence. I think it's fine for the the, the um, managers to do it. Nah, I don't like it. I don't like players doing it. I mean, players are supposed... But at the start of the season, players were getting booked for doing it, but they don't get booked anymore. Yes, yeah, so that's a problem with the, the, the FA. They bring these rules in. They're like, right, we will crack down on this. And then they only do it for a week. He's brought his yellow cards out. So he's going to... I don't know if he's gone back to the incident you mentioned, but he's gone back to, uh, to yeah. something. He, he, he did that. Ben White in the book. He did that. So that tells me that he's done it for the pull. Odegaard's going over to basically have uh, the last five minutes explained to him. Yeah, well done, ref. He's, he's done well there. Oh, it's definite pull, isn't it? And he's yeah. just... I mean, he had the potential to break there and uh, that pull just stopped that break happening. So Ben White rightly goes into the referee's notebook. Zaniola still on the floor. I don't think he needs to be still getting on the floor for treatment for just having his shirt pulled a tad. No, because it was that there. Oh, he fell over his own player, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, but he did. But this that, that's what Emery were doing that about. Falling over his own player, Una. What well, are you on about? What what the referee should do there, Joe, is go across to Una Emery and say, "You want me to book the player that just tripped him?" Okay, play Aston Villa player in the in the 100%. book. Hundred yeah. percent. I'll book your player then. See I, the uh, look on his face. I agree with you, Una. Your player gets booked. Thank you very much for helping me. Yeah, beautiful referee that would be. Um, I don't need my random number generator anymore, do I? No. Well, I might. I might do if if you land the ten times ten early. I might do, actually. So I'll, I'll have to find it again if that's the case. The 10 times 10? 10 times 10 USDT. Ah. Um, right, so we've got... It's kind of lukewarm so far on the um, on the free bet. Well, I knowing you, part of that will be goals. Knowing you, knowing me. That was wrong. Ha -ha. That was wrong. But knowing you... Part of that bet will be goals. Or part didn't of work that. if I went knowing me first, though, because you said knowing you. True, but I'd have just left it. I just wouldn't have said it at all, because it didn't work for the situation. Yeah. I retract my last song. Thank you. Mm. I retract... I don't know. All your all of your appearances on Clubhouse TV. Yeah. I, I, think, I, I, I will do it after my next two. We fully subscribe to that. Um, Trossard hasn't had much of an influence in this uh, first half, as he's been... Uh, Asked to start today by um, Arteta. I'm sure he wasn't cajoled into doing that. I'm sure he was keen to start, but he hasn't really been involved that much. Arsenal into the penalty area, trying to find a place to shoot. Oh. Ball played across. And again, good defending by Aston Villa. So uh, Aston Villa doing well at the back and then trying to hit uh, Arsenal on the break. But their chances to get out of their own half are few and far between, aren't they? Yeah, they are pretty much camped in their 18-yard box at this stage as... Odegaard had it on the edge of the box. I was expecting a left foot ping, but defended well. Oh. They're knocking on the door at Arsenal, but they're not creating any clear-cut chances. It's just that little ball that they thread into the penalty area. The Aston Villa defenders are this on... Looks decent. They're on them straight away, aren't they? Chance, back post, headed over. So, uh, still goalless, everybody. Arsenal fans, I know there's a few of you out there. Are you nervous yet? Or are you just kind of chilling? You're just kind of leaning back, thinking, hey, it's all going to come good. So everything's going to be fine. What I'd, are you talking about, James? I'd be nervous I if mean, I were them. You'd probably say what you're talking about, James, all the time. But what are you talking about about Arsenal, James? What you talking about, fool? Yeah, that, that'd probably say that all the time. Yeah. Yeah, about me. Yeah. That's when you're supposed to say, no, James, you're not a fool. <laughs> Why would I lie to you? Oh, okay. 
Um, you're not doing half of your job, you know. What's what's half you know, your job? Half your job is to turn on your computer. The other half is to turn on. I those can't. Top, I can't do it when toes. they go off midstream, can I? Yeah. Hey, oh, Chance. Aston Villa! Oh, oh, he's hit the post. He's hit the post. Ollie Watkins hits the post. And this is what happens. You have all the ball. You have all the play. You let the other team down the other end. If you haven't scored already, the other team can take the lead. Ollie Watkins goes close. And they are very, very, very good at counter-attacking. Such a good effort as well. Edge of the box. Going away from goal. Yeah. Hits it. Hits the inside of the post. You're thinking it's going in. And it goes just across. Yeah. And then goes out for a goal kick. That's, That's how close it was. He couldn't have done that much better, Ollie Watkins, could he, without... Uh, couldn't have done anything better. Yeah. Apart from... Oh, the goal! Oh, the oh. Oh, Bots away. Chance for... Uh, oh, it's, oh, oh, that's a great save. save. That's incredible. That is absolutely magnificent from Emery Martinez. For Arsenal as well, didn't that it? is brilliant stuff. Never got the chance for them. Point blank there. Arsenal into the penalty area. Odegaard's long-range shot. Then Arsenal pick up the ball again. He gets squared into the six-yard box. A shot from the edge of the six-yard box. and oh, he just hits his leg. He actually goes, he puts his leg towards the ball, though. It's not hit him. He's just gone to save his that. leg out and he's That's, saved it. That is exceptional from Emi Martinez. You, like I said, used to play for Arsenal as well. Mm. He was never really given the chance with them, though, to make it into the first team. Any... Possibly any other keeper in the cover. Maybe. I mean, there are good keepers. A lot of keepers would have been beaten that. By they that. Were, and he's quite tall, that, isn't that he? Could, that could not have been hit better without going in the goal. Mm. And that was a tough chance by... So we've seen a, a, a clear-cut chance at either end in the last two minutes. So maybe a goal before first half. If it suddenly kind of carries on like this, uh, a goal before half-time might interest you. You've got five minutes plus a bit of stoppage time. Interesting so, that um, Watkins is an Arsenal fan as well. So I'm sure they'll want them to win the league. Well, let's talk about him being at Arsenal next season, isn't there? Yeah, I think um, it makes perfect sense. Over 0.5 goals in the first half. 3.5 now, if you fancy uh, these close calls to become uh, a goal before the break. Because there will be a little bit of stoppage time at the end of this half. I mean, I've, I've seen a few um, Arsenal strikers mentioned, including by the Creatures, who, uh, uh, as I say, a lot of you are uh, Arsenal fans. Um, Ollie Watkins has been mentioned. You've got um, the guy that's oh. uh, Boniface at uh, Bayer Leverkusen mentioned yeah. as a p potential. Nathan Teller. Think you can't just bring out... The, are the only players you know Burnley players? And ex-Burnley players, because obviously <laughs> Nathan Teller's a <laughs> oh, Leverkusen right, player. That's all right. Then. <sighs> yeah. um, how are you betting then? Arsenal fans, tell me, tell me, tell me. Are you worried? Is, it, is, it, is this a problem yet? Are you a bit scared? Yes. Are you scared? I'm scared. Are you scared? I'm going to find a GIF. Are you scared, GIF? Is there a GIF? Is there a GIF that says, are you scared? Don't be scared. There we go. Don't be scared, Arsenal fans. That's Ooh. me at night. That's me before I, just, before I go to bed. That's you when you wake up in the morning. Ready for your day of mischief. And my pyjamas. Yeah. And that's your hair when it's not been combed. Yeah. And that's my umbrella. That's my um, balloon that I just carry everywhere with me. I, the only time I don't have it is when I'm on air. Yeah, it's, it just parks it outside there, actually. Yeah. Go get it for me. I'll show him. No. Um, are you scared, people? Are you scared? Um, are you scared, Arsenal fans? Are you... Are you they won't be in a minute because you, they're coming forward. Oh, Trossard just could oh, get can't his say that. It. You can't say that to people. I didn't say a you goal. Said, you said that as if they're about to score. I didn't. There'll be people saying, oh, Joe knows something here. And you don't know anything, do I, you? I know <laughs> a lot. You know nothing. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal. They're huffed and puffed, but it's going to be, well, we're edging towards half-time as nil-nil. Be a good point for Aston Villa if it stays like this. I mean, it could be more than the point if uh, Ollie Watkins can get that shot about half an inch to the right. That was yeah. a goal, wasn't it? Yeah. And that's all it would have taken. That was all it would have taken. But Aston Villa in fourth place will be certainly consolidating that. There'll be a um, Spurs got a game in hand, mind against uh, Aston Villa. So winning this would be rather useful for Unai Emery. But uh, obviously, Spurs got to play Arsenal um, yet, so there are tough uh, challenges ahead for and Tottenham City. Hotspur. Yeah, exactly. And Liverpool, I think. Yeah, I think so. I don't think they play Liverpool. I think it's Wolves that play all three. Is it? I knew yeah. I knew there were someone that played all three. I think Wolves... That just shows you the um, Wolves running's not easy. If um, in their last few games they've got to play all all of the top three, 
Yeah, got six. Was it six games left for Wolves? I mean, there's nothing. Wolves aren't going for anything, though. Are they? Yeah. They're well, going to be mid table, but yeah. six games left for Wolves, and half of them against the top three. <laughs> so, uh, ball into the area Chance. for Arsenal. Oh, is there, who's there? Who's there? Good player. Nobody. Nobody. Nobody is making that run. Nobody wants to grab this game by the scruff of the neck and say, "I'm here today." Well, we know that you can see you. I'm saying oh, nobody sorry. wants to do it. He's yeah. offside anyway, to be fair. Um, and they see all if... made the same run. Are you just searching for gifts now? I am. I'm searching for gifts. That's how bold you are. Yeah. Um, the gift king has arrived. I I predict this player will score for Arsenal. And this is James' best bet in form of a gif. What's, what price is Saka? What? What price is Saka to score what any time? What price is him to score any time? So, tell you what, I'll find it, shall I? Mark, it's not there, is it? No, it's not there. See, criticising. Might only be a before game market. Oh, free kick to Villa in a dangerous position. <laughs> That's uh, Shadow Shivgami has replied in a gif. It's a, a sweating frog, basically. It's a sweating frog. Yeah. <laughs> As you do. Oh. It's just outside the penalty area. It is, but it's been given, and Villa have a chance here. Who takes this free kick for Villa? Who takes free kicks for Villa? McGinn? That's... McGinn will probably be over the ball, but I reckon there's be better options. Booking for Gabriel. Yeah, that's great. He's in my fantasy team. Thanks, ref. Absolute, nice one, ref. absolute. Luca loop. Dean's got the ball in his hands. He's got a good um, set piece. He's got on a him. good whip on him. Yeah, he has got a good whip on yeah. him. Yeah. Um, you've got Tielemans there as well, haven't you? The Tielemans might fancy it, but I think yeah, left foot. Uh, Luca Dean left foot. It's probably that side of the penalty it's area, a isn't bit it? Close though for me. So I'd just be smacking it. I mean, I know, first of all, your talent, you'd walk it back about 40 yards, wouldn't you? 100%. And just hit it into the top corner 100%. from back, uh, back there. But if, See, if I were Luca Dean here, I'd go across goal. I wouldn't yeah. be bending well, it. They, these players haven't got your ability, they, Joe. It's not about ability, it's about nous. Hmm. They don't have my brain. Well, that's very... I'm sure they're devastated. <laughs> and Luca Dean favourite to take gonna this. take this. He's going to smack it. They've got a... Uh, a uh, draft excluder in. I could do that. And that's the only thing you'd be good you, for. You isn't? take three kicks for our team. I'll be the draft excluder. Here we go. Who's that? Who's Get that on there? with it. Come on. Who's Wait that? for this to be taken. Get on with it. Pl take this free kick now. Just Here we go. Oh, he can't get it over the wall. He tried to get it over the wall. What did I say? Drop it. And that was what it. What did I say? He said. It's too close to do that. Yeah. Always give a. No, he's given nothing. I thought it were a pen. I thought he'd given a pen. I thought he brought oh, it back. You'd be a nightmare pen. to live with. Oh, you've won the lottery. Oh, no, you haven't. <laughs> That's a bit different. Yeah. Oh, you're the most beautiful girl in the world. No, no, you're not. <laughs> I retract that. Thank you. Yeah. Um. Oh, dear. I thought this would be goal, goal, goal. But the way Aston Villa have played this first half cleverly, they've kind of... Tr they've very well drilled defensively by Unai Emery. And it's hard for um, Arsenal to break them down, isn't it? It is. And he will obviously be up for this one. He'll feel like... I know he's been at Villa for a while. But he'll probably still feel like he's got a point to prove to Arsenal, who ultimately didn't think he was good enough. They didn't. And I think he's proved since he is. Um, he's got a great record in Europe, hasn't he? Um, he Villarreal, etc. He's uh, he's tremendous. So I, I think Unai Emery is one of the best managers in the Premier League himself. Would you agree? Yeah, I think I think I think it's up there. I think he's up there. I think you've got your your peps, your clops, your companies, and I think under that it's probably the likes of your Emery's. If you're um, if you're Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool, I mean Klopp, Klopp's obviously going uh, this season anyway. You know, Emery would be on your shortlist, wouldn't he? You'd be, you'd think about him, wouldn't you? Potentially, yeah. He might be with a with a shout. Might be with a phone call. See where his head, head's at. Because Arsenal just didn't give him enough time. They didn't. They, he, he, you need, you need to... But yet they're giving Arteta all the time yeah. in the world, despite him being worse at first. I, I think that if you, if you are um, a, a chairman of a football club and you appoint somebody that you think is the right choice, you interview them, you look at their CV, all the rest of it, you make an informed decision, you say, right, you're our, our next manager. If you sack them within a year, it's you that's wrong. 
You've appointed the wrong person. It's not the manager's fault. Hence why it's the right decision to stick by Vincent Company yeah. in the current situation that they're in. Despite all the fans whinging. Yeah. I, I think you should always stick with somebody. Always stick with them. Um, obviously, five years on, um, then you haven't won anything and you've gone down three divisions. That's probably the time to get rid, isn't it? But yeah. uh, you've got to give somebody a chance to get a couple of transfer windows under their belt and, and make it their own. Otherwise, they're just trying to win matches with somebody else's team. Um, but it's half time. Um, Arsenal yet to break Aston Villa down. Goalless as things stand in this Premier League encounter. And uh, you have got at the moment at the top of the Premier League. Man City, if it stays like this, would be top after 32 matches. 73 points. Arsenal second, 72 Liverpool, who lost earlier today, will be on 71 points after 32. Two points between them all. If Arsenal win the second half, win this match, they'll go to 74. They will be top of the tree with six games to go. All to play for in the 45 minutes to come by Leverkusen. Reach half-time, 1-0 against Werder Bremen. Should they win today, they will be champions of the Bundesliga in Germany. So all to play for there as well. Udinese nil, AS Roma nil, 20th minute there. We've got matches all over the rest of the world as well on the sportsbet.io website. So if there's anything else you'd like us to talk about, let us know and we will do just that. Let's have a chat with um, David Seaman. We'll see you for the second half soon. And this is going to the Cats Protection League. This is a 500 euro uh, donation uh, for the uh, charity of choice from David Seaman. And he has gone for the Cats Protection League. If you bring David back in, you'll see the uh, cat cushion uh, over his shoulder. Uh, so what? The, so basically the Cats Protection League, uh, and this is funny because Lee Dixon, he is big into helping stray dogs. So Lee Dixon is a dog person yeah. and you are a cat person. Um, yeah. But uh, Cats Protection League, a UK charity uh, dedicated to rescuing and rehoming stray unwanted or homeless cats and educating people about cats and cat welfare. You foster with Frankie, your wife, uh, you foster pregnant cats. Is that correct? And you have. Yeah. Have you, have you still got Marmite and Toast? No, they've gone out. But we've right. got three others at the moment. Yeah. So Marmite and Toast have gone out to, to their forever homes, you know, and, and through Cats Protection you know, that, that's what, what we do. And that's what, you know, Frankie does most of it. You know, she'll, she will get some really small kittens. Sometimes they're actually born in our house. Um, and then nice. she, I call it humanizes them, humanizes them. And I, she calls it socializes them and then gets them ready. <laughs> they have to get to a certain weight and then they go out. And the hardest thing is letting them go. Um, yes. But I just, I keep, I keep telling Frankie, I says, yeah, but they're going to a forever homes, you know, when's the next lot coming in, you know, and it's, um, it's something that's really close. We've got two of our own cats that we actually got from Cats Protection. Right. Um, but they, they can't mix with the other cats because they haven't had their vaccinations, the, the okay. kittens and things, you know. So the, the cats that uh, Frankie takes care of have got their own special accommodation within the house, shall we say. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's something that's really close to our hearts. And it, and it gives us a lot of pleasure as well, you know, yeah. plus the fact that we've got our own two from there as well. So 500 euro donation is safe. That's going to the Cats Protection League. What we're going to do, we're going to have a bit of fun. I'm going to ask you 10 questions. We're going to have a quick quiz. A quick quiz. It's all about you, by the way. Uh, nothing to trip you up. Some of these might make you think a little bit. Um, but uh, for every question, we'll add 50 euros to the 500 euro donation. So it's a chance to double the money effectively. So are right. you ready for question number one? Ready. What is your middle name? Andrew. See, it's not difficult, <laughs> is it, eh? eh? I hope they're as easy as that. <laughs> See, simple as that. Uh, question number two. So you've already got a, an extra 50 euros. Uh, you made your Arsenal debut against which team? Arsenal debut. Wimbledon away, 1-3-0. <sighs> that was my question number three. What was the score? So you've, you've answered... <laughs> <laughs> you've answered two and three all right then show off do you who, who, who scored the goals that day who scored the goals oh no Arsenal? no idea all i was bothered about is keeping a clean yeah. sheet uh it was nil nil at half time uh it was merson smith and groves scored that's wow okay uh so you're straight to question number four no messing around with you right here we go <laughs> In the top 10 list of goalkeepers who have kept the most number of clean sheets in the Premier League, there are three Davids. You are one of them at number four. Who are the other two? Oh, 
David James. Yes, uh, he's at number two with 169 clean sheets. Now, you might, you might technically hate me for the other one. David? Yeah, although it's not pronounced David. It's spelled oh, David. Oh, De Gea. David, David De, Gea. De Gea. There you are. Yes. See? Uh, he's at number seven for 135 clean sheets. Uh, you, by the way, you're number f uh, four in the list. Uh, you kept yeah. around 150 clean sheets. That's head of a record. Yeah, but um, apparently, if I'm right, and I don't know who's done all this research, that I, I played in the top division for seven years before the Premier League and had about 70 or 80 clean sheets then. Right. But they don't get added. Yeah. <laughs> the football league never existed before the Premier League. He didn't. Apparently. No, he didn't. Oh, exactly right. <laughs> neither, neither, neither did Grass on some of those pitches as well, to be fair. Some of them <laughs> watching them in the 80s. Uh, you kept 140... 141 clean sheets, 138 for Arsenal and three for Manchester City. You are beaten by Petr Cech, who's one, David James, who's two, and Mark Schwarzer, who's number three in the list. Awesome. Uh, you have got uh, an extra 200 euros. Uh, question number five. Who did you play against in your 1,000th game as a professional footballer? I know this. Did a decent save against them as well. <laughs> Sorry to keep bringing it up, Gav. <laughs> Chef United. <laughs> it was the FA Cup. So not only did you play yeah. a, thou a thousandth professional game, it was a pulling out of stellar best save of your career in that thousandth game as well. Did you, you know what happened as well with the, with the shirt, right? So Paddy Kenny was in the goal and he asked yeah. me for my shirt, right? And I just took it off, signed it. Luckily, I didn't I didn't sign it to Paddy. I just wrote, say fans, David Seaman. And then I was on the way home and then I got a phone call. They were like, have you got your shirt? And I was like, why? No, why? What would you what's up? They went, it's your 1,000th 1, 1, appearance. And you made that save. I went, I've given it away to Paddy Kenny. <laughs> 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 and then I had to phone Paddy. I was, Paddy, uh, excuse me, but I said, any chance I can have the shirt back and I'll send you another one. It's just that that one's a bit special now. <laughs> Did he? He gave it back, of course. Being a yeah, fine lad that he is, back. Paddy Kenny. Yeah. yeah. And I sent him two shirts and a pair of gloves, yeah. you know, so he, he was happy. He's a Yorkshire lad as well, so he'll be he'll be exactly. fine with that. Uh, you've you've got every question right. Two hundred and fifty euros on top uh, so far. Uh, here's uh, question number six. You love cats. Three teams in the championship have cat related nicknames. Can you name two of them? Oh, there's a question. There's a question. In the championship. Yeah. Yeah. There's there, to be fair. But that's not Sun that's Sunderland, isn't it? The Black Cats, they're not yeah, in the championship. They're, yeah, they are they're in the championship. Oh, are they? They're in the championship. Oh, yeah, they one. got promoted. Well, there's one. <laughs> right. Oh. Hull City of the Tigers, does that count? That's cat related. That's two out of three. That's right. Uh, that'll, three, do. that'll do. That's it. You on fire. <laughs> you got every single one right. We're now gonna go a little bit over time, I don't care. Uh do you know the third one just for showing off sake? Uh, no, I can't think. Do you know why I remembered the whole thing? I was a kid. I, you know, we used to get the, the little like Panini stickers and used to collect the club badges. Yes. Whole Cities was brilliant. And it was always like the one that you wanted to get because there's yeah. a lion or a tiger right. or something on the front of it. And lion. I always remembered that. Lion. Yeah. You mentioned lion. Millwall's badge yeah. is a lion. Oh, yeah. They're called the lions. So yeah. There you are. Uh, 300 euros on top at the moment. Uh, <laughs> forgive me for this one, David. Please forgive me. <laughs> Uh, your full name is David Andrew Seaman. How many A's are there in your full name? Oh. Four. Yes. <laughs> I no. have to spell that, then. <laughs> yeah. The reason I asked that, right, I asked David O'Leary that question. Uh, your full name is uh, David Anthony O'Leary. Uh, how many A's in your name? And he went, two. And I went, no, there's three, David. So uh, I thought I'd try. I thought I'd trip you up with that, but you've got it right, all four. Uh, right, here we go. Question number eight. In your debut season for Arsenal, the 1991 season, the current fourth time highest goal scorer in the Premier League also made his debut for Arsenal that season as a sub he made one appearance before leaving the club who is that player striker yeah the fourth currently the fourth all-time highest goal scorer in the premier league made one appearance for arsenal came on as a sub in the season that you made your debut for uh, for arsenal there's a question 
What appearance for Arsenal. Yeah, he came on as a sub in a 4-1 win against Sheffield United. Always seems to be against Sheffield United this, David. Oh, I'm struggling with this. That's right. What appearance. Yes, he left to go to Bristol City. Later played for Newcastle United and Manchester United. Oh, I've got it. Got it. Andy Cole. Yeah. With a little bit of help, but I give it to you. Andy Cole. Wow. Um, I like that fact. That, there you go. You've got some good facts on here. Question number nine. Seven teams, starting with the letter S for Seaman and Safe Hands, have played in the Premier League. Name five of them. So, Chef United. Yeah. <laughs> good one. Stoke. Yep. Sunderland. Yep. That's three so far. I'm mean, never going to get five. Beginning five, two S. more. Chef Wednesday. Yep. And there's a current Premier League side already in there. 2003 FA Cup final. Hampton. Yeah. Can you name the other two just for the sake of it? Not off the top of my head now. I'm struggling. <laughs> Swansea City. Oh, I wouldn't have got that. And Swindon Town. Oh, not that hey, one either. But I, yeah, a, I do that. I played against them. Okay. Yeah, played against all them. <laughs> uh, nobody's got a full 10 out of 10, by the way, uh, on this, but you may have. Uh, oh. Your your debut for England was against Saudi Arabia and finished 1-1. No help on this one. Who scored the goal for England that day? Oh. It's either, I'm going to say, Alan Smith or Tony Adams. I'll go... Alan Smith. It's Tony Adams. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Do you know what I remember of that trip? Though? So that was my first, that was my England debut, right? We flew out on Concord, and for people that don't know, Concord was a really fast aeroplane back in the day. We flew out on Concord, played my game, and because it was my debut, I got to drive around in a Ford XR3i for a year because they were sponsoring England. And I was like, wow, welcome to being an international footballer. <laughs> <laughs> Life is made. Do you want to know the England team on your debut? Yes, please. In goal, David Seaman. Uh, Mel Sterling, Stuart Pearce, Michael Mel's, Thomas, yeah. Tony Adams, Gary Pallister, Brian Robson, Peter Beersley, Gary Lineker, Chris Waddle. Substitutes that day, Alan Smith, Paul Gascoigne and Brian Marwood. I don't know why it's located so far from the stadium. I guess it's, it's located in the New Forest. So Southampton is a city. It's next to the New Forest, which is a national park in England. Uh, the reason it's out here is because there's a lot more room. So if you took uh, yourself from one of, uh, far corner across to the other corner of the training ground, it's half a mile long, so 800 meters long. So it's quite a big site. It houses everything from first team through to B team, uh, men and women's first team, B team academy, and our academy starts at under six for the men's and under 10s for the women's. And then we have age groups at every age, so under six, under seven, under eight, all the way through to under 18s and then into our B team. This is pitch one at the training ground. Here we have 12 pitches. This is one of the two training pitches that the first team will train on. It's the exact same size as the one at St. Mary's and it's the exact same composition. So it's a hybrid of 4.6% artificial grass and the rest is made up of the real grass. You may see from the camera, there's lines on the pitch which aren't on a normal football pitch, but they were put there by the manager as his way of getting the tactical elements of his game across to his players. So we'll have a line that runs from the edge of the 18 yard box on each side, and then a line that runs through uh, either side of the center circle. And that gives the pitch five segments that allows the manager to get his tactical elements across to the team to show where they should and shouldn't be during a match. This is what we call our dome. Uh, the pitch is a 3G pitch. As part of the 
criteria to have a category one training ground, which is the highest class of training grounds you can have. You have to have an indoor facility. So to do that, we created this structure, which is actually inflatable. If you see the fans over there behind the goal, they're running constantly because they're pumping the air into here to keep it afloat. You may see the double doors next to it there. They're airlock doors. So to get anything into here, we need to bring it into the room on the other side, shut one door and then open the other. If you leave both open, the room will start to deflate. First team don't train in here. So the first team will come in for their pre-activation. Covering every game of the English Premier League, Champions League and Europa League, live as they happen. This is Clubhouse TV. It's the last time we welcome you back on this Sunday because they have just kicked off for the second half. Arsenal against Aston Villa. Goalless as things stand. And Arsenal obviously very keen to try and take three points today to keep the heat on Manchester City. If they if they win today, they will be top of the tree. If they get a, a draw, they will be second. So uh, Liverpool losing earlier. They've kind of lost a little bit of ground, but uh, it's all on Arteta. It'd be interesting to see what he said at halftime, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Um, Arsenal have got to go and get the win here. If, again, if, if they fail to get the win, they're going to need City to drop points. I think that's going to be the problem. And you're just handing the initiative back to City, like Liverpool have done City. with them. Hey, I'm a mank. What can I do? I can just say it properly. Um, but yeah, you don't want City to have the upper hand in this title race because if you give them the upper hand, they ain't, they ain't letting it go. I did a poll um, in the uh, towards the end of the first half. Who's going to win? Arsenal draw or Aston Villa? 59% said Arsenal, 29% said the draw. And 12% said Aston Villa. So we'll see if you're right. Which ones of you are right? Final result will be 2-0, says Pat Nam G. And uh, Ajax 2-1, says Slissy. He got on the Ajax bus and they've turned it round for him. Well, well done, done Slissmeister. 6.6, 6. 6, Sliss, I think, wasn't it? I'll have to make you the um, director of Bolivian and Netherlands football. Um, I just hope Arsenal wins, says Indy, and doesn't leave us like Liverpool. Um, so Indy, obviously an Arsenal fan. And uh, AS says, hi again, guys. Were any free bets added from the matches in the first session? I don't know. Um, I've sent them off. Um, it, it takes, obviously, somebody else to then add them to your account. So they'll happen at some stage today, I am sure. Uh, but to be patient with us, sometimes they're added almost straight away. Other times, depending on where people are in the world, it takes a little bit longer. But uh, they will be added at some stage. And Ente says they will add them tomorrow. I don't know if it's tomorrow or later tonight, but they will, they will come at some stage. So... Uh, be fine. Everything will work Just out right. Have a bit of patience. Everything Just take will that be once fine. Famously sang. Just have a little patience. patience. And and congratulations to you, James, because you, you worded the poll correctly this time. I know. I'm very good. You're very uh, good at two word sentences. I got some free spins at half time, didn't I? So you did. I, I, I've won. All well, you were talking about. Guess what I won? One pound sixty, weren't it? One pound ninety nine. Get in. Yeah. He's rang the bank manager up and told him. I don't know. What would you say? I'm going to buy a house in Manchester. Yeah, right. <laughs> Arsenal coming forward. Can they win today? Otherwise, the uh, top end of the title race changes in complexion. Ooh! Man down in the penalty area. Is he Gabriel Jesus is holding his head. He's saying, referee, I am injured. I am. I should have a penalty. And now he's up laughing because he was cheating, basically. Yeah, let's have a look at this. Nah. He, he trailed his leg to catch the back. I mean, he's basically looking for the penalty, isn't he? Yeah, he and did what Saka did the other week. And he's timed it, sli should I say. Timed it slightly wrongly. But uh, yeah, no penalty to Arsenal. So uh, let's see how this match progresses. And um, plenty of uh, options for you to have bets on this game. And, uh, well, feel free to dive in. Gamble responsibly, of course, everybody. At the moment, the prices on this match um, sees Arsenal at 1.45. So the compilers certainly think Arsenal definitely the play from here. 3.8 the tie, 10.5 for Aston Villa. If you fancy goals, uh, 1.5 is 1.55. Over 2.5 is 2.45. So the compilers are kind of thinking somewhere in between now. Yeah. Um, it was very much uh, a goal fest at the, uh, the well, the compilers were expecting goals at kickoff. Kind of just watered it down a little bit in terms of those prices. So if you still think those goals are going to come, and we've seen many matches this season, Joe, where it's been like 1-0 or 0-0 at half-time and it's ended up being 4-3 at full. So uh, you could still fancy goals in this one, but uh, it's entirely up to you. Gamble responsibly if you do. Yep, statistically, more goals do come in the second half. That's why, though, I like backing first-half goals. I mean, obviously, we wouldn't have landed anything today, but... You get a much better price if you, if you fancy goals in the first half. You do get a better price on goals in the first half. Chance for uh, Arsenal. Is it's, that an uh, ball? He's uh, give it. He's give it. Free kick. Now, this is 
potentially Odegaard territory, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, he's already got the ball. But a weird one, that one. He went in for a challenge and then put his hands up to say, I've not touched him. And then as he's done that, yeah. he's kicked it at his hand. There was a free a penalty given yesterday. Um, it was, which match was it in? And it was so unfortunate. It was the game that involved Manchester United last night. And, United. Yeah, and basically the ball was struck at him from about three feet, full pelt, hit him on his arm, which was out. There's no way you can move your arm out of the way. Mm. And um, I, Was I, it given to United by any chance? Yes. Yeah, I, I sometimes think um, we need to have a look at that um, handball in the box kind of stuff. We need to have a look at penalties given to Manchester United, or any of the top six for that matter. I'd, uh, I, I just don't think... I mean, you, your arm's got to be somewhere. I mean, I, I know a lot of people go to tackle a player now with their arms behind the back, don't they, to avoid that. But you've got to balance yourself as well. So if you're kind of lunging, you your arm's got to kind of be... Off. Your arm goes out to balance. It's just a natural way of moving, isn't it? But this is a, a dangerous free kick, this, for Arsenal, Joe. And it probably will be Odegaard to take it. Can he get this on target? Steps up. Oh, it hits, oh, basically Polak's one of the wall there, hits him flash in the face and he goes down, but uh, Aston Villa are able to bring the ball away. So we've seen a couple of free kicks in this match and neither of them have beaten the wall. Yeah, I'm just going to say that exact sentence. We've had two great opportunities from free kicks. The Odegaard one was a little bit further away, to be fair, uh, but the one that, um, who took it in the first half? Luca Dean in the end, was it? The one that he took um, was too close to be able to do anything, but uh, yeah, both of them have just hit the wall and they should do better for a match of this quality. Um, Villarreal have a penalty against Athletic Bilbao. That game is in the 11th minute. Got other matches around Europe as well. It was an AZ, a 1-0 up at home to AS Roma, 40th minute there. And Leverkusen are en route to winning the Bundesliga. They're 1-0 up against Werder Bremen, 52nd minute. Um, they are 38 minutes away from kept capturing their first ever Bundesliga title. It'll be a big moment for the... Uh, the people there, should they get across the line today? If they don't today, they will surely at some stage in the next few weeks because uh, they have got such a commanding lead at the top in Germany. Had a fantastic season, haven't been beaten. And Xabi Alonso about to claim that title. Yeah, so Harry Kane's gone to Germany to win league titles and then not won a league title. And he's turned them into Spurs. Yeah, how Spursy of Bayern that was. That's good defending from Gabriel. He basically, the ball's played through, knew nobody was behind him, just lifted his leg out of the way, let it go through to the keeper. Some players would have been trying to kick that. They'd have panicked. He's, uh, he's got good vision there, hasn't he? Good um, good awareness of what's around him. Yep. But uh, Aston Villa just starting to get maybe a little bit more possession in this second half. Aston Villa to score, and we both fancied both teams to score at the start of this one. They're certainly not got, uh, certainly not out of this. And those anytime goal scorer markets are back, by the way. Um, so if you fancy Bukayo Saka, he's 2.65. Ollie Watkins now 4.3 any time. Um, other likely goal scorers, John McGinn 9.7. Trossard 3.1. Declan Rice 6.6. You've got uh, Gabriel coming up from a corner, 6.10. Um, Kai Havertz is 2.9. Odegaard 3.1. And Gabriel Hizos is 2.65. They're all there for you on the sportsbet.io site. Um, Arsenal just to score in this match um, is, I mean... Well, actually, we can't get that. It's over one and a half um, Aston Villa goals it's giving us. It's 11 for Villa to score twice. Um, both teams to score yes in this uh, match is now 3.05. Yeah, interesting as well. I was looking at that goal scorer mark. It's fluctuating quite a lot. Ollie Watkins was just 5.2. It's now, got, now gone down to 4.9. Villa are still very likely to get a goal. Very likely is probably a bit stretching it, but still possible for them to get a goal in this match and if they do get a goal it's Ollie Watkins so at 4.9 it's a it, bit high for me though it's Ollie Watkins or it's um, I mean it's likely to be Ollie Watkins probably the percentage of him is higher than anybody else as forward with somebody else now chance chance it's blocked away it goes back to Aston Villa though if it's not Ollie Watkins though it goes to one of their midfielders because you've got a couple of their in the midfield John McGinn for example yeah. or Tielemans who can strike a ball Watkins with a shot there there's a loop over the bar uh, yeah, and uh, McGinn is currently 10.5, as every single market is short. Is that any time or next goal scorer? Any time. Yeah. So, uh, my fantasy team's not exactly taking strides forward off the back of this. Uh, at least we've got some clean sheets in here. Yeah, at the moment. Yeah. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. I mean, clean sheet for Arsenal probably will actually does my fantasy team no harm at all today, but we'll see. Gabriel coming up from the back to score the winner, nodding the winner yeah. in the 89th minute would be perfect as well. 
Um, will they add it tomorrow, says NT, in terms of the free bets? There'll, there'll be some stage in the next 24 hours. But it might be today. Keep checking your account. It'll, it'll land at some stage. And uh, as Aston Villa try and go forward, but that's a really good play from Havertz, tracking back and getting the ball back for Arsenal. He's he's become a much better Arsenal player. Now, ball over the oh, top, taken touch. down beautifully, but he's offside. That's poor. That was Looking a down the line. great first touch to just bring the ball under his control, wasn't great it? Great ball, great first touch, terrible awareness. Make sure you're onside. There was some... Look at that, he's looking down the line, that's poor. Clivert for Bournemouth. Did you see that match yesterday? I didn't watch it, actually. There was a ball from on the left-hand side, absolutely looked like it had been overhit, banged across to the right-hand side where Justin Clivert was running down at full pelt. He only had about six yards to work with before he got to the byline. Just basically just put his leg up, brought the ball down, stone dead in front of him. It's, some people have got too much skill. Yeah, it's mad. I would have never been able... I, I had... Adequate ball control for Sunday League. Um, but yeah, no chance. Well, I think you put most mortal people, amateur footballers um, and, be, and and less, in that same position. A, you wouldn't have got there in the first place to get your foot to it. Mm. And if you had been in the right position to get your foot to it, it would have come off your knee or your shin or something and gone into the crowd. To actually bring that ball down. Phil Foden's brilliant at that. Yeah. Taking the ball in his stride. Berbatov were yeah. historically one of the best. They used to love his first touch. Yeah. But yet you've got some players that have got a first touch like an elephant as well. Yeah, that would that'd be me. I'd be known as the elephant. I'd the guard out wide. I'd only get about five minutes, I think, on the pitch before they realised that I wasn't actually any good. Yeah, like Bebe. <laughs> Trossard's been poor, hasn't he, to say that he comes on and normally gets a goal. Would you, do you think there's an element of um, when he comes on with 20 to go... The defence are a bit more tired, so his pace maybe makes him a little bit more of a threat. Yeah, potentially. Whereas uh, he's obviously tiring with them at the moment, so he's kind of hasn't got that advantage, has he now? Potentially. There's obviously been a few players down the years that are decent. He's not a bad sub to have either, is he? No, he's a good sub to have. It annoys me a lot because he's in my draft, and you can't really make transfers in your draft so much. You can, but it's a bit of a pain. Um Ente says I need Bayer versus Vader Verde and Athletic versus Villarreal to be over 2.5 goals. So uh, you probably need Bayer to add a second and a third there because Bremen, statistically anyway, on that match, uh, Ente aren't doing too much. 2.14 XG for Leverkusen, 0.75 for Bremen. Um, fairly, fairly even in terms of possession, but 10 shots to 5 in favour of Leverkusen. It could be a both teams to score, but Leverkusen look like they've got the three points yeah. um, in the bag almost that they need 32 minutes before between them and the Bundesliga title. In the other game, Athletic Bilbao against Villarreal. Villarreal must have missed that penalty. It was. It was missed by uh, Moreno, so that's not good news for Juente. Um, that game looked like it was going to get off to a flying start goal-wise, but that penalty missed. And in the 17th minute, that game is still goalless. Yeah, not much happening in this game. Now Arsenal just have the ball in the middle, trying to break them down. Jesus has got the ball in now again. It's just defended well by Villa. It's just a lot of the same in the last 15, 20 minutes. Will these be... What? There's a number of potential routes for this match. Either it's just basically stays stubborn resistance from Villa, it's nil-nil. Or we have that script where Arsenal have had a lot of the ball, but Villa nick it, like yeah. a bit like uh, Palace did earlier, although Palace scored early. Or we get that dramatic 94th minute winner for Arsenal just to get the three points from nowhere. Arteta won't care how they come today, will he? He just wants the three. On the sidelines now, if you offered him three points, he would not care who scored it, how it came. He would just want the three points in the bag. Arsenal are good at that, though, aren't they? Late goals. Yeah. They do like a late goal. Oh, Villa, if they're going to keep a clean sheet today, they're going to have to be on it all the way through. They've been on it so far. They've defended very well so far. Going to be a change for um, Aston Villa, Leon Bailey. Is uh, stripping off and about to come on. And uh, you've got the guy that looks a bit hippie-ish. You've got that kind of assistant uh, coach guy with the long hair and the beard. I thought you were on about um, if Hector you, Bellerin then. If you were drawing... Obviously not there anymore. If you were drawing the um, kind of um, human embodiment of Jesus at school, you'd draw something like that coach for Villa. I missed him, so I'm hoping that shows him again. Yeah, let's have a look and see if we can find him. It, it does look a bit like Jesus, if Jesus existed. And um, whoa, 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 whoa! Don't open that debate up. And he's white and has long hair and a beard. I mean, no, I don't think I don't. I wouldn't be able to pick him out in a police lineup. Who Jesus? Yeah. 
Or Gabriel Jesus. There's every chance that he wasn't white, isn't there? He's coming from that part of the world. But he existed. Is that what we're going with? I, th- I think he factually did exist. Whether he did exactly what people say he did is a different kettle of fish, isn't it? That's a, a, a totally different programme. Tune in for... Uh, Tune in for Bible. Yeah, God's House TV. Bible Night. Yeah. <laughs> God's House TV or whatever, later on tonight. Who would present Bible Night here on Earth? It wouldn't be me. I don't think I'm equipped for doing that. No, same. Yeah. Saka with a corner from the far side as the uh, ball is played in. Nice deep corner. Keeper nearly came for it. Oh, oh volley's dreadful. Horrendous. It was that. Got it topped here. Oh, that's Declan Rice. Oh, of course it was. Declan Rice on his left foot has basically skied a volley. That was better in, in, in the park. Leverkusen 2 0, by the way. That is the title done and dusted, surely. Up the teller. That's good news for you, NT, because that's now heading towards over two and a half, isn't it? Um, Going to be Diaby coming off and uh, Leon Bailey coming on for Villa to replace him. Granite Xhaka with a second goal. He's um, done right for himself since he's left, hasn't he? Yeah. Arsenal. He's gone in there and done a good job. He's always He was always a good I, player for Arsenal. He was, but he had a calamity in him. Mm. Declan Rice is coming to replace him and looks... He's probably better in that position, Declan Rice. But yeah. uh, Granit Xhaka has gone to Germany and he's going to lift the title he couldn't lift with Arsenal. So uh, um, he uh, probably thinks he's made the right move. He was. I, I never quite liked him. I have to say, um, you know, when you get like a picture from a distance as a as a fan, um, I always thought Granite Jacker was a bit of a yellow card, yeah, a bit limited on his play and stuff. Then I watched the Arsenal documentary, and he came across as a really nice guy. Well, a lot of players like that, aren't mm. they? They're just not nice on the pitch. Ashley Barnes, he's another one. Not every tale has to be a Bernie tale. I am always going to relate it back <laughs> to that. There are other clubs existing. Which is a shame. Far more important clubs. How many corners is that so far? Four. No Three idea. to Arsenal, one to Villa. It was on the screen. Was it? I was, <laughs> I was, I was, I was looking at the chase on top screen. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, what's, what's the question? He's, he's in, he's, well, what, he's, what was the job of a knocker upper during the Industrial Revolution? And he's gone to increase the population. To wake people up. It's yeah, got it to be is. to wake people it up. 100% isn't it? is. He used to knock on the window with a big stick. Yeah. But it's called Fogarty. And it, where, do you know where he's from? Yorkshire, isn't he? It's from Blackburn, isn't it? Was he? Yeah. And that's why he's... Chance! Silly. Oh, he's hit the crossbar! He's hit the crossbar! Villa! Oh, that was a cracking effort. From the edge of the penalty area, rattles off the crossbar and Arsenal escape. Big Ra- chance. An absolute rasper of a, a, a chance. Was that right, the, the waker upper? Did it get yeah, confirmed? It was, I, yeah. I, I don't need it confirmed. It's 100% to yeah. wake people up. Which team describes a motorsport involving controlled skids that originate right. in, in Japan? He knows that I mean, one. He should He's, get that, shouldn't yeah. he? He should get that one. That's how, that's how, I'm going to say that's how bad this game has been. It's not been bad, so that's harsh. Mm. But that's how but little it, action is currently happening. It's not quite as good as I was hoping. Mm. Is that fair? Yeah, I'm expecting goals, to be fair. And we've not got them. We, we, in terms of the, the free bet, Clubhouse Creatures, it's a secret. Shall I tell you what it was? Shall I tell them what it was? Yeah, well, it's not going to come in now, is Cause it? Because we're a long way away. Yeah, we are. In your hot and cold analogy, yeah. you'd be stuck on the South Pole. The radiator's quite cold, isn't it? Um, it was over two and a half goals in the match. So Still possible. Boo! Boo that man! Mm. Everybody put boo in the chat. Still possible. I mean, at the start of this, you'd have, you'd have taken that at the start of this, but now you probably wouldn't, would you? No. Um, but over two and a half goals was the uh, was But the all benchmark. we need is a bang, and we might get a bang, bang. And it, as we've said, if we get a bang, bang, you sometimes get a bang, yeah. bang, bang. And then very rarely, if you get a bang, 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 you then sometimes get a bang, 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 which is obviously four goals. So, oh, chance. Oh. But it's one of them. Depends who gets the goal. If Arsenal get it, you could get a bang, bang. But if Villa get it, they could sit back and try and defend and, and, and not have a bang, bang. But then you could get a bang, bang as Arsenal score. But is that a bang bang or is that a bang bing? Going to put it back myself. Chance! Chance. Oh. Oh. Chance on the follow up. Ball's lofted to the back post. Aston Villa going to be able to get the ball. We've had chances. Who was it had the shot that rasped on the crossbar? Villa. Yeah, but which player? <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> let's have a look. It should have been a goal. Yuri Tielemans, it was. Oh, he's good to be fair. Fires a rocket of a shot, but it only hits the crossbar. Brahe says boo. Boo that man. <laughs> I can't see that. My telegram's not updated yet. So I'm I'm, I'm spared the uh, derision of the clubhouse creatures. You'd, oh. have t- you'd have taken over two and a half at the start of this match, Brahe, wouldn't you? 
I thought this was going to have goals, isn't it? I mean, we should have had, we've hit the, had the crossbar oh, hit twice. It, it comes down and hit the post as well. Yeah, we've had the crossbar hit twice. I mean, what more can I do for you? I can't go and put it in myself, can I? I mean, if I suddenly, if you're watching the telly at home, and I suddenly walk onto the pitch and throw the ball into the net, so there's one for your clubhouse creatures, I'll probably get arrested. It, it'd, be, it'd be a bit weird, because there's millions of people watching this match all over the world, yeah. and only about one million watching clubhouse TV. 1.5. So well, fair 5. enough. But still a lot of people that won't really understand what's going on as yeah, Villa go up the other end and get a corner. probably good marketing, isn't it? It will be great marketing. People will then tune in. I'll, I'll wear a sportsbet.io t-shirt. Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, go on and say, this is for the creatures. This is for the creatures. Yeah. And then I'll probably throw it to the walls of the goal and miss. <laughs> that would be typical yeah. you. Yeah. Here we go. The uh, cloud are stri- crowd are starting to clap. And they're uh, clapping Villa, aren't they, at the moment? Because uh, Villa are the team coming forward. Arsenal nil, Aston Villa nil. 24 minutes to go. And Tielemans, who just hit the crossbar, about to take a corner from the far side. So, uh, hotting up. Every mistake from now is crucial. Every goal from now is crucial in this title race. We saw Liverpool come up short earlier on to date. They lost to Crystal oh. Palace. Got a man down. Is that Odegaard down? Yes. Odie's down with the eight on his back. Head injury again. Obviously, we saw a bad head injury in the game earlier on between West Ham and Fulham. This one, um, why are you looking at that? Fulham? Yeah, that's, that's what they're called, isn't it? Yeah. West Ham, Fulham. 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 What do you call Oldham? Oldham. Typical. Yeah. And so do you. Um, Hakan says, might be. Um, last two games between these two sides ended first half. And, fe- oh, they're talking about Turkish football. Fenerbahce won. And I think the same will happen today, says Slissy. And Hakan says, might be. But Fener doesn't look good so far. Well, they do not need to play good to win anyway, oh, he says. Oh, get up. So well, the match you're talking about, guys, I'm going to scroll right. down, you guys. You guys, Clubhouse Creature guys, is um, the game between Karab Umruk and Fenerbahce. Half time, 1 0 to the hosts. Uh, with Keller scoring in the, uh, well, right before half time. And uh, Fenerbahce had the better of the first half as well, 57% possession. And uh, yeah, so did. Right, Slissy Hakan, tell me, because you're better experts on Turkish football than I. Um, who wins that? Is is our Fenerbahce a, a good play there for the clubhouse creatures to get involved? Uh, Fenerbahce, the prices on that game in the Turkish Super League. In fact, it's not Turkish Super League, is it? Am I on the wrong screen? Where's the Turkish football? Uh, bear with me a second, caller. Here we go. Um, 2.64 for the home side, 1-0 up. 2.8 for Fener. 3.3 the tie. Fener. Bachi. Using the nicknames now. Odegaard. I can't say Manny, but you can say Fenner. Well, I, I've never been to Turkey. Have you not? No. I've ticked that box a few times. No, I've never been to Turkey. If um, Hakan or Slissy want to invite me. Well, Slissy's not there, is he? But uh, um, happy to go. I thought that too, um, says Brahi. You see, you see, you told me about the... You didn't repeat. Brahi goes boo. I've not seen that bit. It's, not, hap- it's not, hap- not refreshed on mine. You're happy to tell me that Brahi it's went boo. It's not refreshed on mine. Oh, Bra- Brahi goes boo, James. And then you didn't tell me that Brahi'd followed that up with, I thought that There's too. There's nothing on my like screen. Like three goals, two, one or something the like that. The last comment on my screen <laughs> is from Slisser and it says, I should have been more greedy and bet more. No, bet responsibly. That's right. Well, well said, Joe. Thank you. That's the best thing you've ever said on Clubhouse TV. Thank you. Well, no, I've, I've given very you some wise. grief before. Very wise. That, that's better. Yeah, it's very wise. Um, but so, yeah, so uh, Baron says Arsenal something is playing badly today. Yeah, Baron. Baron, where are you? Are you watching, Baron? Nice to know you. Um, I think it's the first time I've come across you on Clubhouse TV. Where in the world are you watching from? Hopefully, it's not Baron. Where are you watching from? What now? Oh, it must be offside. Yeah, it is. Is that Martinelli on? Yeah. Has he come on for Trossard? Probably. Are you, are you actually watching this match? It's the obvious choice. I was watching... Leverkusen 3-0. <sighs> Nathan Teller, baby. And uh, Nathan Teller has not been involved in any of the goals. He's been involved. It's a team game, Mr. Bootler. Um, yeah, Tommy Asso has come on for Ben White, who was booked earlier. Martinelli on for Trossard. Just sold my car. To Trossard. (laughs) 
I'm good at staring competitions. Well, you lost that one. Well, no, I felt that we need to get back to the programme at some stage <laughs> rather than stare at each other for the entire second half. Go then. No, uh, let's be professional. No, let's not. Let's Three, be... two, one, go. I'm winning. I've won. Can't even look at me. I Should we win. stay quiet until we get a goal? No, because we'll be quiet all half. We need to shot on target before we speak again, Joe. From when? Now? We, we need to We need to tempt the betting gods from now. I'm a, to, I'll do some uh, personal admin then. We need to tempt the betting gods, the football gods, to give us something special. Are you writing your resignation? I, Joseph Redmond. Oh, sorry, we should be quiet. Sorry. You started this. Hello. Be quiet from now. When now? Everybody around the world, be quiet from now. You know, since we've been quiet, they've actually not kicked the ball. Oh, you've ruined it. was a free it. kick, and they yeah. were just walking around. So it's not actually worked, and I have ruined it. Um, you guys getting paid for talking, says <laughs> Akam. That's a good point, Akam. Well said. Um, if you, um, I'm going to take that off, that message from R, oh, whatever, because we don't need little adverts on the um, Clubhouse Telegram chat. Um, and uh, ignore them anyway, because they'll suck you in and they'll they'll take your life and your freedom. Um, Ente says, now only two teams for my parlay. One, which is Arsenal, both teams to score. Yes, an athletic club. This is very real, over 2.5 goals. Good luck with that, Ente. And uh, thank you, everybody, for watching uh, today and yesterday and indeed every day of Clubhouse TV this season. Um, we're taking you through every single Premier League football match. We're taking you through the... Uh, um, Champions League and Europa League till their final kicks this season. And uh, it would be a brave person to put too much money on who wins the league just yet, despite Liverpool losing earlier, despite Arsenal being 0-0 City. against Aston Villa. City, the team at the moment, that have made the biggest strides forward though this weekend. The problem with City is they will all, not always, but they will concede a lot of the time. And they do like, is there a free give that? Yes, yeah, I'm not sure about that. What's going on? I think Fennett going to win somehow, but gamble responsibly, says Hakan. Um, James, last two games ended first half. OK, so Tim's saying that um, the last two matches between uh, um, Carag... I can I struggle to say this now. Carrier bag. Carag... No, it's not. Um, Carag, Mug, Carag oh. Umruk, Istanbul, bag. taking on Fenerbahce, Istanbul. And the last two games saw Carabag, Carab Umruk leading at half-time, but... Uh, Fenner winning both matches. So 2.74 for Fenner. The pick there from the uh, our Turkish experts. Thank you very much indeed for your expertise. When Burnley were in the Europa League, albeit very briefly, they beat a Turkish side in the second qualifying round. Excellent. Who was it? Your after dinner speaking must be a real hoot. It is. <laughs> who, who was it? Um, they beat uh, Giram Spore. No. Adam them spore or whatever they're called. No, they're all. They, well, most of them end with a spore, don't they? This doesn't end in a spore. Um, they beat Galatasaray. No, we, I think they're the Beatles. To be um, fair. Fenerbahce. No, I think they're the Beatles as well. To be um, fair. Who else is there? Let me think. Um, my Turkish knowledge is being tested here on the basis that I've never been there. Um, I think it might have. You've got been... the Turkish league up in front here. I can I'm see trying, the mouse moving. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Traps and spore. And they said no Pesiktas. Um, Basakashir. Basakashir. Istanbul Basakashir. Correct. Got it right. Got it. Do right. I get a point? No, you get nothing because you went through. If anything, you owe me a point. <laughs> that eighth team you mentioned. Mm. Fair enough. I think Jack Cork popped up with the winner. I don't think these points actually matter, do they? In, in my life, so. Well, I, I'll forsake they it. They do, and see, uh, this is what I do at home. This is how I keep. The girlfriend, Keen, I give her what is known as I a, don't want to know this. As a girlfriend point, if she does well. <laughs> so if she makes me my tea, or uh, something like that, or breakfast in bed, I do sometimes say, thank you, 
That's one girlfriend point. Uh, and what do these points add up to? Collection what, what, of things. Is she able to redeem them against she's, anything? Um, but is... she doesn't like the idea. So when I say, well done, here's surprised. a girlfriend point, she kicks off, thus losing the girlfriend point. So we've never got to a point where she's had enough girlfriend points to redeem. If you're watching, Mrs. Joe, uh, you have my deepest sympathies. I've, I've, you must have a... Must be must be very difficult. Grayed out between Arsenal and Aston Villa. It's grayed it's out a corner between for Arsenal Villa. and Aston Villa. It's a corner to Villa. Have they scored a football goal? Am I typing it up for no reason at all? Oh, it's a bad corner. Arsenal nil, Aston Villa nil. Grayed corner. out. It might be a penalty shout. It's going to be another corner on the far side, I think, isn't it? Oh, he's, give, he's asking handball. for handball. Handball. Is it a penalty to Villa? Let's have a look at this. Is it Declan? That's a push. Oh, come Ooh. off it. That's not a pen. Even, Tommy Asu. Even, even if it hits his hand, that's not a pen, surely. I don't know, you know. Oh, look there. Maybe that one, if it does hit his hand. I don't think they've given no. that over there. They're just checking it. It's probably got greyed mm. out because it got checked. It's not greyed out anymore. It's, it's no longer greyed out. It's now back to its normal colouring. Which is? Uh, kind of dark grey black with um, white, le- white numbering. Very nice. Sounds it. Very, stri- very Sp- on brand. Sportsbet.io site is very good looking, I think. What's more good looking, you or the Sportsbet.io website? I mean, it's not for me to say, Joe, is it? Sportsbet.io site is A1, 10 out of 10. I'd say we're probably on a par. On a par? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of par, what's happening at the Masters? That's a good idea. Um, Hakan, I love your pronunciations of Turkish teams. No, you, you don't really, Hakan, do you? Um, come on, Villa, make City Have champions again. Have you just again. become the butcher? Um, I, I, I mean, I, I try my best. He has just become the butcher. I'll tell, I mean, it'd be the same for you in English words, I'm sure. But, you know, sometimes it's like when you get players and you're reading out team sheets and stuff and there's certain players you always stumble on because they kind of just don't fit your mouth. The syllables and the words just don't quite fit your mouth. And they come, always come out wrong. Um, and uh, yeah, Turkish uh, team names are not my strength. Galatasaray is fairly easy, isn't it? Galatasaray and Fenerbahce, I can do those two. Besiktas, I can do them. Traps and Spore. I can do pretty much anything when it comes to other languages. You're known as the wonky toad butcher. That's because I have a wonky toe. Yeah, and you butcher names. And I want to cut the toes off. If I cut them toes off, it you'd, wouldn't matter. You'd fall over. Toes, I wouldn't because toes help they you don't balance. touch the ground. Toes help you balance. They do, but them two do not help me in the slightest. Here come Villa. Da- Villa are looking the better side at the moment. Oh, I'll oh, tell you what. Oh, he's not giving it. Disgrace. He's not even giving a free kick for Disgrace, that. Disgrace, referee. That that looked... Checking club badge. That looked harsh. Checking club badge. That All the harsh. way around and he gives it 100%. That looked harsh to me. What's going on here? What they're looking at? He's pointing at his ear. Someone injured? Nah, sub. Emil Smithrow coming on for Arsenal. And uh, is that Vieira behind him as well? I think a double change for Arteta. Got 13 minutes plus stoppage time to go. I'll ask you again. Loads of Arsenal fans out there. Are you feeling nervous? Can Arsenal win How this? Let me nerves? know. How if you fancy Arsenal nerves? from here, they're 2.52 to win. 9.2 for Villa, 1.84 for the tie, the uh, live standings in the uh, cha- in the title race, um, if it stays as is, uh, Man City are top, 73 points. Arsenal will be second, 72 points. And Liverpool, who lost earlier today, will be third on 71. Odegaard is coming off for Arsenal. He's taken a knock a few minutes ago, didn't he? And uh, it's just, just, just not quite worked out for him. So he's come off. Gabriel Jesus is off as well. Emil Smithrow is on and Vieira is on. That's not particularly attacking change, that, is it? No, he's bottled it. He's shown his inexperience and bottled it. Jorginho's on, so he's even less attacking than I thought. Bottle job. A man down for uh, Villa as well. I think that's Zaniola just getting some treatment. And Pat Namji says, yes, he's nervous. Ente says, very nervous. I need both teams to score. So do I, mate. And I have already... Let go. Well, just need, let go. It's easier. As you know, I need over two and a half. That's what you need for the free bet to land. We need three goals in the next 12 minutes plus stoppage time. It's let's possible. Just, let's just call the whole thing off. It's, it, I've seen matches where that's happened. 
Let's just call the whole. You've thing seen off. matches where I you've have s- never seen a match in my life where that happened. You support Burnley. They conceded three ma- three goals in this period. No, they're, they're only four 0 down at half time, mate, and that's, then everything that's, just that's true. Everything just cancelled. That's true. I, I hate to bring up Burnley. You always bring up Burnley. He says after bottling because of you today, I'm getting grief off Blackburn fans because of you. They've been quiet for nine right. months, not said a word. That's worth it then, wasn't it? Not said a word. All of a sudden today, <laughs> it's, it's, going down. <laughs> you've got some cheek. It's worth my misery um, of yesterday just to uh, give you grief today. It's not. I've had to block a few people today. Oh, come on, Leeds. You can, you, come on, Leeds. You can do this. I hope you bottle it now. <sighs> Everybody's bottling it. That's the trouble. That was a real opportunity for Leeds yesterday to take the um, championship by the scruff of the neck and say, right, we're going up. And they didn't do it, did they? They did not do it. They did not. They, uh, yeah, they messed up yesterday, Leeds United. Uh, but there are more matches ahead, but we're running out of matches. There's only about th- what, three matches left for uh, Leeds United to uh, yeah, three stake left in a the, claim. In the championship. Probably need to win at least two. Probably need to get seven points out of the nine, at the very least. Um, otherwise, it might be uh, the playoffs. I don't like the playoffs. They're very good if you win. Oh, it's a great way but to go up. The Leeds have never out done of that. Four don't Leeds, win it. Leeds have never gone up by virtue of the playoffs. We've done it twice. I had a very long drive down to Cardiff. Watched Leeds get battered three 0 by Watford, and you, it was an even longer drive home. You went on a game. Yeah, that's not like you. I used to have a season ticket, Leeds. Did you ever have one at Grimsby? No. Oh, um, chance. I used to work for Grimsby. Did you? Yeah. You see turnstiles when I was. This was when I was a lot younger. I, well, yeah, would hope so. I I was a glass collector um, at Turf Moor, but not on, not on the match. The um, it was quite good actually. You you worked on the turnstiles. You let people through, obviously, took their money. Um, you put all the money in, and uh, and the ticket stubs in the box, and then you'd um, kind of about ten minutes after kick off, fifteen minutes after kick off, um, you'd shut your turnstile down. You go to the office. They'd um, take the box off you and sign it off, and then you could go and sit in the in the big stand and uh, watch the rest of the match. Did you always put all the money in there, or did you leave of a couple? Of course, did. You don't look like the most trustworthy person. Oh, no, I'd never rob um, Grimsby Town. If I was working on the doors at Burnley, they'd, I'd not put anything in the box. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah, the Yorkshireman going over to Lancashire, yeah. just being bitter about it because we're a superior county. But uh, that was good. The only time it didn't work out, and I've said this before on here, but I uh, can't remember which team we were playing. Uh, but Grimsby were three nil up after ten minutes. I missed all three goals because I was cashing in my um, tickets. And then when I got in my seat, that was uh, at full time. It was three nil. Nothing else happened. So uh, here come Aston Villa down the right hand side, breaking at speed. Good ball needed into the middle. Bad ball. Terrible. Blocked ball. off at the near post. Horrendous ball. Throw into Aston Villa on this near side. Do we get a goal in this game? Yes or no? On the Telegram chat now. Put yes if we think we get a goal in this match. No. If you think we don't, and if no. you want to add a bit more detail, put yes and who scores it. And then if you want to add even more detail, put the minute. We're supposed to be a team on here. Right, I'll put my answer in first. We're supposed to be a team on here, Joe. Now you put your answer in. I think we do. I think we're going to get that typical Arsenal. Leverkusen are going to make it 4-0. Nathan Taylor, baby. He's it, 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 it left you. Um, 4-0 and the title is in the bag, isn't it? Eight minutes to go. 4-0 up against Werder Bremen. Well played by Leverkusen. They will be the Bundesliga champions this season. That's some effort from Xabi Alonso and Bayer Leverkusen this, this season. It is. Taking on the giants of Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund and co. And Leverkusen haven't just won. They have romped home, haven't they? Unbeaten. Yeah, and they've not lost a game all season. And I think that is in every competition, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Incredible. That's why West Ham got no chance in that second leg. Because Leverkusen just don't lose. They just don't lose. Um, we need over... T- oh, we've got a goal coming. I and told it must you. must be for Villa. I told you. Oh, Arsenal. Oh, Arsenal fans. We saw Liverpool lose earlier. And now it's Arsenal's turn. Man City are celebrating wildly today. They're not even playing today. Oh. Arsenal head the ball away. Will this goal stand? Aston Villa recycle the ball. Back to John McGinn. 
He's going to put it back out onto the left-hand side of the penalty area. To the byline it goes. Cross comes in oh, and it's stabbed home at the back be. post. It's Leon it Bailey. Is. It's the substitute. Scores at the back post. Aston Villa score against Arsenal. Oh, it's all gone horribly wrong for Mikel Arteta and Jurgen Klopp today. It is 1-0 to Villa. We saw Liverpool lose 1-0 to Crystal Palace earlier. Man City won yesterday. They're going to be on 73 points unless Arsenal can turn this round. Both Arsenal and Liverpool, with six games to go, will be two points behind. City are taking the Premier League title by the scruff of the neck by virtue of Aston Villa and Crystal Palace doing them a massive favour on Sunday. Now, do we get a bang, bang, wow. bang? Goals. All right, well, a couple. Yeah, if we get a, if Arsenal win now, I just need an Arsenal goal now. If we, Arsenal, we goal not, Arsenal fans out there, if Arsenal win from here, free bet lands as well. Absolute scenes. That would be scenes and limbs. I'd think it'd be limbs and scenes. To if, be honest. If, if Arsenal score from here, it would be the actual definition of scenes and limbs. Limbs and scenes. I created this. I will decide. You didn't create it. I created Scenes and Limbs. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. I've seen it used elsewhere. You've never seen it ever. I mentioned a tweet I saw it on. Yeah, thanks to me. Yeah. You're not, not a you're not, decent finish. You're not a trendsetter. I am the trendsetter. <laughs> I started setting trends. At, I've never seen Unai Emery do this. Look at him. He's gone full clop, hasn't he? He's gone nearly... He nearly just stopped short at a knee slide there, didn't he? Uh, but 1-0... Uh, to Aston Villa. This would do Aston now Villa. Now it's a corner to Arsenal. Yeah, this would do Aston Villa no harm at all. And the uh, we're kind of concentrating on Arsenal because they're top of the uh, of the pile. But Aston Villa will go three points clear of Spurs with five games to go. Spurs have got six games to go, so they're effectively level on points if they all win from here. And um, but Villa have got a slightly better goal difference than Spurs as things stand. But Arsenal, they need to find something. But Villa are going to find it on the break. Villa are going to find it it's on the break. All gone to pop. Oh, Mikel Arteta, this has gone. The last three minutes might define your footballing oh, season. I needed an Arsenal Arsenal ball. are playing the ball around prettily, but they give it away. And here come Villa. Long ball. Is he onside? He might not be. Oli Watkins takes it down. He rounds the keeper. He dinks the keeper. He scores. Oli Watkins makes it 2-0 to Aston Villa. It remains to be seen if he's onside. But I'll tell you what, Joe, the last five minutes for Arsenal has been an absolute mess. Give City the title now. Everybody is capitulating. A terrible, terrible attempt at a pass from Arsenal results in an incredible counter-attack from Aston Villa. I think he is onside. We haven't seen the replay yet. Well, they're all celebrating. Nobody's stopping him. And uh, Arteta's face is thunder. It looks like Klopp's of earlier. It's Arsenal nil, Aston Villa 2. Charif says, if I speak, I'm going to be in trouble. Calm yourself, Charif. I was like this yesterday with Leeds. Um, ultimately, there's bigger things than football in life, but right now, it probably doesn't feel like it. Mm. And it doesn't feel like it. I understand, my friend. Um, Arsenal are falling apart. Over two and a half goals is possible. It is. It's possible. We needed... A bang, bang, but not a bang, bang that way. Well, a Ars bang, bang from a Villa Ars and then Arsenal. Arsenal are going to fling everything at, um, at Villa now. Even the kitchen sink? I, I reckon the kitchen sink and the dishwasher. Um, Arsenal nil, Villa two, but Arsenal are going to push. We've got about four minutes of normal time left and some stoppage time. And there will be some stoppage time. So Arsenal need to throw everything at it. For the free bet to land today, we need over two and a half goals. It's possible. The Arsenal fans in the crowd look as if they've just been told that everybody they've ever known has died. It, it's basically, they just their faces have just drained of all colour. You would do as well, wouldn't you? But it's, it's cities to lose now, it really is. These two are bottling it. All right, to be fair, Arsenal have had a tough game today, but they've got, they've got to put these games to bed to win the league. That's what makes these teams different. But we Liverpool said, we, had an easy game. Yeah, we said earlier... Villa aren't any mugs and they're proving it, aren't they? Yep. They're, but they've been... I mean, Unai Emery, um, he is a tremendous manager. He's got them so well drilled at the back and um, they've been, been able to pick off uh, Arsenal for two goals. Um, you can't do much more than that as Unai Emery today and he'll be really proud of his team should they uh, see it out for three points. It's not the best day for to be an Arsenal and Liverpool fan. They have... Um, well, anybody that was like me 
before today was thinking Man City will do this this season because they know how to do it has been given um, kind of more credence to the argument over this uh, over today with the, both what's the happened today, isn't it? Arsenal and Liverpool falling apart a little bit. Yep. Arsenal, Arsenal are falling apart again. That's how the song goes. It's well, about Leeds, but now it's uh, Arsenal. Man City yesterday, um, they found themselves in a little bit of a pickle. Um, it wasn't um, totally smooth uh, potatoes for Man City yesterday because Luton scored a goal and um, they uh, managed to um, ride it out. It was 3-1 at some stage. I mean, yeah, Luton made uh, City wait until the second half um, for most... I mean, obviously, early goal for City, but uh, they had to wait until 64th minute to make it 2-0 when Kovacic scored an absolute cracker. Uh, but then, uh, even then, Ross Bartley found the back of the net. But Was it Bartley who scored? I didn't yeah. know that. I've seen that they scored. But uh, So it, it kind of wasn't as easy as 5-1 makes it sound for Man City yesterday. Had to wait a long time. But um, they waited and they were patient and then they ended up, ended up winning 5-1. Today, and uh, with Liverpool and Arsenal, it's not been anywhere near as... Dare I say it, professional, I would say. Yeah, they've both had jobs done on them. Villa have countered well. Palace defended well. They couldn't break down. They Do couldn't. we get another goal for over two and a half? I hope so. Do we get the I over two so. and a half? Come I hope on. so for the creatures and I hope so for myself. I, well, I hope so for me too. So we're all, I'm not going to lie. We're, we're both being selfless and selfish at the same time, aren't we? We are, we are. But you need to have that element about you. Eight minutes... Eight minutes of added time. If there's going to be a goal, you've got well, plenty of time. And if you're going to win the league, this is where you go bang, bang and get a point. 5-0 to Leverkusen and it's full time. Leverkusen have won the Bundesliga. Congratulations to Nathan Teller. I'll stop clapping at that bit. Um, congratulations to Xabi Alonso and everybody else at Bayer Leverkusen. That's, that's a hell of an achievement. It is. And they've not lost. Absolutely smashed Bremen today. Congratulations. You've won the league. And you deserve it. I'm sure um, Xabi Alonso will uh, clip that bit out and keep that with him on his phone uh, for the uh, the rest of the season. Th- those words from you, Joe, will mean a lot to him, I'm sure. But positive <laughs> words from me do mean a lot. And it's because I don't give them often. See, people, they hand out compliments willy-nilly and it loses its credibility. Mm. You need to be more like me. Be if I, more Joe. If I, if, I get a, if I get another goal in this, I win two bets. I win my um, other bet as well. What's your other bet, James? Well, I've gone over two and a half in both, haven't I? Have you? Yeah. A chance? No, there's not a chance. There was a chance of a chance. Ars- I reckon this Arsenal score one, but they don't score two. I reckon they score one, but don't score two. Well, I'll take that because I just need both teams to score. Well, there'll be a lot of people... For various reasons, screaming at Arsenal to score a football goal here. Can they do it? They're into the second minute of eight added on down there at uh, the Emirates Stadium. And uh, they are, uh, they've, well, they struggle to break down this Aston Villa defence, but they're into the penalty area. Arsenal cuts it back. Oh. Still with Arsenal inside the Aston Villa penalty they're area. Just, they're trying to walk it in. Kick it. <laughs> kick it. Kick it. That's, kick your, it. that's your coaching lesson, is it? Yeah. Kick it. Kick, kick it, it, lad. Kick it. Hit it, get it out wide, cross it in, hit it. Chance! Ooh. Pat Lam G suggested 2 0, but I think he said I think he meant 2 0 to Arsenal. But, uh, so you can celebrate that prediction, Pat Lam G, but I think it's the wrong way around, wasn't it? Uh, two Aston Villa players have collided. And then they're in no hurry to get up either. I'm not suggesting they're faking this, but I think uh, they're probably making the most what of their chance. What it sounded like to me. Well, okay, I am suggesting they're faking it then. I think they are staying down for as long as they possibly can. To uh, give the team a little bit of a rest here. Um, Gabriel's now got no points. Ray has got one. Everything's gone to pot. But Ollie Watkins has got six. Doesn't quite fill the void. But as you said, if they're going to concede, they might as well concede to Ollie Watkins. Yep. And he did score. And we did say it any time. And it was what at that point? We, ne- we never Four s- points on it? We never saw the replay from side on of that goal, did we? Because he did look... Um, That's the point, yeah. There was a suspicion of Conspiracy. offside. Conspiracy. I mean, he, he looked offside to me, but then obviously he can't have been anywhere near offside. Sometimes when a player times his run really well, it, li- it, live it looks offside, but when you see the replay, they've timed it so well. Yeah, they've just um, they've gone at exactly the right time, inch perfect. Martinez has been excellent in goal for Aston Villa to date. Um, Arsenal in the first half had a couple of really good chances, and he was up to the uh, the task of stopping them. And you look at the stats of this game. uh, Arsenal have had uh, created far more chances than Aston Villa. Aston Villa have taken their opportunities. Arsenal have not. Currently, Arsenal nil, 
Aston Villa 2. Uh, we need one goal to land the free bet. Over two and a half was the condition. At the moment, we are one goal short. Don't Arsenal forget to... Villa coming. Could it be three? Oh, Watkins! Nearly, oh, nearly, nearly, nearly. Oh, he's... Uh, Ollie Watkins has ended up in the back of the net, but the ball hasn't. Yeah, he wanted it the other way. Um, you've got Joe tomorrow as well, everybody. Um, I think it's Jack and Joe tomorrow with you for the uh, the final game of this round of fixtures. And it is uh, um, Chelsea taking on Everton at uh, Stamford Bridge. Eight o'clock kickoff UK time That's tomorrow. That's going to be a great game, is it? I, 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 I might be washing my hair, actually, creatures. The um, Next weekend, by the way, for your fantasy teams, just take a little bit of a look because there are some double headers. So if you want to have a... If you've got any wild cards left or... Or what have you? Then uh, maybe next weekend is the chance to play them because there are, um, I think Liverpool play twice in the next round of fixtures and Arsenal as well. So, uh, and they they're two teams that will be trying to bounce back from disappointment at the moment. Yep. So uh, all to play for. Not being the best of weeks for both Arsenal and Liverpool. Um, if you fancy Arsenal to get the tie here and go bang bang in the remaining moments, there's only about three and a half of them. It's now fifty on the sportsbet.io site. But what a weekend for Manchester City. They wouldn't have expected this. Even in the wildest dreams, they wouldn't have expected to win 5-1 and see both Arsenal and Liverpool lose on a Sunday. Yeah, I mean, they would have expected to win yesterday against a Luton Town that are getting some plaudits, but let's be fair, they are pretty poor. Um, But yeah, every single team had a home game. They'd have been expecting Liverpool, at the very least, to, to win against Palace and win comfortably. But this one as well is a shock. So a great weekend for Man City. Give them the title now. It's theirs. <coughs> it's not quite. It is. There's still some games to be played. And Liverpool and Arsenal are certainly not out of the running just yet. Six games left in the Premier League. Two points separating the entirety of the top three. But it's Man City. And for the first time in a while at the top of the uh, table. And are they coming good just at the right time? That's what they have a tendency to do. They've been there, done it before, know how to get across the line. Whereas Arsenal and Liverpool are still trying to find that magic potion. Pat Namji agreeing that he predicted the uh, two 0 to Arsenal. I know you did, Pat Namji, but I like your uh, I like your sense of humour. As uh, Arsenal just trying to find something here, even goal difference might be important. You know, one goal here could end up being quite vital um, on that last day of the season. It could. Arsenal's goal difference is... Uh, I'm just concerned about the ball to score, I'm not going to lie. Well, Arsenal's goal difference started off really superior at the start of this weekend Chance. to Man City's. Oh. Um, Man City's Free kick to Villa. Man City's goal difference, Joe, at the start of this weekend was forty was plus 45, whereas Arsenal's was plus... Um, where are we? Sorry, Man City's was plus 40, Arsenal's was plus 51. So it was 11 goals between them in goal difference. At the moment, there's only five goals. There's been a two-goal swing here and a four-goal swing with Man City. Yeah. So six of those eleven um, goal difference um, goals have been uh, used up this uh, this weekend. So Man City have uh, not only got themselves top, but they've improved their goal difference no end in comparison to Arsenal's, which is slightly less strong than it was. Yeah, they've taken a battering this weekend in the goal different stakes as well there's only a minute left so yeah. you can kiss goodbye to any both teams to score and win bets you can kiss goodbye to any over 2.5 as long as you don't kiss goodbye to me and you can kiss goodbye to James because he's not in tomorrow but don't kiss goodbye to me because I'm back I'm back baby like a bad smell right <laughs> <laughs> um, Arsenal nil, Aston Villa 2 following from Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace 1 and West Ham nil, Fulham two. You'd have got a good price on all three away teams winning this today, wouldn't you? Yep, you would. You would. I bet the bookies have had a good day today. Yeah. Because we haven't. Yeah, because none of them have gone over two and a half. Both teams' scores not landed in anything. And the favourites have lost in the all. And the, the favourites have lost in them all. So, uh, yeah, a good day to be a bookmaker because uh, everybody likes to back favourites and everybody likes to back things to happen. And uh, things haven't quite happened the things way... Things haven't happened. Well, yeah, not the way we expected. Them. They've happened the way we expected in Germany. Because um, Leverkusen 5 0, they are the Bundesliga champions. Well done to them. And what a way to win it as well. Yeah. So uh, we are nearly at the end of this Sunday. Join uh, Jack and uh, and Joe tomorrow for Chelsea against Everton. The Lancashire boys. Is, um, Lancashire taking over Yorkshire. Oh, Jack's a Blackpool lad, isn't he? He is. Yeah. Someone has to be, unfortunately, for him. Someone's got to be from Blackpool. You can't have everything. He'll be happy though. Didn't Blackpool, 
Blackpool have a good uh, result yesterday. It's finished. It's finished. It's finished. Look up the Blackpool result yourself. <laughs> it's finished. Because and we're so, going home. And unfortunately, the free bet doesn't land. We went over two and a half goals. And despite a late flurry from Aston Villa, uh, they couldn't quite get to three goals to land the free bet. So you can't win them all, clubhouse creatures. But uh, join... Jack and Joe tomorrow. They'll make sure they give you a, some conditions tomorrow. We, that, will, uh, we will win some. Yeah, bets. you'll get some free bets tomorrow, I'm sure. Unai Emery and Arteta shake hands on the sidelines, but Mikel Arteta will not be happy. Jurgen Klopp will not be happy tonight. And uh, the man that will be happy, probably got a big cigar on and a big uh, glass of cognac, is uh, Pep Guardiola, because his uh, Man City sit top of the Premier League with six games to go. Joe, thank you very much for your company this thank afternoon. Thank you for having me. And uh, thank you out there, Clubhouse Creatures. It's been uh, great to see you this weekend. Uh, enjoy um, Jack and Joe tomorrow. And I will see I think I'm back in on Tuesday night, so I'll see you then. Have a very good rest of your day. This has been Clubhouse TV, sportsbet.io. Gamble responsibly. See you soon. Covering every... Covering every game of the English Premier League, Champions League and Europa League, live as they happen. This is Clubhouse TV.